everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy-ass voice actors sit around, roll dice, and play Dungeons and Dragons, while Liam curses at me a few seconds before we start the show to try and <laughs> throw me off. <laughs> it's worked once before. Talk about once. Probably work again. Sorry for the Matthew Mercer uh, voiceover. Uh, <laughs> that was an accident. See you soon.
What up? How we doing? Nice chill intro while I get things ready. Ah, oh, good time zone. How we doing? From underneath my cat prison. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my goodness. We're doing it. We're making it happen. And I think... I'm not gonna... I shouldn't jinx it. I need to have something wooden to knock on. But I think... It, uh... The technology issues might be stabilizing. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see, but I am I am somewhat hopeful. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Mustang, Brittany, Valkyrie, Hayakin, Tai Tai, A-K-L-A-R-O. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I think... But why are you under a bridge, though? We gotta move frequently uh for for absolutely no reason just in search of um good real estate prices don't you move frequently to um other jurisdictions i mean cities i thought that was like common practice you know I don't know uh yeah all all security all security reasons nothing to be concerned about where oh where has my little background green screen gone because <laughs> i actually need to change i always forget that it doesn't uh it doesn't follow me between scenes so i have to like manually change it on each there we go that's a little bit better uh how we doing <sighs> Ugh. My voice is a little shaky. A little shaky today. I've got I've got some plans on how to uh, get it get it feeling a little bit better. But I am I am uh, I'm optimistic. I don't think it'll be too bad. I don't think it'll be too bad. I'm also realizing that I completely forgot to uh, copy down the time codes. There we go. There they are. And actually, I just realized I can copy all of this into the uh, the new Obsidian, and we should be good to go. I think we're chilling. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, if I switch to this now, whoa, look at those comment highlights. All right. So, oh, no, wait. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wait, don't look. Don't look, it's horrible. It's terrible, it's terrifying. Don't, don't look at the giant <laughs> extra background noise. Ah, get it away. Oh, wait, wait. I'm a professional. And, and you know what? Professionals, they gotta take risks. Like not checking their uh, green screen background before stream starts. That's the kind of risks that, you know, us professionals just have to take. There we go. <laughs> Is that an automatic thing for the word hydrate? Hydrate! Are we allowed to bully you to drink tea slash throat coat regularly? I need to be. I need to be. I don't know. I need to go and get more is the issue. Because right now, all I have at my location, uh, this, this brand new nice location behind us, is... Um, Oh, wait, you guys didn't even see all of the unprofessionalism because I'm so professional. And I use studio mode, so you didn't even notice everything going on in here. Because I'm so professional. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, no, you are, you are absolutely allowed to bully me. <laughs> um, also, I did I did think more on the whole uh, on on the topic of the uh, of the time codes and of reminding you guys and all that, and I I will uh, build it into the um, the chat bot. I'll build it into Nightbot uh, so that you guys can do kind of like the exclamation point LCS. Um, 
I'll build it into the chat bot so that you guys can. It, it'll remind you on a uh, schedule, and then I don't have to like say it. <laughs> um, and then that should be that should be good. Should be better. Um, Dehydrate or dihydrate? <laughs> exactly. Throat coat. Never heard it phrased it that way. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Throat coat's like an actual thing. Mm. They call it uh, the steroid for steroids for theater kids. Um, <laughs> it is absolutely. I have a. Uh, I have. I have done. I used to make a gallon. I used to get a gallon of Arnold Palmer. And then dump an entire thing of Haribo honey into that gallon. And then I would do, uh, I would make throat coat tea in that mixture. <laughs> like I would steep it in that mixture. It was great. It was delightful. And, uh, and it got me through some, some very tough tech weeks. <laughs> and I need to just start doing that again. What if we're being real, real? If we're being if we're being real real, I just drank a little bit too much last night. That's the uh or Haribo honey. No, not Haribo honey. Uh fucking <laughs> I'm just thinking of the bear. I'm thinking <laughs> the the bear of honey. Um The bear of honey, you know? <laughs> I think that would that would that would be good. <laughs> I don't remember what that bear is called. Um, is there any way we can do a chat command that would note down the current time code directly into a doc? I, hmm. You know, it feels like there should be. <laughs> I, There should, hmm, that makes, ah, oh, yeah. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about that because not for, ooh, actually, there is an app called Crowd Control that people normally use for, like, chat plays fucking GTA. <laughs> but... I don't see why we couldn't have it act activate a hotkey. And I actually already have editing hotkeys on my stream deck that harvest the current time code, but they would have to harvest it from VLC. Actually, no, we wouldn't even want it to harvest from VLC. We'd want it to harvest... If I'm starting at 11.30 every day, and like that's like, and I have like relative confidence in that, then it could just harvest the current real world time, put that in a dock, and then I could cross-reference that against the stream VOD and figure out like what relative position that is. I'll have to look into that. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Uh, anyways, let's do a comment highlight. Let's do comment highlights. From Natalia Verona. On the concept of player plants. I just thought this was super interesting. Um, I won't name this source to avoid spoilers, but there's a pretty famous uh, campaign in one TTRPG that starts with the death of an NPC. And your whole party's motivation is supposed to be based in the fact that the dead dude was such a good friend when the really the players only found out about him during best case scenario session zero. <laughs> this problem almost became a meme and there were two common ways of dealing with the problem. Simply create a prologue with this character or go further, invite a guest player, he's in the know of course, pretend he's a full party member, let him seduce and befriend them and then brutally kill him. <laughs> Which I was like, this is like the definite, like when I talk about like what, like the shortcuts that you can take narratively with a guest player. 
<laughs> this is exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Is you can absolutely solve <laughs> a TTRP. What big issue in some TTRPG by literally just having it be a guest player because the players will instantly, instantly trust the guest player more than they would some random NPC. And not only, I mean, she makes a very good point. It's not just a, a, a problem or a concept of trust. It is also a concept of like care. Like, why do we care that this person died? Oh, because they were a guest player. Like, that's absolutely why. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. I was like, that's a great way to handle that. <laughs> Oh, wait, let's see. I just totally, I forgot that I didn't have chat up. I need to pop it out. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> there we go. That's better. That's much better. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, Like the timestamp here in chat says my time PM. Yeah, I'd have to figure it out. Sounds like a plan. What a Braca. Uh, You could also harvest real world time as well as the stream start time to automate that calculation. True. Yeah, I think I can make I think I could make it work with crowd control. I think if I if I figured out how that app worked, I could I think I could do this. One drawback with this is that some highlight timestamps will be spoilers when Mega says something amusingly wrong or right are future events. So those timestamps would need to go in spoilers chat. Yeah. Well, I mean, we basically just have to Wait, what are you eating? What Hey, show me that. What? Ew! It's just a fucking hairball. Gross! Oh my god, she's so cute. Um, yeah, I think we would. I think we would basically just have to do nothing. You wouldn't want it. You would only want to timestamp things that are that you'd be okay with me seeing because I'm going to have to review the entire like highlight video regardless. So, uh, I'll, if I'm going to have to review it in general, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's just, I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'll talk to Eden about some strats here. Maybe we could even get crowd control working to where it edits a dock. Because I could have it edit a dock that I don't open, I guess. And then I could just send that to Eden. And then Eden could approve all the timestamps. And I just don't look at the video. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll have to think about that. Um, please do not kill the guest player. It's illegal. It's illegal. Um... Uh, says you shows the camera that you well yeah obviously um yeah basically basically the highlight videos like I put out for I think only one to five maybe or also five to ten they are a lot of work they're a lot of work I have to rewatch a lot of footage and it's just not really feasible at the moment but it's really nice and efficient for getting people onboarded. But also, people, like, it's not a huge priority for me because people don't necessarily need the onboarding, if that makes sense. So, like, like you can jump into a more recent video without having seen the previous ones. So, it's been low on my priority list, but Chad has been brainstorming some ways to maybe make it less labor-intensive, essentially. Um, has never overthunk a single thing in their life, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, takeaway from last episode, takeaway, 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 consequences, uh-oh, <laughs> players, okay, I, I, I will absolutely, I will absolutely acknowledge that players can dodge your shit. Like, I've absolutely been in a situation where I'm trying to give my players consequences, and they are absolutely dodging me at every turn. Um, through ba through almost sheer dumb luck. Uh, not even through, like, choosing the right options. However, 
there is still an amount of like, if they are dodging all of your consequences, maybe you need to ramp up the consequences a little bit. Like with Gilmore, uh, like, like I wrote it down, Gilmore lasting through the night was a second chance that Matt did not need to give them. Like, you did the wrong thing, but now if you do the exactly right thing, you will never know. And they did happen to do the exactly right thing. And again, this, like, this isn't invalid, but it does lead to them blowing six-level slots at the drop of a hat, a generally, like, laissez-faire attitude about how quickly we need to go. Like, they were so laissez-faire that they basically wasted the session with JCM. Like, I don't want to say it was a waste. They found Gilmore. It was very sweet, very tender. But they didn't feel the need to go to the clasp. <laughs> they, they were just like, eh, I don't know. The clasp will be there tomorrow, right? Like... <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit, I guess it's more of a priority to get these people to a more comfy living area than the very clearly, like, than, like, the bunker that they're in. That's more of a priority than, like, dealing with the problem. Which is okay, but again, very laissez-faire, very relaxed. Um, and that's, again, that is okay. But it is a direct, like, kind of line between there has never really been an ostensible consequence for them wasting time. There's never been really an ostensible consequence for them blowing a spell slot, right? So it's like, why not? <laughs> why not at this point? Um, so yeah, it was, it was an interesting thing. And like I said, they absolutely might dodge your shit. But also, again, as we know, you know, he said, I'll let Gilmore last through the night. And then if they don't go directly there, then Gilmore dies. That is a choice. You know, that is a choice to make there be less consequences, right? Um, so, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so... Matt, oh, I can't have all of these because they have, I can't have all these in this doc. You know, that makes sense, but I can't. The fuck was that? Uno momento. It sounded like a plate broke, and Bird has been pretty rambunctious this morning, so I was a little worried. <laughs> but I don't think I don't think that was actually the case. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so we'll get rid of all that. Uh, the note of this secret passage in the kitchen of your keep seems like the entrance to the clasps felt less to me like an inward link to Daxio and more like a, hey, the clasp exists, a guest may be there. Potentially. Look, look, we're just writing down our facts. We're writing down the theories. Because what if, what if it's not? Right? Shit might feel like that. And I will say, Sputnik, that is a totally valid, <laughs> that's a very valid DMing technique. Absolutely valid DMing technique. But within the in-world fiction, I don't know. It has consequences that we have to note. <laughs> um, why are they wasting his spells on saving Gilmore? He's not even real. I don't get it. Um... I just closed my browser for no reason. I don't know. Oh, oh, what happened with the dogs? Yeah, I don't know. Um, really digging the book clubs? Oh, no. I'm sorry, Matthew. Um, <laughs> so, 
if you haven't um, seen the most recent or one of the most recent, uh, wait, no, that's my Google account. No, no, no. One of my most recent community posts, uh, book club, book club is at, is gone. It's not gone, gone forever, I guess. But right now, it takes a ton of off-screen work, um, and is uh, it is yeah, it's it 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 is not. Um, it doesn't it doesn't make sense, unfortunately. Because especially the way that I used to, that like I normally read audiobooks is while I'm doing other things. That's like the way that I can fit reading into my day. And uh, when I'm doing it for book club, I can't do that. <laughs> like I have to be like tied taking notes. Um, so yeah, it sucks. I want to see if there is a way that I can work it back in. It is still. Like, I haven't deleted it out of my Obsidian project as, like, one of the series that I do. But it is going back into a brainstorming drawing board type area. Um, sad bookworm noises, I know. <laughs> uh, they're streaming now. Actually, about to finish Mistborn first trilogy. We'll start Elantris. Yeah, yeah, Nerdy Knightley's doing Cosmere. Yeah. Which, I think... Um, I think there is an aspect and something I have considered for book club is trying to do it with a group of creators because one of the reasons that I feel so strongly that I need to take a bunch of notes and I can't just like read it and then talk about it is because I can't guarantee how many people will be at book club. Like sometimes we have like, you know, five or six people chatting and other times we have like one or two. Um, sometimes zero to one. Uh, <laughs> so I have to essentially have stuff to make the stream interesting, regardless of who else is there. Whereas a group like Nerdy Nightly, I don't, I guess I don't actually know how they run their book club, but I'm assuming that it's at least more than one of them talking at any given time. Um, or it's at least more than one of them that's like on the, on the live or on the VOD. Um, so they can talk to each other. So there will be an interesting discussion other than just like me, like sitting there being like, I think I remember this, <laughs> you know? Um, so that is a potential Avenue that I could see book club coming back. Um, but that would require really consistent collaboration, which is also tough right now because Three out of my five streaming days are Critical Role, which I'm also thinking about. I don't want to slow the pace of Critical Role at all. I don't when I when I say I'm thinking about the pace of Critical Role, I or when I'm thinking about like the three streams a week. I want to be clear. I want to watch two Critical Role episodes a week, no matter what. Just thinking about how to do that <laughs> potentially. Um, what up, Deadly? How you doing? Um, is there a server role for Daggerheart? Uh, oh, you know, there is, there absolutely is, but I have not made a way for you guys to get it. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Uh, let me, I need to, I need to write that down. Uh, uh, <laughs> make a way for people to actually self assign the dagger heart roll yeah because there 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 is um i made one and then i completely forgot to actually make it assignable um so yes <laughs> the answer is yes but also more realistically no um <laughs> uh why did bias wake the heal she could have used one healing word and gilmore would be as good as new so she wasted the heal for the same reason that even though Gilmore got 50 points of healing, he was not immediately back up. Because Matt is going after a non-mechanical feel there. Which is sort of, it, it's one of the things we sort of danced around last, last, uh, uh, stream. God, I couldn't think of the word. I kept thinking session. 
uh, something we kind of danced around last stream of like, she absolutely did not need to use a heal, but Matt was narrating this wound as if one little healing word would not heal it, you know? Um, oh, it was a joke. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> egg on my face um <laughs> but yeah anyways uh rip book club yeah i do like cr so hopefully i'll stick around with the channel that's good yeah i it, like i said trying to figure out ways to do things where it's not an incredible amount of work off off stream even though i did love the book clubs i did really love them but i was starting i'll, I'll tell you the real real of it i was starting to really dread reading not because I was dreading reading the book, but because I was dreading taking the notes. Because I knew how much more time it would take. <laughs> and so I didn't want to read. Like, I've honestly read at a faster pace now that I don't have to do it. Because I don't have to take the books anymore. Or I don't have to take the notes anymore. So, we're gonna figure I'm going to figure something out at some point. It's just probably not going to be anytime soon. Um... <clears throat> I actually like none of them talking. They stare at the screen while telepathically communicating. Yeah, Ron Quixote. <laughs> Does this imply two full episode days? Maybe. Potentially. Honestly, if I could get my throat uh, more consistently coated, it would. And the problem with that right now is that I can't make tea in the morning because I need to sleep in because the dogs are keeping us up all night long it's super fun um <laughs> the dogs are keeping uh, they they're going or not the dogs uh, the dog singular is going through another uh no sleep era which is so awesome so sick i love having a puppy she's so cute but holy shit is it is it tough when she gets into her no sleep era wait what the heck why did, hello? Why did that just disappear? My Microsoft whiteboard, stop it. Come back. What? Where is it? <laughs> it says that it's locked to the right capture. I don't know where it is. What? Dude, I don't even know what just happened. That was weird. Um, <laughs> anyways, I need to write down my no CR spoilers. I forgot to. No CR spoilers. We're on ep 42. I think prioritizing the right in the right is the right move, Mega. Do what really speaks to you, plus what brings in lo uh, views. Lots of fun projects you can do in the future. Yeah, it's tough. I like I don't I don't necessarily just want to prioritize the views like Baldur's Gate 3 does not bring in the views um <laughs> but I'm still planning on playing it but Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't bring in the views and it also but or I shouldn't say and but it also doesn't take the equivalent of three Baldur's Gate streams to prep for that's that's the big problem um yeah and the prep is yeah you you need one of those posts where we react with emojis to get rolls. I have um I have basically the equivalent of that. Uh if you go into if you go into channels and rolls, there is basically that. I literally just need to add Daggerheart to it. <laughs> um I lay on hands for one HP. Is book club uh done live or via post? Is book club chat interaction uh, live? Live. It was, at least. Um, there may be a ghost. My personal explanation for low-level healing spells being basically useless for high-level adventures is that you get used to them. The more you heal with magic, the more of a dose you need. Yeah. That is certainly an explanation to uh, explain escalating... HP values. Yeah. Get yourself a P.O. box. P.O. boxes cost money, man. I honestly would. 
I, I, I would, but yeah. Make a video about Larry and ditching Wizards of the Coast Hasbro and D&D &D, totally going to get views. <laughs> did they did they do that? Oh, man, I might have to look into that because <laughs> that would get the views and I'm interested. <laughs> I'm interested just from your description of it. Uh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I tried to... I try to have a minimum sort of like <laughs> I do I do like I'm not gonna sit here and say that I don't think about what gets the views. That'd be ridiculous. But I do try to have a minimum of like this isn't this isn't making me hate it. It's kind of like the highlight videos. The highlight videos are probably worth the time I put into it. it the time I would put into it, just doing them all myself. But I would hate that time the entire time I was doing it. <laughs> um, so that is, and I was, and I was starting to get that way with book club just around taking the notes. Um, so it's it's a yeah, it's a bit of bit of all of that. Uh, anyways, what time is it? What time is it? I got to make sure I'm trying to get better. Forty minutes. Okay, you know what? That's not too bad. We're gonna get into it. <clears throat> I got to make sure if I, if I ever do want to do two full episodes a week, I have to start getting my better habits involved, you know? And by that, I mean, like, I need to, uh, I need to do what I did last week with the, or not last week, uh, Wednesday with the, with the combat of like saving my opinion until afterward, I'm going to start putting more stuff on the obsidian dock. So I'm going to start trying to do, like, middle of the scene when the scene hasn't resolved yet. I'm going to try to get my thoughts out of my head onto the obsidian without necessarily pausing. So that we can really keep the pace up and then we can have a big discussion after the scene. That's one of the things I'm thinking about. Because I realized that one of the things that was really, you know, just murdering the pace of uh, especially episodes like, you know, pretty recently was when I would just stop to re-up my opinion every, like, four seconds of the scene. <laughs> that was what was really substantially uh, wrecking the pace. Uh, has it actually been 40 minutes already? It has. Look, it goes fast, dude. It goes real fast. I always... I've said this before. I don't actually feel like I am that much, like... I don't, I don't think I'm that much better at streaming short distances. Like, I think that a one-hour stream is probably as, like, emotionally and, like, mentally impactful to me as a one-hour stream for another creator. But as you, like, scale that up, my, like, mental impact of, like, the exhaustion of a stream or whatever does not scale at the same rate as a normal person, I think. <laughs> like... To me, like, a three-hour stream and a nine-hour stream feel pretty similar <laughs> to me. Like, they, I, they, don't, they don't feel, like, that substantially different. Whereas, like, a one and a two-hour, those feel very different. Um, like, like, one to two totally feels different. But, like, three to nine, meh. <laughs> uh, but, anyways. Anyways, we got, we got a little bit of... Uh, we got a little bit of time codes at the beginning to check out here. First time they try a new separate battle map camera. <gasps> really? Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. Also, they switched. They switched. Scanlan and... Uh, <laughs> Scanlan and Keyleth. Sam and Mauritius uh, switched. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Wait, Wait, give see. it some time. Uh, let's, see, let's, see. let's see. Also, I guess uh, tonight we're going to be trying out this new table camera uh, here on the side to give you a, a separate view of the battle. Ooh. We can switch around as we're we're finding our way through uh, the amorphous betterment of our program. So, um, can we can we work in like a wolf blitzer hologram? Ooh, that's like they have on CNN as let's well. Put it on the wish list. On the table next to all the guys. And Only if it's actually wolf blitzer though. Yes. We can just have him like running through the battlefield. It'd be great. Just his head <laughs> floating. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you can head to the Geek and Sundry Amazon wish list. Uh, the link should be in the chat. That's cool. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see more of that. That brings me back, dude. Speaking of um, crowd control, like we mentioned earlier, giving you guys potentially control over this um, this lower what would you call this? I don't know, a lower fourth, lower fifth. That's one of the other things that I really want to do with crowd control 
is potentially like just make this a spot for like multiple different things. Um, maybe even the, the highlights document itself. I don't know. Um, fancy battle map, no captions. Oh, Oh, that's right. I remember, uh, I turned off the captions at the end of the last episode because they, <laughs> they just said no end of transcript or something. So I was like, ah, get rid of those. Thank you for the, re uh, for the reminder. I definitely want captions. I absolutely want captions. Um, I want captions. <laughs> the players were sitting uh, on extremely uncomfortable, narrow, hard benches at this point, so they tried to adjust the seating a few times. Holy shit. Uh, sadly, there was no more combat for the rest of the campaign. The rest of the campaign, no combat took place, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh-oh. The other thing I'm thinking... I've been really hesitant to spend money, especially after I had to buy this big chonker uh, to to solve the technical issues. But I have been considering trying to get another monitor because the one that I got that um for Paige the other day is pretty solid, and it was like seventy dollars. And so I've been considering that because it is like. I have to, like, spend, like, I don't want to say a lot of time, but, like, a decent amount of time just, like, moving things around on my end. Um, I don't know. Uh, Matt just spends the rest of C1 making sad eyes at the unused battle map. He spends it making sad trinket eyes. Wait. Uh, uh, I literally, I just Googled, or wait, no, not trinket. Trinket the bear. I Googled this yesterday just to show page uh, pictures of trinket. Um, <laughs> and I found, oh, there's this gif <laughs> that is just Matt making sad bear noises. Oh, wait, no. Ah, I just realized that that was critical role stats. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Uh, but make sad bear noises. I thought was cute. <laughs> uh, we were just like, this was Paige's favorite. Paige's favorite was this one. I liked this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a fucking IRL fucking trinket. Look at that. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> sad trinket noises. A lot of players are having spring sales. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, how many monitors are you on at the moment? Uh, two and a half. I have my main monitor, the secondary monitor where I put up critical role, and then the tablet that, that I can write on, which the tablet is a is a another monitor, but it's very small and very low res, but it allows me to write on it. Ooh, <laughs> so it's awesome, but it is not exactly um, it's less useful for like actual extreme organization. Ugh. Matt's sad trinket noises are the real star of the show and make up for trinket being a character flaw. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, back when I first started streaming, though, I used to have, I used to be, uh, on a, f a four and a half monitor setup <laughs> when I first started streaming because I was using, uh, I was using two monitors from work <laughs> and then I had to return them. Uh, and now I'm feeling it. Uh, uh character flaws are people too. Character flaws are bears too. But in the meantime. Oh yeah, I just want to give a quick shout out to the, my charity of choice, the Pablo Foundation. Yes. I talked to them today. Their minds were blown by all the gifts that people have sent in and donations in, in the name of Critical Role and the Critter community. They didn't quite understand what the Critter community was, <laughs> but I, I enlightened them and they're like, they're so jazzed by you guys. And they do they, now. They appreciate not just the uh, donations and gifts, but also they said that the Critters have been writing long letters and telling great Aww. stories and stuff and they're That's super so excited. Awesome. So the best. keep it going to oh, those charities. Oh, Mine's Pablo. Yeah, should we like go off and do a shout out of each of our charities? Sure, go for it. Why not? Tell us and go. Uh, first place for you, where uh, it's they, I, I'll have a link up to my Twitter in about five minutes. First place for youth. I mean, I figure if they chose these foundations, now hopefully none of them turned out to be cringe, but um, <laughs> uh, if they if they chose to highlight these, I want to highlight them too. First place for youth. Is that right? First place for youth. Uh, what up, Sign? How you doing? 
Uh, the Critical Role Foundation still donates to most of these, uh, to most, if not all of these, as of 2023. Hell yeah. Okay, so not cringe. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, they help kids come and get through school. They help kids who are, who are orphaned and having issues uh, get their stuff together and become fabulous teenagers like we need in this world. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. yeah. And of course, Sam is with Pavlov Foundation. The, the, pa- the Pavlov, Pavlov Foundation. Pavlov Foundation, yes. yeah. which is amazing. Um, oh, wait. Oh, oh, wait, no, not, oh, so not the Pablo Foundation, the Pablo Love Foundation, Pablo Love Foundation, that is different. Uh, oh, childhood cancer, oh, hell yeah. Very cool, very, very cool. Uh, I I went to a, um, I did not go to the Pablo Love Foundation, but I, I worked with a similar um, organization that is based out of Children's Mercy in uh, in Kansas City when I thought that I might have cancer uh, as as a child. Um, I did not. Th- luckily, the tumors were all benign. Um, but it was it was very scary. And organizations like this are very very uh, cool. They came in and talked to uh, me and my parents. Uh, when the when the tests were still out, and uh, yeah, like showed us they because they were we were ba- we were like freaking out. We wanted to immediately start planning before the tests even came back, and they uh, they they like sat us down and they talked us through it. And um, yeah, that was it was really cool. Childhood cancer, very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ch- childhood. Can- <laughs> Childhood Cancer Support Foundation. Very cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> you fucking people. Get out of here. Uh, and then first place for youth. I have said, me and me and Paige have uh, essentially agreed that if we do decide that we want kids, I have said that I want to work with this sort of foundation, like some, some sort of... Um, like foundation for uh, either like troubled kids or, or orphan kids or fostering or something like that before we actually adopt our own. I feel like a kid is such a huge commitment that I feel like it is the least I could do to commit to this sort of organization like one day a week for a year, you know? Because if I can't do that, if I can't commit one day a week for a year to this sort of organization to help, you know, kids that already exist, I feel like I definitely shouldn't have my own kid. I feel like that's a little irresponsible of me. Um, But, yeah. So these are cool charities so far. Cool charities. Um, (laughs) Another quote from the quote mind. Twitch people, quickly clip it, clip it. Childhood cancer, hell yeah. <laughs> I chose the Nature Conservancy. They're great and they protect the lands and the animals that is very important so we can keep having a beautiful green world. Uh, I chose the Planetary Society just in case. Wait, na- nature, nature Conservancy. Nature Conservancy, hell yeah. Chicago office, fuck yeah. Help save the earth. And then... The planet case Cater- the green world uh, dies, yes, and uh, it promotes uh, exploration of space uh, and uh, the stuff like that. I chose my friend's place, which is an awesome, also very similar. Good. Wait, I though the planetary society. I said the conservancy society society. Cool. Just in case the green world uh, dies, yes, and uh, it promotes <laughs> uh, exploration of space uh, and uh, the stuff like that. I chose my friend's place, which is an awesome, very awesome. similar to Thalassons. It's an awesome place for um, teenagers that are uh, runaways or living on the streets. It gives them a place that they can crash and, and really help get their stuff together. And it's pretty awesome. What's up, Jewel Face? I am the Vision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donate to the Vision. Yes, I, I have Operation Supply Drop, uh, which is a great uh, charity service that uh, delivers fun where there is none to uh, soldiers that are in combat overseas. Uh, delivers uh, gaming system games, uh, brings some much needed levity to areas of high intensity and overall warrior badassmanship. And uh, I, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. What a variety been, of charities. Yeah, this is a good stretch of charities. There are a lot. And My charity. Been, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. I got one too, guys. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hey. I sometimes forget about you because you're. Oh, Matt. I know what happens. You're God. Hey, you're it, no, I've overlooked my entire life. It's nothing new. 
uh, my, my charity's first book, um, which uh, brings reading materials uh, to underprivileged children and helps people become. Wait. My his first book. I, my charity's first book, um, which uh, brings reading materials uh, to underprivileged children and helps people become more confident readers and youth that don't have access to programs to help promote uh, you know, literary adventure and uh, really getting, delving into the, the amazing thing that is yeah. reading. So uh, thank you guys for helping support that. It's been really fantastic. All things that are important for the future. So important. What do you give a credit for? Yes. And of course, uh, as always, Critical Role always supports A26LA. Yes, continually. Continually, yes, they are ours. I sometimes forget about you. Oh my god. <laughs> Pablo of an outright action international were the biggest recipients. OSD also still there as of 2022 at least. Oh, and 826 LA. Cool. Well, that's sick. Charity of choice. And of course, look up 826. There might be an 826 in your area. And you should go to their storefronts. They make great date locations, as Talison always Yes, says. great date. Oh, they great really date. do. That is a really, really good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's score, it's a score a date. date. You can find a date. Take them there. <laughs> find a date first. Okay. Don't put a cruel thing. I've Don't, done okay. Don't try and find dates at 826. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you. I have never I have never gone on a date to uh to any sort of charity work, but I've done a lot of charity work in my time and I could see it being a great date. I've gone with girlfriends and uh I don't actually now that I think about it, have me and Paige ever gone and done charity work together. We have gone and done it separately. I don't actually think we've ever gone and done it together. Uh maybe we should. But I will say, I could see it being a first good date, primarily because, I mean, number one, you're doing good shit, which is always cool. But also, number two, it's sort of like taking a road trip with someone, like with someone that you're, you know, getting to know. It's kind of a lower stakes version of that, where you get to see, like, how much of a, of a... Like, how are they a poser? Are they like, are they real? Or do they act the same way here that they do, you know, off, off screen, off table? Um, I think that's a great idea for a, uh, for a date. Because not only are you doing good shit, but you're getting to see that sort of side of someone and, and how they change or don't change. I've never gone on a date. <laughs> Look, we fucking live together. We're married. What, what, what do we need to go on dates for anyway? That, which is hilarious because we're actually, I think, going on a date tonight. But <laughs> never you mind that factor. Um, <laughs> Talison has some interesting date ideas. My favorite being the tiny train to ghost town. <laughs> that is interesting. Hmm. <laughs> um, so to get you up to speed. Vox Machina, the intrepid band of adventurers you see before you, uh, after a series of adventures, had found their way back to their central city of Iman, in the center of the uh, region of Taldore. Uh, after a ceremony in which the leader of their city, Sovereign Uriel Taldore, was uh, announcing him stepping down, uh, the town was suddenly under siege by a group of extremely powerful and dangerous ancient dragons that call themselves the Chroma Conclave. Uh, after uh, tearing the city asunder in many places, uh, three of them flew off into the east under the instruction of the fourth and possibly largest and leader of the group, uh, just recently been uh, found to be called Thordak, the Cinder King, who currently resides in the center of the city of Amon, uh, claiming that his mercy is only to those who worship him and essentially feed his greed and hunger. As such, uh, Vox Machina narrowly escaping the battle, uh, a couple of encounters with these dragons, including one above their keep, are housing a number of survivors who made their way out of the city and are currently uh, residing in Grayskull Keep for protection. Um, you guys went into the city to see if you could find any other allies uh, and friends that may have survived this encounter. Uh, you befriended a member of the Clasp named uh, Garthok, who walked amongst uh, the rubble and uh, proceeded to show you the secret entrance he knows to the Clasp, of which you may be trying to inquire about information. Uh, on your way to uh, that area, you passed by Gilmore's shop, Gilmore being a good friend of the group and a powerful magic practitioner and creator of magical items and artifacts and a number of glorious goods. Um, his abode, however, smashed and currently a pile of burnt wood and rock. Uh, looters were currently pouring through and you attempted to get them to leave the area alone. It came to blows and with many of the looters falling in battle, two of which were kept uh, locked away, you discovered the location of where they were hoarding the massive amounts of gold and uh, artifacts that they had acquired from the rubble. You then found the secret compartment in which Gilmore's teleportation sigil was uh, locked beneath his shop, where the remaining family of Taldore, Salda and the three children, as well as uh, 
Gilmore himself wounded and barely alive, having saved them. You found that Uriel, uh, the Sovereign, did not seemingly survive the encounter with the dragons, and Gilmore nearly them. You found that Uriel... Interesting. Uh, the Sovereign did not seemingly survive the encounter with the dragons, and Gilmore nearly fell uh, going back to try and make sure that you guys were okay. Uh, Bro, Uriel's Thordak and the whole democracy bullshit was a smokescreen. <laughs> I was I was talking about how Uriel was gonna become like an authoritarian uh, tyrant, and he just has a smokescreen of democracy when he's actually Thordak. <laughs> Obviously, that doesn't make sense. Thordak was in the elemental plane of fire, but let me dream. Let me live. <laughs> barely escaping with his life, you managed to save his and. Uh... Taking the children, ah, oh, what happened? Children, Salda, Sherry, and Gilmore back to Grey Skull Keep. Um, some of you splintered off to try and acquire the goods that were taken from his store. However, they apparently had already been stolen from the location they were being stored in, or been delivered already. You're uncertain as to what became of them, uh, but you get the sense that it was probably best that you chose Gilmore over the gold uh, at first glance. Uh, making your way back to the keep. A little sly confirmation that it was a choice of Gilmore or gold. Uh, you've sent Gilmore up to rest for the evening. Uh, some of you have then found your way down into the Temple of Saren Ray, where a number of the escaped refugees from Iman currently try desperately to cling to their memories, to try and uh, keep the Sheikhs at bay and contemplate what the next step is in survival in this now partially ruined city. And that was where we left off. So, what would you like to do? <laughs> kill all the dragons and yeah. save the day. Good. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Just kill all the dragons really quick. Welcome, C Fen. Thank you very much for the uh, for the kind words and for joining us today. I think I think there's nothing else to do. I think that's the recap. I think that's the takeaways, the comment highlights, and I think we might just be ready to go. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a good roll. See? Natural 20. <laughs> no, no. You wake up. Guys. Um, I rolled five natural 20s before the show even that's started. That's a great, So it's great all going to be... It's an important lesson. Terrible. Why are you get that rolling out of your before system. the show? Because I got to see... She feels like she's got to warm up her endless army of dice. <laughs> no, I just have to figure out which ones I want to use that night. You have five d20s right now. I way. know, and they're all useful. No, I've got six out here. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely all useful. This, this is, this is, by the way, for anybody <laughs> tuning in for the first time at home. This is how we express. We have no idea what to do. Thursday, Thursday night is critical. Role. And this is where we see all of the influence. You know, he became the CEO, and she headed up the the dice division. That's why we got duality dice. But then she said, "Well, wait." If we're gonna have duality dice, which we absolutely should, requiring unique D12s. We need to require unique D12s, not just 2D10. Uh, and then we also need to make sure that D20s are still getting used. And that players also still have to have D20s, preferably ones that match their D12s in case their, high, their uh, hope die ever gets upgraded. <laughs> We see where Laura's impact was on the dagger heart design. We see it all. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are we? We're, we're at home. We're in Grey Skull Keep. And uh, Gilmore's with us? Gilmore's with you. Yeah, He's been brought he upstairs. Yeah. And, and did Pike's holy uh, visitor fix the keep, or is the keep still effed up? Actually, in, in the short time in which her visitor, this this uh, this angelic diva-like entity that was brought forth from Saren Ray's sphere of influence, uh, did manage to repair entirely the damage that was sustained by the uh, to the keep from the battle with Vorugal uh, out in your courtyard. So yes, the uh, Grey Skull Keep is now back to being intact Woo! and uh, rather fairly polished. Excellent. The stained glasses are fixed and, and corrected. Yeah. It must look so strange next to the ruined city of Iman. It's far enough away, but... <laughs> Strange. Yeah. Yeah. So what time is it? It was night. Throw a tarp right? over it or something. Uh, you got, like midday? Uh, no, it's, it's about <laughs> mid-afternoon at this point, maybe, pushing into the evening. Okay. Uh, is Kima still around? Is that what that? Um, is Lady, uh, is Lady Kima still around, or? Lady Kima's been in Vassalheim. Nope, no, not Vassalheim, I'm so sorry. Laura. Laura. No, Laura, no. I'm on the wrong page. Yeah, she already left. Yeah, she and Drake went. I moved my note. Where are the Remember, they turned into shooting stars and they flew away. Is, uh, is Clarota still here with us? Did he go? In your hearts. <laughs> in your heart of hearts. No, not, not even there. Uh, <laughs> sure he is. Where are the majority of the Are they in the like dining hall and, and in the... They're, they're scattered between the dining hall and the temple, uh, the, uh, the temple room to Saren Ray, partially because, one, there's enough space there, two, it's a place of sanctity, it's a place of hope, and uh, uh, Pike is currently you know, bringing people 
not not preaching to them per se, but offering comfort in their current area of misery and and worry. Um, so those are pretty much localized areas. Occasionally, one of the kids might begin wandering the halls, and the parent might chase after them, trying to draw them back in. But you know, respectfully, no one's wandering the house, filling their pockets. They're all still happy to be alive at this point. Well, that's because we don't have anything. Because Scanlan's troop stole everything anyway. We bought new yeah. silverware. We're, we're, sure we did. Maybe they can eat it. Maybe it wasn't my troop. Maybe it was our new guests, the 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 f- people fleeing for them. I was going to say, are there any new people that have come into the keep while we've been away? Could I ask one of our guards that? Sure, yeah. Uh, Shane, who's uh, out front, uh, currently just kind of strolling through the uh, the courtyard, comes up to you, and as you ask her, she goes, "Well, but we've uh, we've had a few uh, other refugees come in and ask for entry, and we patted them down, make sure there were no weapons, and tried our best to keep an eye on them since they've arrived, but." Uh, you know, seems like most everyone's keeping either into the city or keeping fairly underground. Nobody sticking out to you, though. No shady individuals. Nobody sweating more than is, you know, necessary when being threatened by a big fuck-off dragon. Not yet, but uh, I believe Jared's keeping a close eye. Jared. Jared. Ah, the guy. All right. <clears throat> Man crush? No. <laughs> 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 should we? I wonder. I, in, mm, I wonder. In, in all prudence, should we? Should we go around to the to the Fujis and uh, the refugees and uh, <laughs> and just do a quick like uh, oh, no. scan alignment of the check. alignment check or something? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Lauren, Lauren Hill is sick. Do we have anything that like, sends people's alignment? Do you? Uh, Pike uh, might, Pike and might. you might. Yeah, I can. I can. I can. Can you mass, sure. see if you can mass just sense alignment? <laughs> mass sense alignment? Is that a thing? Uh, no, I'm saying I can do some like insight checks on people. Oh, I don't well, know I'm talking about like magic, huh? No, I'm not, I'm not Pike. <laughs> All right. I'm talking Pike. about magic. Pike's with us, though, right? Yeah, but... She oh, could yeah. do an insight check. Is she with us? She, uh, Pike is with you. She is currently helping folks inside yeah, the temple, but you can go ask her, too. You can go ask her. skull to wish to know everyone's alignment. <laughs> Problem solved. I'll kill everyone. Um, <laughs> Maybe we should just kill one of them to make an example. Yeah, like, this is terrible. Set the tone. This isn't the real. This isn't the real game. The game hasn't actually started yet. So, um, glancing about the populace of scattered refugees throughout the uh, uh, general vicinity of Grayskull Keep, I will pick two of you who wish to be the main uh, surveyors of the crew. Is this insight? This I'm would on be it. insight. Not yes. me. I'm, I'm on it with Vex. Okay, so Vex and Keyleth, both of you guys roll insight checks, please. Okay. See, this is why I shouldn't have this many dice, because I don't know what to choose. Okay, uh, 20, what is that? 21? 21. Uh, insight? Yeah. 22. 21. Okay. Uh, both of you guys spend about 10, 15 minutes or so just scanning through the crew, asking a few questions, uh, helping a few folks out while keeping an eye on reactions around the, uh, the general vicinity. No one sticks out to you as being either. Uh, hiding their intent, shifty. There are a few folks that are just aloof from the whole experience and seem to be either in a state of shock or just discomfort based on their current surroundings, but nothing in a, a way that strikes you as nefarious or worrisome. And are they all strangers other than the people we brought back with us recently? Correct. They are all strangers. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people live in Iman and none of them seem to catch your eye. Yeah. Is anyone still badly hurt? Uh, most of them have had their wounds tended to. There are a few that have uh, general scars, some from you know, elements of kind of frostbite on their skin who got caught in the blast, who were salvaged before, uh, you know, after Vorgal left. There are a few that just have scrapes and bruises from fleeing from the town, from collapsing uh, debris from different buildings and such, but no serious, serious injuries. A few bone fractures here and there that have been set and bandaged. I'm going to spend the first bit of time at home just helping Pike, uh, just doing whatever she tells me to do, really, to, to help people here. Okay. Is there any deceased that need to be tended to? Well, there are a number of deceased in the, in the front courtyard, people that were frozen and shattered as part of right. Borgal's attack, which at this point, um, most of them have been taken care of by the guards and okay. given proper burial on the outside of the keep a few yards away, towards like on the inside of one of the hills. Um, they haven't been left to thaw, if that was what you're worried about. That's what I was worried about. No. Um, right to meat. In, in, in the time... It's uh, <laughs> gross. Way to go dark. Way to go dark. I thought that's what we were doing today. Hey, cost effective. Um, oh, but no, a, a number of the refugees have also helped the guards as well as transporting the bodies of the deceased and making sure they're properly interred in the nearby countryside. Okay. What are our options here? First of all, should we? Do we know this Gilmore status? Yeah, we need to get him settled in. Make sure he's all right. Well, he's gone up. He's resting. Okay. Yeah, we, we put him in bed to bed already. Oh, okay. He's in Percival's room, mm. I think, because you said you would sleep in your, your laboratory. And when we last left things, there was one plan to go into the tunnels of the Thieves' Guild and try to see if there's any yes. more. Actually, Go 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 Gothok. Yes. Is Gothok. Gothok is waiting for us. Was there like a big? Uh, I think I think uh, John said something about some sort of. 
uh, uh, like to look forward. Oh, it was between 43 and 44. I see. I was like, it feels like there was like a big time skip or something. They're like, <laughs> they're like really having to catch up on this, but it might just be, you know, uh, a busy week for them or something. Um, <laughs> I wonder if D&D ever abandons alignments. Uh, there are currently no spells that can detect it. Even the ones that could before, like detect good and evil, don't anymore. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I... I would prefer if they did. Like, I think it's it's kind of just like an old school, kind of outdated uh, system. Like there's there's some amount of usefulness in having shortcut words for narrative stuff. Like there there is there is usefulness in that. I've talked about the color pie before during um the Tiberius autopsy. We talked about the color pie from Magic the Gathering. I think Magic the Gathering's color pie is very interesting. And like if you know if you understand the color pie, it can actually be a really effective like narrative shortcutting tool which is i think what dnds is supposed to be as well but dnds alignment system has such a low level of like information density of like you have to know six things in order to describe nine things like that is very very uh information shallow in terms of like what you get out of it right um so I think that they either need to abandon it, I would say, or if they want to work it back in, I would say that they that they almost need to expand it or make it just not a 2D matrix, honestly. Like, I think the 2D matrix is one of the fundamental things that is holding it back, if you ask me. Um I think that I think that doing something like the color pie, fuck it, just putting the color pie into D. I mean, they're both by Wizards of the Coast. It's just, it's in Magic: The Gathering, and like they describe the color pie in like weird off terms in uh, I think Theros, uh, or no, 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 um, uh, Ravnica. In in Ravnica, they kind of have to address the color pie, even though it's not in D and D. So I mean. If you ask me what they should do if we're talking about like alignment, I'd just put the color pie in. I think it's kind of that easy. I think it's just a better system than alignment if you want an alignment-esque system is is what I would say. Um, I don't think alignment matters uh, much to most home tables. No, absolutely not. Like there's, I don't really think there's much reason to use it because again, like if I describe someone as lawful evil. That is not that much more, again, information dense than just describing them as lawful or evil. Like, the combination of those two terms does not really mean anything separate from the two terms themselves, which is, I think, one of like the core issues with the alignment system, is that you're not really getting anything new out of using it. Like, I would just describe them with adjectives. <laughs> There's no reason to engage with it. Uh, sprite familiars from Pact of the Chain can if person fails a check. Oh, okay. There you go. I did not. That's a that's a bit of a deep cut there, Mustang. I did not remember that sprites could do that. Although, to be fair, I normally use um, quasits. So, that makes sense. Uh, alignments can be good to have as a note, but not really a law I go by. Just more of a tone setter that can be broken at will. Yeah, absolutely a tone setter. Yeah. Um, some OSR give you a table of character trait words you can roll on. And I think that works more elegantly than alignment. It, I mean, that is, I definitely would agree that I like that more than, than the current alignment system. Yeah, absolutely. It isn't even supposed to represent your character traits. It's more about your position in good guys versus bad guys. Yeah, which is I kind of think like the core problem is as we have evolved as like a evolved as we've um, maybe matured, matured as like a tabletop role playing community. I think the amount of people that want that explicit evil versus good storyline has gone down. 
Uh, like I think that that used to be a majority, not a majority maybe, but a, a decent chunk of the stories that were told during like A, D, and D, and you know, kind of those earlier editions were very explicit evil versus good storylines. Um, and now I think people want those more morally gray, morally complex uh, storylines. So I don't think that the evil aspect of things works as well. Um, I'm a neutral good, so no fiends. Ah, makes sense, makes sense. Um, but, anyways, yeah. Down in those. I would like to talk to the So clasp. we can go look at the clasp and talk to them and everything because he's told them we're on our way. And to what end again? We're just, we're gonna see if there's any well, random diplomats actually, left over? They're, they're the they're only functioning organization left in the city at this point. It's true, they're sort of a double-edged sword though. I mean, they can't, they should not be trusted. We cannot trust them, but they are an infrastructure under the city. They may have more of an idea of what's going on than we do. I'm the best to speak to them, but I'm not on good terms with them. And I've never really talked to you about this, but you were marked at one point a long time ago. What? And um, For death? The re Actually, I'm yes. Interesting. Why? Well, what did I do? I'm sure I don't know. Um, the reason there is a brand on my back is because I interceded. Some other schmo died instead of you. And um, you might be a bit of a sore point with them. I don't know. They might not remember, but uh, I don't think that's true. I'm, I think they'll remember. How long ago was this? Uh, what did you do? Before we knew you. So many things. <laughs> before we met, when Vex and I were on our own. Was it because you farted that time? You didn't think you could mention this? All the times we've dealt with the class. You didn't think it was worth mentioning? No, she's but already almost died. She's already been down there. Why? She's already been down there. You think they're gonna recognize her now? We're going down to talk. We've been down there to talk. All right. All right. This is why you don't keep secrets. Well, I say that we organize a group. We let's not get let's not get overexcited about the sudden realization that you know some of us can be a bit iffy. Uh, we've all had a moment. We've all had a moment. So, a return to earnestness is making a comeback potentially, Ron Quixote. I I could see that. Like, I I could see that people are a little bit tired of the more gray uh, uh, timelines. I do think that that is one of the. One of the things about Daggerheart is it is supposed to be very heroic. And I think that it is kind of going after this sense. I don't know how Mighty Nine or Bell's Hells operate. Vox Machina is a morally gray group that is constantly going after being heroes. So I think that that is maybe one of the ways that we're sort of returning or that's kind of how the cycle is repeating itself is not necessarily within the we're the good guys, they're the bad guys, but more in we're the heroes and they are the villains. I still think that we're sort of separating from the good and evil um, axis of it, but I would... I wouldn't disagree that we are potentially going back to a more explicit heroes and villains sort of era within the TTRPG kind of community. I, I could very much see that. Unless you were neutral good, which is bizarre to me, because what if you followed a chaotic or evil god? Uh, Well, I mean, paladins... Now, this could be different for earlier editions. I don't know... I don't know the details around old paladin stuff, but I believe that paladins used to be um, like fighter druid. They used to be a prestige class, no? And it was like you had to, it was like if you were a fighter, you had to go and learn druid spells, I believe. So it wasn't even like following a god in that sense. And then I think at some point they diverted into it being related to clerics, and now it's not related to gods at all. <laughs> so Paladin has al always been this kind of weird thing that I don't think ever really had a had a true, true place, you know? Um, I forgot about that particular detail. I also like... Uh, 
having <laughs> I think more tired of every character being an asshole. Yeah, every character betraying you. Uh yeah. I I do think that that, that could be a, a sore spot for a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> I also like having notes uh, at saying these guys are generally like this or that, but I think it should always be prefaced with the idea that that isn't always true. Uh, having good or and an evil baseline. Um, it's good for those who don't have the chops to make it up as they go. Yeah. Uh, it was lawful good? No. Not in third edition anyways. I don't know. I don't know, man. It, it, yeah. Paladin's a weird class. I don't know. They, they, I mean, the paladins are kind of the originators of the lawful stupid, um, thing. Um, so yeah, I could, I could see that. <laughs> Probably within the last three weeks. I'm not saying I don't. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, other you and Pike seem to be immune. It uh, is a virtue. <laughs> but let's organize a group and let's at least open relations oh, with them. Oh, well, hang point. on, hang on. What are we gonna say to them when we get down there? What's what's the what are we what are we gonna we, offer them? We are going to offer them our services in getting the city back into a functioning level. They don't they don't want a city ruled by a dragon. We don't want a city ruled by a dragon. It's in their interest to help us clear the city. They're going to look out for themselves, and you're probably I'm sure you're right. They want these dragons out, but they will do. They will preserve their own existence, and there's a possibility that bowing before. <clears throat> I believe that was in 4th edition G Hercub. I think in 4th edition they flattened it to a line of lawful good, good, neutral, evil, chaotic evil. If I remember correctly. These beasts will preserve their existence. Not long term, and these are groups that think long term. Wait, are you talking about us bowing to the class? No, or the class bowing to the class. The okay. dragons. I sincerely Sorry. doubt there it. There are levels. Sorry. And yes, we've been down there, we've argued with them, but we're talking about going down there and making an alliance, an ongoing alliance, and sh shit might come up, that's what I'm saying. It's not let's, an alliance. Let's make it a business deal. We're, we're talking about making a political <clears> decision. <throat> this is politics. What if they leave? What if they leave the city, or what if they turn us into the dragon to save their own arses? They could. Oh, I yeah. doubt they'd leave. That's a terrible waste of an investment. You're essentially relying on the underbelly of Iman to restore it. I am, I'm relying on greed. It tends to be exceedingly reliable. In your experience? Yes. In all experience, let's be honest. Thank you. <sighs> but the greedy one to the greedy one. Well, th this is one option, are we sure? We don't want to seek yes, help. Yes, what are our other options? I'm curious about other options. We know why the, the dragons lands. are here, right? Ish. I, I really think we feel do. like it might be necessary for me to also reach out to the air and and Earth, and possibly even the water Ashari. It might be difficult because I haven't been there yet to see if they've had any other tears through the other elemental planes. That would be quite wise. Yeah. We can also seek to employ their services. Scandal. I am. Huh? Oh. What about you becoming a spy? <laughs> I've been thinking about that long and hard. Have you? Yes. What are your thoughts? Most of what I do is long and hard. Uh, and my <laughs> thoughts are still, fuck you, no way, fuck off. <laughs> So what you're saying is <laughs> maybe you are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> your shining moment. <laughs> Nothing is ever going to top the Triceratops, really. Let's maybe the Triceratops could kill all the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we reach out to the Ashari. Absolutely. How's well, your homeland? I don't know. Do we need no. to find out? I would love to. We should. You can been. transport there instantly. I can. I just can't get back instantly. Mm. You need Keyleth. And I figured that they would have sent somebody at this point if things had gone. They have an instant transport to us if they need to find us. That's true. And the yes. fact that they have Unless they don't know about the stone and the only one with the stone. The council knows about well, the stone. there's no one left to send. Yes, if things went south instantly. You would have heard. I can scry twice that a day. That would be lovely. I can do it two times. So we need to pick. I where it's most important to check in versus where we might want to just pop it. The greedy one to the greedy one, yeah. I, 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 I caught that. It was, <laughs> I mean, it is, uh, I do like that they have established, I think if you're, if you're a group of, uh, of PCs, and especially if you are a PC that wants to embody more of that leader type mentality, right? If you, if you want to be more like, you know, the twins, you want to kind of lead the group, 
um, through it. Or even if you want to be a funny fake leader, this is still good to internalize. Of I think a good way... I don't think this is always the best way to go about it in real life, but I think that in a TTRPG, it is nice to determine the plan, going to the clasp, like, just fucking put that to the side and then say, hey, do we have any other ideas, any other options, like... It, it might seem stupid to start, like, writing out a fucking, like, pro-con list or whatever. <laughs> but it, it can absolutely work. And that level of organization will absolutely make you feel like a leader within that context. If you start organizing the plans, um, it, will, it will absolutely make you feel like a leader. Now, those aren't always, like, exclusive, right? The people that help the planning sessions don't have to be leaders. Leaders don't have to help in the planning sessions. But those Venn diagrams of people overlap pretty solidly. <laughs> and if you are having trouble or you are struggling towards filling that leadership role, if you want to, this can be one way to go about doing that. Um, side note for the whole backstory with Vex being marked for death, the class is pretty trigger warning-y for people who look into it. Is that, is that to hold the line? I don't know. I don't know if that sounds like a spoiler or I don't, I'm a little, I'm a little confused. I don't know. I have not, they have not brought that up at any point in the past. This is the first we're even hearing of it, you know? Um, so I don't, I don't know. And say hello. White Sun is also somewhere where we could arm ourselves more completely against something like this. We're going to have to start. Wait, what? There's a note to Pike can also scry as well. Oh, good. Because oh. I, I would mean, like to check times? into Vasselheim as well. How do you kill yeah. a dragon? Do we need a dragon? Can we get a dragon? Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, trigger warning for the. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I I was I was confused on what you meant by trigger warning. I'm I'm I thought you meant like within the fiction that like the class was like putting out trigger warnings and I was like I don't even understand what that means. Um <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. Honestly, trigger uh, this is actually something we talked about in the um Super Geek Mike interview that like Yes, like, you know, their their trigger warnings can definitely be spoilers. Um, but uh absolutely that is that is totally fine. Like in terms of like people who choose to uh to look into it, if that is if that could be potentially uh uh fucked up for some people uh and and not not fun, then yeah, absolutely. Feel free to warn about that sort of thing. I, I totally misunderstood what was going on there. Um, hard to give trigger warnings without specifying what for. It is. It is. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, child, I say, gotcha. Yeah. That hates these dragons? Is that a thing? You know, there is the Slayer's take. Wait, wait, what were we saying about oh. the dragons? Do Has other dragons hate dragons? Me? Yeah, can we find a dragon who can fight for us? Well, Good. there's metallic dragons. Don't get along with chromatic. Do we know any metallic dragons? Yeah, where are they? We would have to go to Vasselheim and maybe... My Aunt Edna? Yeah, mental health is more important. I agree, Baronessa. <sighs> what? <laughs> well, she's a dragon lady, I don't know if it's the same thing. Like, oh, right. No, like yes. She yes, this was... This little, little ceramic dragons, she likes collecting them. I was mocking him, yeah. Right. <laughs> so wait, the Slayer's take, what? <clears throat> well, it's an organization made to hunt massive creatures, isn't it? It's a horde of fucking ass kickers, is what it is. is we fought a dragon. And we're members. We killed a dragon for that. They're also rooted in Vasselheim, which is. It's safe. Uh, safe. Yes, but. <clears throat> we think. If everything else is under attack, Vasselheim is inevitable. Yes, but they're protected. How, however. For a time. Ish. Allow me to play Tiefling's advocate. And. Um, <laughs> if we leave now and allow the clasp to take hold and form some sort of new shadow government without us having any part in it. It's out of our control completely. It won't be in our control at all. But maybe if we speak to them now, we'll have a better idea of what's going on. I, I'm not. I'm not sold on any idea yet. But if we leave now and let things play out, 
It's entirely out of our hands. All right, well, how about this? We can scry between Pike and I four times, so we can make four phone calls today. Not phone what? calls, just a look. Phone. Yes. Look. So there's been a look. So they look but they can't talk we back. We need to look right? home. Yeah. No, we can, we can peek through a window. Phone? Okay. <laughs> and we can then try and go visit Sub. the class. Okay, well, let's scry it up then. Right. Who are we calling? Right. Whitestone? Vasselheim? White center, center of Iman? Whitestone and Vasselheim, I think. Definitely. And I want to check in with... Could I object to checking the center of Iman, right? Because that's where the Cinder King is. Let's. Did yes. he like real magic? And when we did that to the Beholder, didn't it like see us and laugh? And then we were like, oh, it hurt my brain. He's got, okay. a, he's got right. a point. It's a good point. He's got a point. We don't need to scry into Iman. We don't need to scry into I remember. So how many? <laughs> Unexpectedly wise Grog, yeah. <laughs> we're talking Vasselheim, yeah? Whitestone. Whitestone. And you can do it another well, You know what? Let's two? go talk to Pike because Pike might. Possibly it to- is indeed, Kane. In the same way that this, uh, that this show is based on that Prime Video show, and that Prime Video show is based on Baldur's Gate three. Uh, <laughs> Some sort of spiritual connection with Vasselheim yeah. as well. That might save us. She's very busy. A but I'm- it's possible that Vasselheim might be our next stop after we secure everything here. Okay. Well, I can Pike. also oh. teleport mm-hmm. us once today if we decide to go anywhere. Thanks. Pike! Pike! Pikey! Pike comes out, a little bit of dirt in her brow, looks oh. like she's been busy kind of handling some of the folks. I reach the out table. and just sort of brush the dirt from above her <laughs> forehead. She kind of smiles and pushes your hand away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, what, what, yes? Pike, do you have any sort of spiritual connection with Vasselheim? Do you feel, you know how- I do, I do. Um, Why? Okay, can you check, can you just kind of- Can you scry? Can you see if they're okay? We want to scry oh, and I- check in with a few places, but of course, of course, no worries. She kind of ushers you guys back into the temple. Okay. And then gets a little nervous when she starts thinking about it and walks up <laughs> to the uh, uh, the central platform of prayer and takes out her holy symbol. Uh, her armor's off right now, by the way. She's just in like her kind of ceremonial robes. It's kind of hard to clink around her armor amongst a bunch of refugees. Um, sits down and focuses for a second and pulls out some uh, some salt and begins uh, spreading it into a small kind of triangular shape around her and then pulls her holy symbol up and closes her eyes. And for that moment, you can see a beam of sunlight come through the roof, uh, the glass roof of the temple, which then kind of uh, refracts into multiple colors that slowly dissipate um, around her. You can see everyone everyone else who's gathered in the room falls quiet and just kind of watches on as there's this tiny little visual miracle. And she stays there for a moment, a few more moments, probably about 30, 40 seconds pass before the light slowly retracts back up through the glass. And she stands up and turns around and goes, um, Vasselheim seems fine for now. What a touched from the... Dragon Scourge, at the very least. That's good. That's good. What of Whitestone? Oh, uh, yes. Um, she gets right back down, <laughs> kind of with an air of begrudging acceptance. Um, focuses for a second. Um, spends a few more moments in her scrying ritual before stepping back and turns slowly to you, Percy, and says, um, Whitestone seems fairly uh, overlooked by these dragons as well. The town rebuilds. People seem to be going about their lives, possibly none the wiser as to what's transpired this side of oh, Talore. Wow. Okay. We'll send word at the very it's least. It's all over the water, maybe the dragons haven't gone that far. <clears throat> it's far north. I'll make sure to send word. Um, okay. One of the kids starts crying and she goes, oh, uh, hold on, and goes over and starts tending to one of the children who has like a, a knee brace on, it's currently aching, and she goes to help calm him down. Tiny Tim. Um, do you think you could look in on Syngorn? Of course. Most I step up to the table. Look, I thought that was going to be a mega Sam moment, and that it wasn't because I realized that they're all much too serious to make that sort of joke right now. <laughs> and begin my scrying ritual. Check in on Singorn. Okay. First. <gasps> oh, come on. It was indeed a reference, and then the room was so serious that I felt awkward making it. <laughs> we like cu- cups and strings. We do. We do. We do. He's saying Singorn is gone. Don't say that. Singorn is gone. Millions dead. <laughs> Millions. Millions. It's very large. Remember to shop at Gilmore's Ruined Rubble. <laughs> oh, no. He didn't even get a new franchise before it was... For all your reclaimed wood needs. Oh, oh, well done. Oh, well done. Oh, that was nice. The best, the best was watching Laura go. Oh, what a great idea! Oh, an endless supply of pavers and gravel. <laughs> <laughs> no more is building supply. 
Oh, you're home improvement. Actually, I read this schedule, the indie game. What did you see, Keyleth? Um. Singorn is gone. Nope. And I don't mean destroyed. I don't mean burnt. I don't mean that it gets in rebel. I mean, it's gone. The city's gone. There's like a huge chasm, a huge empty spot in the middle of the forest where Singorn once lied. But lie. Lay, lay. Was it just, did it look like it was destroyed to, to it, nothing it, or transported it, somewhere? Like that, like transported, like the city oh. was lifted out of its place and is, was teleported elsewhere. Uh, well, could it have been, I don't know how. I'm assuming the city stole itself, Dr. Hoovy. I'm assuming... I mean, this 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 could be total, total off my rocker action right now, but I can't. I feel like the dragons wouldn't have done that shit. Could I don't even know how they could have done that shit. I feel like I don't really know much about Singorn other than that the twins are from there. I think it's like an elf city primarily. I feel like they just magicked themselves out of there. Either they're into like a pocket dimension or uh, something further like that. Your scrying works. Could it have been some sort of a magical block, not real, an illusion of some sort? I would like Vax and Vex to both roll uh, a history check. Any kind of advantage on that? Nope. For growing up. This is another one where I need to I need to wait to update my opinions until the scene ends. I just realized. I was like, damn it. I gotta stop. Oh, that's you get to roll. Exactly. Take the city and push it somewhere else. <laughs> this because of that. History? Shit. Should have stayed in school. <laughs> Luck to know. Eight. Fifteen. Okay. Can I can I take a roll just for being a nerd? All out of luck. Are you proficient in history? I am proficient in history. Sure, I'll let Thank you, you. I'll let you roll. I want a nerd roll. Uh 24. Okay. Book reading! Okay. <laughs> Being the astute uh, researcher, the indoor kid growing no up. No friends. Yeah. Um, there aren't a lot of books that <laughs> made their way north about pure elven culture, especially wooded elves that uh, comprise the entirety of the Singorn Nation. Well, I, I speak elven, so that's good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has rarely come into play, but because of previous wars, terrible devastation, and the need for the Elvish culture to um, protect itself and to maintain its existence, you do know that there have been instances of large uh, enchantments on places of, of cultural importance that would bridge between here and the Feywild, and as a defense mechanism, essentially would cloak and or shift those locations. They've gone into hiding. How can you be sure? Uh, I can't, but there's... There's reason to believe so. It's what it points to. What, what points to what? What are you talking about? Historically, elves have, in times of great stress, taken important sites, important places, people, and uh, either cloaked them, hidden them, or moved them into the Feywild until... So yeah, I definitely... What up, Cabium? How we doing? Um... Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you, G Haircub. Uh, and it is, I think it is hard for GMs to capture that true player voice, which is, I think, primarily why uh, Matt tries to, um, tries to not play Ashley as much as absolutely possible. <laughs> or not play Pike, I should say. I think he, he tries to avoid playing Pike um, when he can at all because it's inevitably just gonna feel weird. Um, and I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know that there's like a super good uh, solution to it. I think that you know they kind of had a a reasoning that she was gone with the whole temple stuff, but then she came back, but now she's gone, like. 
I feel like she needs a more consistent um, gimmick, you might say, I guess, uh, for why she needs to be gone. If this continues um, throughout this campaign, if this continues into campaign two, like... I think she need her character needs a, a more a gimmick that could more easily allow her to not be there at the drop of a hat. Like if she's say like a warlock that her fucking patron like pulls her into the hells for service at random times. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know something like that. If you're going to have just one person be sporadically gone all the time, but. I don't really blame Matt for not doing that. Uh, they're still probably getting used to things, you know. What up, Daniel? How you doing? Well, good to see ya. Uh, yeah, he really hides her in every corner he can. Yeah, I would too. I absolutely would too. <laughs> uh, maybe Pike just sleeps a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such time is a dangerous past. There is precedence for this. They've gone into hiding. Or, you know, I mentioned the warlock thing because, you know, warlock brain. She could be the exact opposite. Saren Ray, there could be a fucking angelic celestial war going on right now. That is maybe part of the reason that uh, Saren Ray and the court. I mean. Fuck, maybe it's part of the reasoning for the timing of the whole Chroma Conclave shit is there's some celestial war and the gods can't help out at all. And Pike is getting called up when needed for battle. You know, she has to do battle in this angelic war. I mean, you know, she's no slouch. She's a level 13 PC. Yeah, she's not going to be going up against, uh, you know, the highest level angels, but she could be a foot soldier in an angelic war. Uh, we require your services precisely. And her god is going to say this is a more important battle than whatever you're doing with Vox Machina. And you serve me first. Right? <laughs> um, so, I mean, that could be a way out of it. It would just, you know, the sporadicness might feel a little bit odd. But it would save him from having to play her occasionally she's already astrally projected to vm maybe she astrally projects away sometimes yeah certainly or you could just have it be that she is always up fighting the astral war or the the heavenly war or whatever like this is just like she has to fucking do her time do her rotation and uh occasionally when she's like on leave or on break she astrally projects back to the party uh, temporarily with the understanding that, you know, she's only off for the weekend. <laughs> you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that could be, that could be a solution here. Yeah. She's also basically the only soldier Saren Ray has. So of course she'd be the first pull. Absolutely. Hell mantle. Yeah. So I think that's maybe a solution is just have the conceit that she is always in heaven essentially maybe she's always been in heaven since she fucking died and now whenever she's with vox machina that is her essentially when she's on break um and she's you know uh, how about Pike is filming a TV show in New York? <laughs> yeah, Pike is off filming a television set for Saren Ray, uh, the real the real housewives of the Astral Sea, and she only gets the the occasional weekend off. Yeah. <laughs> Great. That's one more thing our father failed to impart to us. <laughs> At least he's safe. Okay. Most likely. I need to check in on the Arashari. That has been my last scrying. Okay. As your uh, <clears throat> vision separates from your current uh, place of origin, you find yourself drifting up into the clouds and speeding through the air. Um, the location itself is blurred, though recalling the origin of where you originally came from, you pass by columns of black smoke to your left. You assume somewhere uh, related to Western's current location. Right. Eventually, the clouds part, and you find yourself thrust down upon the earth amongst uh, the center of the Arishari tribe, you can see the uh, thin 
leather constructs that make up uh, a portion of your people's uh, hovels and buildings. You can see the nearby uh, kind of chasm-based windfall that pours through constantly with a gentle whistling sound that forever is marked as the chorus that guides you all to sleep every evening. Um, there you can see your people um, uh, amongst various conversations, going amongst their various daily duties, seemingly uh, untouched, unscathed, and unaware of what recent events have transpired. Okay. That is the last of your scouring capability for the day. You didn't have to know that. Big girls don't sky. <laughs> sorry, I sat on that. Wow. I know. Wow. Just D6. Yeah, yeah, hit after D6. hit after hit today, Talison. <laughs> You know, just because you pan doesn't mean you should. I know, I know. Coffee hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> um. Right, they're okay. They seem unaware, which is very disheartening in a few levels. Well, they'll know soon, soon enough. Exactly. We are going to need transport. To where? I don't think we're going to win this fight staying here. I think we're going to have to rally power. I think we're going to have to rally allies. I don't rally think there's nations. enough here for us to win. Can we relocate all of the refugees staying in our walls? Can, probably Can we bring everyone through the sundry, Keyleth? How long does it stay open? Six seconds. Nope. We can go in shifts. This is not something that's going to be solved tomorrow. We can take a week and move people. That's true. And there's 50 to 100 refugees, you said. Something like that, right? Uh, at this point now, in your keep surviving, you're looking in the 30s. 30s? Yeah. Oh. But there's hundreds more inside the city walls. Thousands. The time oh, being. Thousands. We're, going, we're not going to be able to empty the city. But we can at least get these people out. We can get these people out, and we're going to need, and I apologize for the brightness in my voice, I think we're going to need an airship. Uh, <laughs> Where? Are, we're going the airship to sounds wonderful, Percy, but. You mean like the one that crashed? Like the one that crashed. One, one dragon attacking it, and it's down. We're going to That's need true. to move quickly, though, from city to city, and we're going to need to get word. <clears throat> well, moving quickly from city to city, I don't know. We may have to steal an airship at some point. <laughs> what? We're going to steal a plane? Uh, I'm making a plan. I'm thinking of a plan. You keep thinking there. Said the greedy one to the greedy one. Yeah, like, they, they fucking, they can teleport quickly from city to city. You just, you can go to any city, uh, basically, that you want. You just gotta give it a day. Uh, <laughs> Talison just wants an air, not even Talison, I would say Percy just wants an airship. <laughs> Working. Well, I mean, I, I've recently discovered that that um, misty windwalk spell that I cast on all off. of us not is not city. great for battle, but is great for travel. Oh. And that lasts for eight hours. What does? Who? Where? What's this? Wind. Remember that... how I, I almost oh, failed? Yes, yes, yes. Almost yes. Killed us all he turned us all into mist. the best. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, girl. Um, what I what I learned out of that was it's not great for battle, but it is great for travel. It, it um it lasts for eight hours. We can move three hundred feet. Wonderful. For a second. We get the refugees out, we go to Whitestone, we talk to them there, we use the Misty Walk thingy and go to Vasselheim, talk to the Slayer's Take. This is perfect. Problem. Are we going to check in with the clasp? I really like Percy's idea about stealing a plane. I'm just throwing that out there. There is an, there is an empty air dock that's currently not being used in the city. But Percy, do we need a ship right now, darling? So cool. I, I, agree. I understand the joy in it. We don't need it now, but we're going to be need to need We could take all of these refugees with us. That's actually don't you a very understand? fair point. Uh, we would be helping humanity. You, I'm, you all, I'm with Vex. And well, having honestly, a caper. A dragon a wouldn't dragon. notice a giant airship flying not out of the city. if we hide it with it, some, some smoke screen action of some sort, guys, or create a distraction. This is an RPG, yeah, not, a, not a JRPG. <laughs> <laughs> I want to live like Teddy Ruxpin. This is all I've ever wanted. <laughs> Talk to the class. All right, let's class go talk to the class. Yes. We'll ask Plus them what Laura they think about. And Drake are coming back. Right we need to talk to them as well. Find out what's going on in Western, and then we need to get everyone out. I I can do. And we're gonna need to I talk can to I can transport some of us via plants. Today, I will have to sleep if we want and like study to do the misty stuff. I've again. got a plan. We're not going to go anywhere. We have big time. Big. This is not a one-day plan. Here's here's a good plan. This is a good plan though. Here comes everybody. Open up the tree. Send a bunch of refugees. Just through. shove a bunch in. Just sure. shove them through as fast as possible. Sure. Percy, you go with them. With we keep the stone. You go through. You talk to your sister. You mm. bamf back with the stone. Ooh. Let Whitestone know what's going on. Because they're going to freak we, out. If and like, then we talk to the class together. I think that's a good plan. They will freak out if 20 no, refugees pour out of the sunshine. Thank you. And that's they have no context. Do that first. Arithmetic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
So wait, are you going to go on your mission while we go talk to the class? No, I'm... No, we're going to wait. We're going to do this now. This will be really quick. So can we get the refugees together? Yeah. All right, so as you go into the uh, temple and uh, get Pike's attention, you begin to round up the refugees, which, as a statement historically, is already unnerving. Um, you begin to <laughs> push them all together in a group and tell them <laughs> what? Oh, well, we comfort them and tell them, all right. What's going on? Yeah. Obviously, Amon is not a safe place to be right now. No, that's true, that's true. It's, it's, it's terrible here. What would, what? It's dangerous. And we want to keep all of you as safe as possible. Yes, and thank you for taking us. So yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, everyone starts like cheering. So we have a plan. We probably can only take a few. It should be women today, and children. The day. We're going to take those of you who need the most attention first, and we're going to bring you to Whitestone, which is a, a city that has not been affected by dragons at all. It has much need of people who can do an honest day's labor, and you can you can earn a wage and find a living there for the time being. And if if at some point in time you want to come back to Amon when all of this is done. Of course, you're more than welcome to. There is opportunity there. And no dragons. Okay, before Matt responds, um, the dogs are the dogs are uh, asking to go out, and it's nearly been two hours. Um, so seems like a good time to uh, run an ad on Twitch. Maybe take a little bit of a bio break, and uh, and come back refreshed and ready to go. And an ad starts in one minute anyways. How fucking, how, how, how absolutely perfect timing. All right, so I'm going to start an ad on Twitch. We're going to switch to the break scene, and I will be right back in a little bit. It'll be a tiny bit longer because I do have to take the dogs out. So I will see you all in a little bit. See you in a sec. You know, I was prepared to run the ad on Twitch. I was not prepared to do this. There we go.
All right. What's up? How we doing? How was your break? I will say we're going to have to take another break relatively quickly. Um, relatively quickly because I need and I just need to fix that really quick um, because I need to I put some tea on and I also uh, need to um, put my lunch in. Um, so there will be a, a series of shorter breaks. Um, can we get a thing on screen for break with a now playing? Um, I have no idea how I would do that. <laughs> Just being fully honest with you. Um, because I'm not even like playing something like, I don't even, I don't know what song was just playing. Uh, I'm just playing it out of like a, a, a widget on, uh, slobs. Um, so maybe, <laughs> maybe, but, uh, pretty, I, I'd say that's, that's a pretty low chance that that's going to happen compared to other things on the list. Just, uh, music. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Not not a me thing. Also, bringing these back because my ears were hurting a little bit. Um, but anyways, I think we will uh, we will get into it. Make sure you check today. Today. <laughs> For now. Roll in the gold. Stay on the Twenty. Hey, that's good. Um, a couple of folks. Kind of, well, I've never been to Whitestone. Is it cold? Yes. In the winter. It's winter. Uh, it could be. It could be a little. Bundle chilly, up. Yes. We'll give you some some wool blankets for the trip. Uh, okay. There's definitely no vampires there. No. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, vampires. Uh, I like that we're sending to them to the place that's got the orb of death. I don't know. It's that. going through. Was that your vacation friend? No, nothing. She didn't say anything. I said okay. you might be able to see your breath. Uh, Winter, right. Oh okay, um, let's grab our things and some of the folks are getting their things together. <laughs> having having a sort of mess. What they had on their back, essentially, as they rushed here, <laughs> kind of shake a few out of the shell shock, and uh, they all kind of gather up uh, towards the center of the temple of Saren Ray. Yes. How many do you think oh, we can fit through Percy. in six seconds? Stone. I Don't already gave it to you. Oh, okay. DM question? Mm hmm. <laughs> How many do you think I can fit through in six seconds? We'll find if out. If I put them in like a line and we're like, oh my God. <laughs> Okay, let's think about this. I mean, it would depend on how much space is around the tree, but like, I'm sure peasants have like a 30 foot movement speed, maybe 20 if we even want to be, you know, pretty, pretty strict about it. So that would be what? Like a four by four, 16 square? You know, we could, we could probably, we could, if they squeezed, you know, some of them get on the, each other's shoulders. I think we could squeeze all of them in. <laughs> uh, the delivery of It's Winter was flawless. It was. It was absolutely perfect. I agree. But what if they dash? Oh, you're right. So actually it would be like an eight by eight. Again, if we're if we're being you know uh, uh, conservative with assuming twenty foot walk, so yeah, forty foot run, yeah, absolutely. So that's an eight by eight. We could fit these. We we could we could get you know we could we could get them in. I think we could get them in. I can't get, even get up from bed in six seconds. <laughs> well, then we just put you at the front, Mustang. That's you know. There's there's varying degrees. We put the most athletic people in the back, and we, and we put the less athletic people in the front. Very simple, very straightforward. <laughs> go go go! That's up to you guys. How do you want, how, how do you want to do this? Oh. <laughs> they can't get. No one can get cut in half, can they? They can't get uh, hurt. Shit. <laughs> well, as soon as we see it start to shrink, we stop. We cut off the line. Well, what we should do. Here's the thing that I'm 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 worried about. We don't want like a kid to go through and then right. get separated from their mom. No, no, no. Only. Well, only everybody's got to grow up at some point. <laughs> how many children are here? Uh, I'd say you have seven children. Children with their. Ink Charm makes a good point about the bag of holding. The bag of holding has air for like 10 minutes, right? You're fine. <laughs> Moms go and families go first. Well, what we were families. saying the, the the terribly injured, the people with the worst injuries. All right, those people first. Yeah, those those people first. Yeah, because they'll go through real fast. And then with kids, <laughs> but they need attention now. They need let's attention. let's let's hey, we're gonna be doing this every I'm, day for I'm, several I've days. Got a, I've got a weird theory. Let's not send people with injuries yet, so that, that they can perhaps recover? 
Pike can stay here and take oh, care of them for call. a little bit. Okay, so the we'll get some. Stay. And well, we so I can like explain what's wagon. happening to the. Can't like put him on a wagon. I don't want to lose a wagon to White Snow. This is just how Schindler did it, by the way. What? No, he just debated it for a while and then. I, 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 no words! <laughs> and the room goes, no words! I looked and the mug comes up. <laughs> okay. So. So not be injured. Family. Matt just looking down. I'm not even. It's just, it went straight past me. Like, I heard it, but I did remember Sam Schindler joke. Uh, Liam is mega. That's, uh, dude, I'm just like, I didn't even. I'm, I think. More fucking mega is Matt here of like, I'm just like, so whoop, like, not that it went over my head, but I'm just, whoosh, I'm moving on, moving forward. Families first. How about Families that? first. They can move. <laughs> we'll count to six, and then we'll put a rope down, and when we hit six, we pull the rope, and then we'll just hold everybody. <laughs> or we just Wait, start, there's a rope? Just, okay, maybe if we see it start to shrink, I'll hold the people back. Yes, just hold the people so back. So, Pussy, you're first, everybody follow through. Follow through. Follow through. So, okay. any families here? <laughs> families? Uh, some of the kids raise their hands, some adults go over and like, grab kids' hands and stand next to them. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, you're really responsible. I can, I can tell when you're lying, sir. Are of you cool. responsible for that child? Make an inside check. Oh, jeez. Yeah. 26. <laughs> uh, two of those people are definitely just taking a kid's hand in hopes of getting through first. <laughs> oh, geez. I'll walk in and start cracking my knuckles behind Vex. But I mean, I can wait, no worries. <laughs> Child, where's your parents? Do you have one? Uh, they haven't shown up yet. Oh, dear. Aww. What should we do? Keep them here in case the parents come. Okay, then you Big would stay and wait for your, your family, yeah. okay. potentially. So you'll stay with Pike for now. Yes. Pike kind of comes over and like pats him on the shoulder. They're the same height, so it's easy. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do um, completed full families who are comfortable. They can move. Okay. Here we go. Uh, All together, completed full families, there are two. How many people? Um, be a total of eight people. That's good, that's a good amount. Yeah, that. think about it. One, one thousand, one, one thousand. And then any other like, single people that can move? <laughs> I did just hear... I heard something go off. I don't know what it was, but this is going to be this is gonna be the fastest BRB of your life. You know what? I'm not even going to go onto the BRB screen. I'm just going to say... BRB... So fast, for real, for real. BRB so fast, for real, for real.
Lunch has been made, or lunch has been put in. Tea has been made. Well, potion, actually. Which this is, I mean, we are, we are going back. We are going back to our roots here. We're going back to our roots. The old headphones, the fucking potion. I think we're good. I think we're good. Ugh. What are we talking about? What? Cats and rats and... What? What are we talking... Okay, I, I am... I am... I, I'm moving on. They, I am getting confused. Chat, yeah, chat has been totally normal. I can see that. <laughs> Fast. Yeah, a couple single people uh, to, to, to bring up the rear. Yeah. 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 Just, just in case. You, might be able to you have about 10 more people that raise their hands. Uh, we can get that many like, through in six like, seconds. Like late teens, early 20s. Get ready to run, people. All right. So, um, let's go to the three. Percy, you're going to lead. I made this with the wrong Percy, you're going to lead. We're going to put the eight up front. Yep. With the 10, 15 stragglers behind. And we're going to tell them. I tell them all. All right. As soon as you see that tree start to part, run! <laughs> run your face off! And then you're I tell that to the you, crowd. You hang out by the tree. And keep running, so and that you make room running. for everyone behind you. We don't want, like, it's not the bottom of an escalator. <laughs> yes, keep Whatever running. that is. Yes, it's the thing I've been working running. on. It's going to be don't great. Don't stop in the tree. You will create uh, terrible going. congestion. Everybody can come can I, can, I, uh, <laughs> can I inspire Keyleth for this? Sure. Okay, I will, I will perform She's going to uh, need it. A limerick for her to inspire her. I know an air-headed young druid whose plans are more gassy than fluid. When the battle starts, she turns her pals into farts. They see danger and pass right through it. <laughs> Thank you, Scanlon, I love it. It's so like me. Take a 1D. You really nailed me. Die. Right there. Thank you. Uh, I could be like the detail-oriented one about this whole thing, but should somebody be counting as soon as he starts so that we like put yeah. down an arm at six? You count in your head. You Ryan. really don't want me and to. And I might count out Inspiration, I can get a few more count. seconds in there. We'll see. Maybe. We shall see. We'll uh, see. I'll say for the sake of this, go ahead and roll a wisdom check. Oh boy. Count the gold. You can count. So just roll oh, a this turns to three. 20 and add your wisdom modifier to it. Dude, you want to know what you could do to just to make this truly insane? <laughs> if you're the DM here, if you just want to be truly unhinged about it and go as uh, as roll as you can. Just have Keyleth roll a raw D100. <laughs> Just have her roll a fucking D100 and add the inspiration, and that's how many people you get through. <laughs> Absolutely no modifiers. Fucking do it, coward. You won't. There's a two-thirds chance she gets way more than she needs. All you have to do is get over 30 with a D10 inspiration. How could this go wrong? <laughs> do it, coward. Do it. That's that elder. Oh, that's not good. You that's got great. inspiration if you need it. I do. Can I add my inspiration to this? Oh, that's good. That helps a lot. Okay, so that's 13 total. Wait, what am I just adding? Just my straight wisdom? Yep. With modifier. Um, straight wisdom. My modifier, 19 total. 19 total. Okay, so as you. <laughs> As you all gather around in the center of the temple, Keyleth, you step up to the outside of one of the two front trees to the temple, uh, one of the ones you guys are usually used to transport to and from here. As you focus in and reach your hand out and touch the outside of the tree's bark with a rough tearing sound, the tree bark just widens into uh, an oval-shaped doorway that is immediately visible on the opposite side. You can see before you uh, a lightly snow-dappled landscape that is the central market of Whitestone. We put blankets on everybody, right? Because we said yeah, we yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. For what you had. Okay. You don't really have a cast go, of blankets. Go! No! Oh, run! Go! Go! Oh, go! All right. Go, Percy, go! Who's pushing? Who's pushing? Percy. I'm already through. Yeah, Percy's through. All right, so are you guys just letting them go through their own run, 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 <laughs> all, all the rest of the family people go through, the, the young folks push through. You managed to get a total of uh, 23 people. Oh, that's a good amount. Uh, good a few work. folks even weren't even planning to go on this. We're so driven by the sudden shouting grog voice echoing from behind. And they just charged for it, Black Friday style. And uh, uh, just managed to escape You know the tail end of the spell. Critical roles infecting us, dude, I swear. I regret nothing. Well, I hope, I hope Percy comes back soon. I've yeah. got the gate stone. All right, so. What's that? That thing, thing. I'm oh, you've got going to get everybody yeah. organized. Everyone, please follow me. We're heading towards the, the main castle. They're all kind of looking around. As, as Welcome to Whitestone. 
gentle, gentle snowfall kind of coming through the sky itself. You can see is covered in, in uh, relatively light white clouds, just just enough moisture to, to carry the little snowfall that's happening. Uh, there are folks in the center of the town that are all kind of surprised to see this arrival, but recognize you um, and just kind of cheer a little bit. Hey, <laughs> dude! I just picture like a bunch of a uh, <laughs> a bunch of Whitestone residents coming up to Percy and be like Ambassador Percival, and all of the refugees he just brought are like Ambassador. Where are you an ambassador to? And he's like, I'm to, to, to here. And they're like, what? Where's here? I don't. <laughs> they was moving fast. Hey, look, they weren't moving fast. They were just organized. <laughs> Thank you for that smattering of applause. <laughs> Um, golf claps, golf claps. <laughs> if they have D1000s, yeah, you need a, you need what, but it can't be a combination. It can't be like the normal D100 where we like roll with two dice. You can't do that shit. You can't just roll a D1000 with three D10s. You need, <laughs> you need a big ass ball. <laughs> you just blow up a beach ball and you write a thousand numbers on it. That's how you get a D1000. Uh, the refugees all gather up behind you, and you guys walk towards Castle Whitestone. We make our way to the castle. Uh, the guards greet you and lead you inside, and within a few minutes, uh, Cassandra comes down uh, from the upper floor and goes, Percival, you've, you've returned. Uh, things are not going well. Uh, have you heard any news of what, a way of to what it. has been transpiring there? No, we, we've been better focused uh, in restoring our city. Why? Uh, yesterday, we were attacked by... A group of chromatic dragons. The city is destroyed. Uh, there's just no simple way to say this, but we are under siege. We were afraid that Whitestone would be destroyed as well, but it seems that uh, they have passed over you so far. But we fear for many cities' safety. Um, I was hoping that it would be all right if we moved a small number of refugees through to Whitestone for the time being. Uh, less than a hundred. I yes. imagine. Oh no, that these that are would the be first fine. twenty some odd that we've pulled through. And she kind of looks behind you and looks at the crowd and kind of snaps her fingers. And some of the guards step forward and she goes, "Please, if you would uh, make sure to find any of the various unoccupied buildings are provided to these refugees." Thank you. And the guards <laughs> nod and begin gathering the group and sending them back into town. And she kind of gives you a look back and says, uh, "For better or for worse, we happen to have a number of vacancies in the city due to recent events." But uh, oh well, yes, nothing I, anything I should know about. No, just. Uh, <laughs> No, just just all the people that the fucking Briarwoods killed, Percy. Come on. Okay. Uh, uh, is is a getting pizza. I'll be back. One second. I just I literally just have to like take him out of the oven. All right, the pizzas are a skosh underdone, so we're we're just we're just waiting for a, for a, for a second for a skosh. What what one second? One second. All right, there's still a skosh underdone, but that's okay. That's okay, they'll cook out a little bit. All right, wait. Oh no. Oh no, no, the tablet's falling. The tablet's falling into the pizza. Wait. 
This can't be how it ends. No. Not for me. Streamer got on camera abusing Alexa? What are we what are we talking about? <laughs> Angry shouts at Alexa. What do you mean? Is this a kick the dog moment? No! If anything, kicking the AI should be equivalent to petting the dog. They should they 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 swap when we're talking about AI. I absolutely yell at my Alexa. She's a dumb piece of shit. I hate her. I don't even know where she is. She's down there. She's underneath the bookshelf where she belongs. <laughs> Streamer got uh, is chat invoking Roko's basilisk? It sounds like, dude. <laughs> what Twitch poll? There's a poll on Twitch? What is Mustang, my loyal mod, doing to me now? Oh, there's an ad in progress on Twitch, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> okay, yeah, Alexa definitely will get me in my sleep. If there is a way I go down, it will pro- Okay, actually, you guys want to hear something scary? You guys want to hear something scary? So I have a... <laughs> you, you want me to bring down the mood real quick? Um, Sally eats pizza while moving his mouth to yell. <laughs> yeah. You hear, um... So I have a bunch of I have a bunch of uh, smart devices that can be controlled by Alexa, and I used to have them all on this software called Home Assistant, and I took them all off. Um, and I'm glad I did now. Um, someone somehow uh, got access to uh, the I was about to say the name, but I definitely shouldn't. Um, the type of light bulbs that they are, like the the company that makes them has like a, so like a smart software where you can like turn them on and off from inside the app, turn up and down the lighting, you know, like the dimness, the change the color, all that bullshit. And um, someone got access to it somehow. We weren't sure if it was like a technical issue or if it was actually like someone fucking with our shit. Uh, but yeah, someone got into our account somehow. Even after I changed the password, because I think it didn't log them out, which is great. Um, and uh, so they would just turn on our lights in the middle of the night. Um, we would wake up at like 2 a.m. to like our lights like going on and off, changing brightnesses, changing colors. It was so sick. It was so cool. Uh, and so... I replaced them all, and I had a lot of plans to um, do more uh, smart home stuff, and I am not doing that anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Especially, I was already, I had stopped kind of my progression, because in the background, I've been doing some, um, I've, been, I've been training up on some cyber stuff. I had like a pretty bare minimum cybersecurity proficiency and i've been training up on some stuff in case i want to take on some freelance stuff um potentially in like some offensive security areas it's just not worth it just not worth it to have all that bullshit be smart like it is it is a little convenient if you get it all working good but absolutely not worth it hmm <laughs> They could also access through Wi-Fi. They could not. I mean, they could theoretically. Sorry. I don't want to say they couldn't. They could theoretically. They couldn't on my network. My network is very locked down, and I have records of all of the devices that join, and any device that is not pre-registered gets automatically rejected. I have a guest network for that shit. Uh, <laughs> um, but... But yes, theoretically, yes, they definitely can. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I can I think you absolutely should hold off. Like, the biggest, like, red flag to me was that when I noticed the suspicious behavior, I was like, hey, um, 
I'm going to change the password so that it logs them out and they have to log back in and they won't be able to log back in because they don't have the new password. Didn't log them out. Contacted support. Again, I'm not going to name the company because I still have some of their smart devices uh, before I transition off fully. Um, and um, so, but um, the, the company support was basically like, yeah, we can't force log off a device. We can't force devices to, like, log out of the account. And I was like, you're joking. You're, you're, you cannot be posturing as a serious fucking company right now. You cannot, <laughs> you can't log someone out of the device. That's insane. Oh, it's a fucking car outside. I heard a big beep. Um, that, that's ludicrous that you are, that you are, um, that you're posturing as like a real technology company right now. And they were like, sorry, but dude. Um, so yeah, yeah, that is, um, that really ruined, uh, any amount of, uh, security conscious faith I had in it. I'm, I'm now transitioning off of all my smart shit. Not worth it, dude. Not worth it. Mm mm mm. If I've learned anything from pirate software, do not bother getting smart devices. Yeah, is that what uh, is that what pirate says? All right, dude. I mean, he's he's got fucking offensive security creds. I I have more offensive security creds with than the average person, but he's he's been a fucking professional in the field. Um, so I would if if he recommends it gives give makes me more confident in my opinion i'll tell you that <laughs> no separate iot vlan i mean i could but i don't need it that wasn't even the problem they didn't gain access to my network they they fucking gained access to the account outside of my network which is a whole separate fucking uh, point of failure that I honestly had not considered. I felt very confident in my network security at home, and I still do. But the fact that these companies outside of my network can tunnel in to my shit, I had never considered the fact, and I've, I've considered this since, our, uh, our cameras that we have, you can't connect to them off of our Wi-Fi. You have to be on network in order to connect to them. Great. I had not considered the fact that these smart lights you could connect to from off network, even when I wasn't on my VPN. And I was like, ah, the moment I realized, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, for for lights, you know, it's one thing. It was annoying. It was a little scary. It's not too big a deal. But like, consider that if you have like a fucking uh, door lock, right? Like a like a ri like ring doorbell makes fucking door locks now. And I'm fairly certain that in their advertisements, I have seen them like showing off connecting remotely. And I guarantee that most of the people buying this are not setting up a VPN to connect to their home network, which absolutely means that someone that doesn't even have access to your Wi-Fi, to your network, could connect and open up your front door. Ah, <laughs> that's fucking terrifying, dude. No, thank you. <laughs> Mm. That's what Thor says? Yeah, I know. Mm. Absolutely ridiculous. Seems like they would have to try to make that happen. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Seems like the bare minimum for keeping your customers safe. I think they... And to their bare minimum of credit, I think that they are a light bulb company and they are not considering a their, their own products a significant security risk. But they absolutely are. <laughs> absolutely positively are. <laughs> half up, Sputnik, half up. Mm. <laughs> the clapper is unhackable. Fuck yeah, dude. 
Um, I have zero interest in being able to control my lights from outside the house. Absolutely, Daniel. I didn't, I didn't consider it. I didn't, I, I honestly, I had zero interest in it either. I did not consider that the brand I was buying once I bought them, I didn't consider the fact that like, oh, I can connect to them from outside the house. That was not why I bought them. <laughs> uh, and that was not even, I don't think part of their pitch, but it just happens to be one of their fe feature sets. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely, AKL, yeah. It's not the hardest thing in the world to open a front door lock in the first place. You can just do it subtler through a network. Yeah, I mean, I think that the thing is, right, you could, uh, I, you could do it much more subtly uh, with, with less likelihood of evidence. Um, and... Like, like, if I just, like, walk up to a... Like, like, let's not even say that it's, like, on the front door. Let's say it's on, like, the basement door. Like, I could just, like, walk up real fast and open the door as opposed to having to, like, sit there and open it. So there's just a lot lower chance of, like, you getting caught, you know? Um, Smart devices are just... Uh, as they are, just a leak into your house. Yeah. Smart lock is great, no worse than a dumb lock, just never put them on the internet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I don't I don't fundamentally disagree. Yeah, I just you just have to make sure that it is all on your local network and that you have a very robust network security. You have which again, I felt confident about and then all this shit happened. Um yeah. Uh, yeah, Alexa, unlock the front door from the yard. It will open. Yeah, you you absolutely have to make sure that you don't tie it to a vocal thing that could be detected from outside. Anyways, anyways, that that yeah, whole tangent. But um, yeah, that was that was a fun thing. Uh, also, speaking of like, I haven't been getting a lot of sleep. It's been because someone has been fucking turning on my house lights at three a.m. And that doesn't keep you up at all after it happens. <laughs> Just what we've, we've lost many in the struggle against the Briarwoods. Um, but yes, they will be provided for, I assure you. So I will let you know to stop all business with Imam for now. Be very wary. Prepare the city for a possible dragon attack. Uh, things are looking dark. Yes, yes. Uh, and if it's possible, any research, uh, any energy that can be put forward towards mounting some sort of defense against these creatures would be greatly appreciated. Right, right. Um, well, we had a, a, a few individuals that were researching the ziggurat beneath the city. Uh, two left a while back, and we had one arrive just the other day. Who, who arrived the other day? Uh, I cannot recall his name. Uh, it's realm Seeker, Realm Seer. I can not bear there. I can, I can. Please I bring can, me to him. All right, uh, and Cassandra leads you uh, down into the city again, and um, one of the houses has been provided. She knocks on the door, and the door opens, and you see stepping out uh, an older gentleman who you've heard of, but uh, not really had an encounter with since. No, no, actually, you encountered him for the final ritual that took the phylactery from Grog. And you were going to steal a brass box from him, Matt. You don't remember? Chest. Oh my um, god. But this is uh, Realm Seer uh, Eskel Ryan Darien, uh, the Archmage that basically was one of the uh, folks who lived within Westeron and was called to White Stone as That's part of the research. That's some pre-stream yeah. stuff. As the door opens, yes, he kind of comes out of his eyes. And I'm aware of it! Just in light, and you can see the interior is very dark. He's one of those kind of lives in light, <laughs> lightless territories type person. Comes out with his round spectacles around his nose, and his, his robe is kind of disheveled and kind of bundled up over his shoulders. He goes, yes, if I may be of service. Um, We've met. You look very familiar. Quite. Yes, we have. You're the, um, you're with those shits, weren't you? <laughs> uh, Unfortunate yes. title you've chosen. Uh, long gone, thankfully, long gone. Box Machina is as well. Box Machina, glad you took my suggestion. We, yes, thank you for that. Uh, 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 what, can, what can I do for you? Um, well, first of all, how goes the research into the. Uh... Frustrating, to say the least. Um, it appears that this entire. And he kind of walks back into the house expecting you guys to follow, and as you enter, immediately you're hit with the smell of sage and other uh, burning herbs, and you can see there's a vast number of books that are strewn about the table in front and, uh, and the fire. In the fireplace in the back is like pouring smoke up into the, the roof area and so starting together on the stonework on the outside. And uh, it looks like there's two or three different kettles going off with different types of tea, and it's complete chaos in here. But he seems to be in control of most of it, at least. He, so he goes, 
Uh, from best we can ascertain, this is some sort of um, a, uh, a magical siphon device. It has prevented us from uh, utilizing any sort of uh, uh, ritualistic uh, endeavors in uh, ascertaining its nature. It's, it's quite perplexing. I'm uh, hoping to either head over to Wild Mount or perhaps uh, return to the Cobalt Reserve and perhaps find some uh, historical information about such an object. Well, but, uh, nothing in my current. Sir, I have some bad news for you. I hail from Iman, which has been attacked by chromatic dragons. I'm sorry, what? Dragons have declared war on civilization. A group of dragons have destroyed our city, and they have destroyed other, other cities as well. Uh, we are in desperate need of powers to defend ourselves with. So I would be very careful and send forward, send word ahead of yourself before you travel anywhere. It may not be there by the time you get there. Well, I guess it's good that I um, moved my tower before I left. <clears throat> Things are looking grim. I would ask that while you, if you intend to remain and work on your research on this anomaly beneath our city, perhaps thinking as to how it may be turned into a weapon for our use against these creatures would not be out of the realm of question. Hmm. And any information that you do have of the chromatic dragons would be invaluable. Any re research that can be done, we are at war. Ah, this is very disconcerting news. I will do what I can. Uh, unfortunately, uh I'd have to get back to the Cobalt Reserve. That is um, where most of my research is completed. Um, it's Western? Yes. Let me see. Uh, uh, Jack! And he snaps his fingers, and you can see his, his manservant, Jack, who you've met before. Uh, a slick back, kind of darkish red hair, mustache. Uh, um, this was uh, a bit very prim and proper type uh, manservant, well dressed, steps out of the shadows. Yes, my lord. <laughs> my lord. Uh, if you would be so kind, uh, prepare me for travel. So, uh, Pack Western, up Western is no more, sir. Well, that's really frustrating. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why that gave me the giggles. I think it's because I was about to throw so much suspicion. <laughs> on this fucking manservant. In the moment he said that, I couldn't tell you why, dude. All of my suspicion fled. I'm like, nope, this guy's the real deal. <laughs> this guy's cool as hell. I'm down with him. What's his fucking name? I totally missed it. Uh, What about, let's see, Jekt? Okay, look, I didn't catch that his name was so similar to my own, all right? I didn't, that was, that, that is not part of my decision-making process. <laughs> as, called, as a man servant named Jekt, totally chill dude in a chill mood, nothing suspicious at all. I won't entertain it for a fucking second. <laughs> Suckened. <laughs> Cities being attacked is indeed frustrating. That's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm saying. His fingers, and you can see his, his manservant, Jack, who you've met before. Uh, a slick back, kind of darkish red hair, mustache. Uh, um, this was uh, a bit very prim and proper type uh, manservant, well dressed, steps out of the shadows. Yes, my lord. My lord. <laughs> uh, if you would be so kind, uh, prepare me for travel. So, uh, Pack Western, up this Western is no more, sir. Well, that's really frustrating. Yes. <laughs> really. <laughs> Extremely aggravating. Yes, I am unhappy with this circumstance. How am I supposed to do my research without a place to do my research? Well, we, we hope that you'll find our winters here quite solitary and uh, convenient on that level. <laughs> Things are looking grim. Oh, you wouldn't say that again. Oh. I must go. I have other work to do to start preparing. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> to start preparing for. Yes, yes. Go do your thing. For good day, sir, and good luck to you. Should I find anything? How are I? Uh, whereabouts? Where, where are you? <laughs> we don't know yet, but we will be returning here. That does not help me. I uh, get him, get will him. do Cassandra, my best. Cassandra will be able to get a hold of me if necessary. Ah, Cassandra. All right. Someone of use around here. I'm going to go find my sister and make my way to the stone. I, he, kind of, he doesn't even say goodbye to you. He's like completely flustered. And I will say this is potentially making me trust Eskel more. Damn it. <laughs> it's funny for everyone who's like taken completely 
about the horrid situation. Heart. He just seems really perturbed about the. Uh, inconvenience how, of yeah, it's so inconvenient. That library. Why is it the internet working? Oh, <laughs> basically. Uh, all right, you find your way to Cassandra again. Um, she's, she's waiting outside of that room. Uh, I, I hope he's been helpful, brother. He he. No, he wasn't helpful, but it's it was very helpful one. in the way he wasn't helpful. Yes. It's a strange, strange. He's a very strange man. Everything's going to be all right. I hope so. Thank you. Uh, I will return very soon. We will, again, with your permission, hopefully be using Whitestone as a place to regroup and prepare ourselves. Uh, is there a worry that these dragons might come here? Yes. How will we stop them? You'll hide. Or... I have... I have thoughts. Perhaps of a weapon, I don't know, but we're going to find a way to stop them. We have to. I'm not good at being the bearer of any bad news, but this is very dangerous, and uh, well, I don't know what we're going to do. Steal an airplane. Neither do I. <laughs> they don't have an airplane. <laughs> well, stay safe, Percival. I shall return soon. Uh, I hope so. We'll do what we can in the meantime to see to your refugees and hopefully try and prepare ourselves. There'll be a case. few more through possibly tomorrow. All right. With we'll, word. We'll be prepared. Thank you. She kind of reaches out and puts her hand on yours again and looks at you sternly in the face and goes, Be careful. I will. All I, I have left. And Cassandra, I'm proud of you. You're doing very well here. So the ways to go, brother. We'll get there. She hands you the gate stone. And with that, it's a slight popping sound. As you're uh, in a very soft bit of bluish purple light, your body just kind of slowly subsides and fades into nothing before just ventures out of existence. Uh, as you guys are back at the keep, suddenly, uh, who has the gate stone? As you're kind of holding it, it begins to kind of shake in your hand and give off this kind of warm light. Oh, I think our reservation's ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling the, what, seven remaining refugees? Uh, you have about eight or nine. Sorry you didn't make it through. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you'll be here forever. We'll get you there tomorrow, no big. Mom and dad still love you. You know, these things just happen. <laughs> Don't More worry about it. More food for you guys, That's which is A+. <laughs> uh, at which point now, the wait list. There's, a, there's a slight <laughs> smell of uh, like burnt cedar before the air itself begins to sound like a, a, a light hum of vibration as suddenly Percy's form <laughs> appears in the center of the room next to your gate stones. And both of the stones you guys are holding all of a sudden become white hot and you instinctively drop them before they tumble Cut. to the ground. Hey! They work! They work! They hurt. <laughs> Good to know. Right. Did you see uh, your sister? I did. Everything is fine up there. The research continues. <laughs> uh, they're happy to take people. It's wonderful. Um, so, and they're prepared for more. Um, they're also happy to be a base uh, of well. operations as we put things together. And you told them to make preparations in case something happens. Whatever preparations one can make for something like this. To be prepared to hide. Yeah. <sighs> for now. Worst case scenario, they can go underground. Worst, yes. worst, worst case scenario, they can go underground. Yes. They need to start making <coughs> food. They have to grow food. They haven't really recovered that yet. Mm. There's also a... Uh, Hopefully I hook them up There's also what? <coughs> I have one of those terrible ideas I get on occasion. What is it? I love it. <laughs> that thing beneath Whitestone could be a weapon. Ha. Yo. <laughs> what up, Aaron? How you doing? How you doing? Yo. Do you guys remember during the Whitestone arc when I was like, when I thought that that was what was going on, I was like, oh, the Ziggurat's like focusing it, and then this room that they're in is gonna like channel the energy up. It's gonna be a fucking like rail gun. Me and Talison, man. Me, <laughs> me and Talison. I said, oh, wow. ooh, that's true. Anything touching it disintegrates. Yeah, like so a dragon. Shoot it at something. No, I might not. be able to turn it into a projectile. <laughs> How would you turn it to a projector? Are you okay? That is a fun idea. It's a great <laughs> idea. A long term right, idea. Just choking on Percy's idea. <laughs> I can make an anti magic missile. A, 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 ma a magic missile? An anti magic missile. An anti magic missile? <laughs> An anti-magic missile. <laughs> one plus one plus two plus one. One plus two plus one plus one. Dude, you could uh uh fucking uh make it like a fission device. You know what I'm saying? Like um or not fission, uh fusion? Am I thinking right? The 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 type of nuclear energy, I don't remember if it's fission or fusion. I think it's fission. Where you have a uh you have like a molecule heal here. And then you take it and you shoot it with something at very high speeds. So you take like a take like a, like a like a particle and you accelerate it into really fast. Look at those speed lines. 
and it slams into this and it knocks a bunch of shit off. Right? And that's how we, that's like partially how we make energy. And then you, you know, fucking funnel that shit into railgun part D. So these go and and come popping out the other side. Dude, me and Percy are on this wave, my man. And so then you have these these particles flying out at maybe an even faster speed. I mean, so this has to be net energy positive, right? So you, you, you smack it, it pops off, and it goes towards whatever you're looking at. So this is what I'm saying, right? You hit it at the right angle with the right projectile, and you get a little bit of the black void. <laughs> to pop off and go now to be fair that is assuming that the hole is is a collection of particles of some kind which is what percy is also saying he's saying you know an anti-magic missile right assuming that the this is basically a clump of antimatter when i think that this is probably more reminiscent of like a black hole <laughs> And my my assumption of what is going on with this is that this is a this is a you know a black hole of sorts. So we have you know our accretion disk around it, and then we have kind of the the light the 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 accretion disk around it, right? You know, I have other colors. Why am I insisting on only making this with <laughs> with white? My assumption is that you know we have the accretion disk, and we also have that. Uh, which is actually the accretion disk from behind. And that the reason that this is anti-magic, the thing that we are seeing as the black hole is the point where actual matter, like that's the event horizon for the actual matter. My assumption is that because of the way that the weave works, Right, this is a large like fucking sinkhole of 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 matter. It's so dense. Uh, I am assuming that the weave is even more sensitive to it. So the event horizon, the point at which magic gets sucked into the hole, is like way further out. So I am. Oh, actually, wait. I have the perfect pen for this. I am assuming that the accre the, the the event horizon for the magic is just much, much, much further out. So while this idea is sick as hell, I think it is uh oh oh no. I think it is um fundamentally not what's fucking going on with this shit. I because you can't smack a black hole hard enough to get shit off of it. That's not how it works. That's not how Hawking radiation works. So this is more what I think is going on. So unfortunately, even though Percy's idea is cool as hell, I don't think it'll work. Um, <laughs> fusion is combining, fission is dividing. Right, 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 right. Time to make the black hole cannon. I mean, <laughs> I don't understand, but it works and maybe I can weaponize it. That's how all of our weapons have worked for all of history, Ron Quixote. You think we understood nukes when we put them into a fucking bomb? <laughs> barely, the answer is. We barely understood it. <laughs> Just like it's Thursday. Exactly. Uh, still catching up, but how does he do it? How does he, in fact, do it? <laughs> oh, man. Mega is making a particle accelerated railgun. I'm saying we could, but I don't think it'll work. I don't think it'll work. What if, what is a black hole if not a clump of matter? I mean, you're not wrong, but you can't bop shit off of it like this, you know? <laughs> So the Large Hadron Collider Exandria version, yeah. I don't like science in my fantasy. Also, Mega, let's talk about how fission works. <laughs> look, I simultaneously, look, I just like to uh, abstract my magic, or my, my science. I like to abstract my magic. And this is real fun to think about as an outside viewer. I'm probably not going to do it in the game. <laughs> 
The wrong per- perturbation could tip the world into a new vacuum state, which is how you get a new edition reset. <laughs> Wait, what's on the top left? Are you taking notes? Yes! Yeah, 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 yeah. That way I don't have to pause as much. I can, like, take visible notes. And then that way, at the end, I can more easily organize my, uh, my, my thoughts. And, I don't, like, it's, like I said, I don't have to pause as much. Black hole slingshot maneuver. <laughs> Abstract science, concrete magic, so Star Wars precisely. Uh, I just want to put it on a stick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm liking his thought process, but I don't think it'll work. <laughs> I had an endless one this morning. That's a great idea. I've been, I've been mulling it over. Could we fire it from an airship of some sort? Yes, I was actually part of the idea. <laughs> Percy, when I tried to touch that thing, it, it was like it was sucking me in. It, I don't think that thing can be touched. How are you going to um, turn it into a projectile? I have thoughts. I'm going to follow them through, and it may require some experimentation in the future, but I At think perhaps... At the cost of possibly your life? No, I no. take my life into my hands any time I build something. I think, I think that a non-magical approach to containing it might actually work. I think the problem well, is... Well, that's good, because it cancels out any magic. I think things. the problem is, is that we keep trying to magic our way out of something that denies magic, and maybe I can engineer our way out of it. Have they, have they found anything out? Did you get any updates? A little bit of information. There'll be more later. I'm, I'm going to take a look at all the data and see if it's possible. Should what? we go visit the class, please? <coughs> Hold oh, back. please. I'm trying to be more open. Yeah, let's go. What time is it? Oh, the tangents certainly remain deadly. They will all, the tangents will never leave us. <laughs> How to split the thumb. Uh, at this time, <laughs> it's pretty close to dusk. The sun is getting close to the mountain line. You probably have another hour of daylight. Okay. To the class? Yeah, they're probably nocturnal anyway. That means they're around at night. Yes. They're not nocturnal. Turtles. No. <laughs> they're, they're not turtles. Did you learn something new, Grog? <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a calendar really worked <laughs> out. Yes. Heading back to Mumon? Is that what we're doing? We're really going. Everyone? Some? Yeah. All? Pike should stay behind him, careful. You seem to have reservations. Jax, are you okay going down there? You're marked for death by these people. <laughs> yes. I've been down she's... there several times without knowing that. I know, I just feel like it might put you on she's, edge. She's not marked for death. She was marked for death. It's just awkward. It's awkward. I'm not a full-fledged member. They don't like me. I don't like them. Maybe I can become a member. Maybe you can. This is politics. You're not supposed to like them. Well, let's go then. Yeah, what are you saying? <laughs> Uh, you guys keep one. You guys taking the tunnel, or are you watch Daniel. It'll be like going back and watching old CR, like when they, you know, have like audio issues and and all that shit. What's up, Atlas? Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Yeah, it'll be it'll be like going back uh, and watching old CR. You know, we're all just figuring our shit out here. You'll you'll notice that I'm not in my lovely new abode in the bottom of a parking structure. And what will you do then? <laughs> Uh, Walking in. Do you want the? Here, we're taking the, the, we're taking the, the secret entrance. Oh, come on, we've never even we ever walked in yet. Garthon Where are the us a secret entrance? He's waiting for us and having them prepare. Oh wait, this could get Where's bad. The hmm? Where's the um, you guys walking through your tunnel into the city? Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, 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 we're not gonna walk in the outside. Isn't that a great idea? Sorry. We're taking our secret tunnel into the city. Okay. All right. It's kind sort of puts us in the wrong side of the city, but it's okay. What else are we gonna do? Walk Go through the main <coughs> Oh, how are you doing there? You okay? I'm good. Mm-hmm. Right. Sorry, I just oh, I got a piece of chip stuck. No, I'm gonna leave one with Vax. What is it? The gate stones. I'm giving Vax my gate stone. That's a good idea. Or and we what, can you, me or the other keeping one? you the other one. For now, it's a good right. idea. I want to hold on to it forever. He's the one who's going to get stuck in a room alone if they yeah. decide they don't we like just it. Let's call this the Jenga stone. <laughs> and moments of need. Jenga stone. Yeah. Remember, it takes about a minute to work. Is this? Do I need to uh, spend <laughs> no. a little time with this, or no? Just no. Um, however, it it does work only once a day. Once a day. So, so after, after another long rest, you'll be able to use it. Again. All right. Good to know. Got it. Yeah. All, All right. right. Into the city. In your pants. In my pants. So, put it in his pants. Get your like you do. Half elven storage space. Um, you guys find your way back into Iman, utilizing your secret tunnel entrance, coming up through the uh, the false outhouse once again. Uh, you leave the chain behind, locking it up, and make your way into the city. Um, cast pass without a trace on us. Alrighty. You guys, uh, I'd like you all to make a stealth check. Oh, shit. Yeah! Come on, giant blue nutball oh. dice. Oh. <laughs> That's your roll 20! <laughs> oh, it fell out of my hand. I don't think it should count if it fell. Nope, too bad. Oh, that's me. Oh, I get advantage! Oh, and we got a plus 10, right? Yep. 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 33. 
15. Ooh. 35. 38. 35. Did you really roll that bad? Yes. Wow. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wait. Paige? Okay, someone is in the kitchen, but the dogs are not freaking out, so I'm going to assume it's Paige. <laughs> I did not hear Paige get home. What up? <laughs> You've walked past like four times? Well. <laughs> that was only that was only a little terrifying. Famous last words. Wait, uh, with your listen? With no judgment, is Trinket coming? Trinket is staying with Pike. <sighs> That's a fine decision. Okay. Um, Mel hath frozen <laughs> over. Placing Trinket over here. Oh! Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he is crying. Cry. So, as you guys I'm start dodging between the alleyways, making your way towards the north side of Iman, around side the uh, ruined interior of the Cloudtop District, um, you instinctually begin to, and I'd say, who else has proficiency in uh, reception? Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys all start noticing there are what looked to be initially flocks of birds moving through the sky. Some of them are heading down into parts of the town in the distance. As you continue to push forward, one set of four in particular start heading overhead. You look up and you can see what appears to be a, a small cluster of about five or six uh, flying creatures. Not dragon sized by any means, but. Either a very, very large bird or something of that degree. You can't make out the details as right now, so sounds being said, a lot of it's just dark against a uh, kind of red orange sky. Um, you kind of keep yourself at bay, can wait for them to pass. Yeah. Oh, waiting for them to pass? Can we. Unless we want to do as, a, as a dragon favored enemy, could I guesstimate what those Wigan creatures are that would hang out around dragon? Could you determine if they're wyverns? Uh, yes, they are actually indeed wyverns. W wyverns? So I wasn't sure if Matt was going to have wyverns or, or like, you know, any any sort of like non-humanoid uh, sort of uh, uh, draconic enemies hanging around. I find it odd. Like, you know, we were talking about last time of like Grog wants to hit something. They want to do some sort of combat against maybe, you know, enemies uh, that, that work for the dragons. One of the dogs just had a giant fart. I am I am very interested at the choice to not just make it wyverns, you know, at, at, at first. It seems like that would be more that would that would more directly make sense to me if he was planning for it to be a combat. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think more about it. Wyverns, however you want to pronounce it. Wyverns. Uh, both work in my world, it's fine. I say Wyverns. Uh, yeah. What do you mean? Like <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah. They're, they're, di they're diving into the city and... You can see a few that dove into the city and just stayed there. And one group goes overhead um, and continues onward. Mm. Okay. Pushing forward deeper into the city, you make your way through the temple district and start pushing through Abadar's promenade, once again, retracing your steps from the day before. Uh, dodging through open areas as fast as possible to stay within the shadows. Um, all of you, all of you darting in one of the alleyways as you turn behind you and you can see uh, your tiny-legged gnomish bard friend keeping his best, uh, keeping up as best as he can before his foot hitting a divot on the ground and <laughs> falling face first into the ground, making just enough noise. Oh, sorry, sorry. You hear a little screech in the distance. <laughs> Coming up on the rooftop, you can see kind of perched up there appears to be one wyvern that's kind of looking over down at the currently toppled gnome. And on top of the wyvern, you see what looks to be something riding it, something that is holding what looks like reins on the edge, something humanoid is glancing over, just a little enough of a shadow to see. He sees me, I see him. Looks down at you, yeah. Okay, I will, I will cast hold person on him. Okay. I don't know what he is, but I want him to stop. And Scanlan's the only is one we all, we all see. Uh, you all just barely see it. Look over the edge of Scanlan's there, left in the middle of the main walkway. Uh, that is going to be a natural 17 on the will save. They. It'll be an 18. What's your DC? Well, it's 17, but uh, the hand cone makes it 19. Do you uh -huh. think I had the wherewithal to use it? 
with having you fallen on your face, I'm going to say probably not, since it wasn't specified, that would be a DC of 17. So, so the creature seems to kind of rear back for a second, kind of shake its head, and you get a little bit of a look at the feature at this point, too. But it is humanoid, but you can see its outer body is not fleshy or smooth. It is scaled and bumpy. You can see ridges across the back of the head, and in one of the hands looks like some sort of a spear. Um, and you know, I really wanted this to be a funny joke, but Matt doesn't stay still enough for me to be able to consistently get him right in the middle. It's <laughs> without without zooming out a lot. <laughs> Matt's here. Matt, where did you come from? <laughs> Immediately, as it rears back, it puts its head up and goes. Pow! Pow! Oh shit! Sure. Yeah, shit. riding on the back of the wyvern. I think it's like the airship. Um, awesome, fucking velociraptors. Uh, I would like you all to roll initiative. Yes! yes. This is gonna fight. be fun. Ooh. Fight, 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 we should fight, turn fight, it into a bunny, fight, Keyleth! Fight. Turn it into a bunny. Jesus Christ. I can do that today. Bum, 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 bum. Is it a bum, shitty bum, bum, bum. Oh boy. Not too good. Oh, not too good. Me not too good. Okay. Oh, I zoomed out a little bit to maybe get him more in frame. Fight, 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 fight. Scanlan, as you were running across the thoroughfare, you tripped and fell that way. That's me. Uh, the rest of you <laughs> had coming into this alley over here. Oh wait, what am I doing? I was, I, I, dude, I keep getting this, this feeling. We haven't had a lot of combats lately, so I, I kept being like, why, why is this taking so long? Because we're not on one point seven five. Currently, looking over the top of this rooftop, is this wyvern and his rider? I love that the rider's like, no, <laughs> nah, it's fine. Go all right, so, <laughs> alrighty, uh, that's gonna be. This is not. This is not it. This, <laughs> this will not be working. I can't believe you trapped Matt in a pocket dimension. 25 to 20? 26. 26. Um, oh. Uh, 20. 20? All right, it's 20 to 15. 18. 18. Uh, let's see, that. Uh, 15 to 10. Six. No. Five? Eight. No, no, seven. Five. <laughs> okay. Wow. Five. Uh. Uno. Oh. Whoa. How'd you? Oh, six, thanks for that. So you would be actually tapping Keyleth. Oh, so crushing, just to see the number on the die. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Sorry. Right. <laughs> the best of us. All right. So, uh, currently with this uh, guy up on top of the rooftop, uh, Percy, you are first. Uh, just a quick question, is he in flight or just sitting on the... Actually, before we start this, uh, I'm going to take another quick break to clean up my lunch, and we'll run an ad on Twitch, and uh, say hi to Paige and ask her how her morning was. So, I will be right back. I will actually put on a BRB screen this time. Um, and yeah. See you in a second. Do, do, do. And I'm always so ready for the see you in a second, and then I'm never ready for this actual transition. <laughs> be right. Just don't yell at Alexa anymore. Can't promise that.
Cause they told me you take too much Yeah, I sure do So I can feel that now If they only knew how this was Yeah, they would too Just to feel that now When the downtown lights start to come out at night We go insane, we go insane And when I arrive, I start to lose my mind I go insane, I go insane Cause they told me you take the wine What up? How we doing? And you know what? I'm not even gonna do all the pleasantries with ya. <laughs> We're gonna jump straight the fuck into it. Just sitting on the roof, perched on the edge, you can't even actually see everyone else who's near the front can see, the, the few that in the check. You've got a little bit of movement up there, but you're just kind of out of view with the building you're right in an alleyway. There's no easy way up into the roof, is there? Uh, aside from a, a low-place acrobatics check, you could try. Oh, that would be my whole movement, too, wouldn't it, though? Oh, look, and it's the same battle map that they use. Most likely. Yeah, let's see. And how high is the roof? Uh, I'd say it's about anywhere from 16 to 20 feet tall. It's two-story, but it's not, a, you know... It's I'm going to try, try and get a vantage where, where I can at least get where only three-quarter cover. So, like, I suppose I'm going to head uh, south down the alley to see if I can get a... Shoot these guys? Yeah. Okay, so Shit, I just re realized I forgot. I forgot I left the fucking tea bags in the tea. I gotta go take them out.
Can you tell we're in our unmedicated era? <laughs> can can you tell that there is a uh, distinct shortage of my medication? Is it is it is it visible <laughs> at all? You can get to about there if you want. I can get a good good look at him there. You can see, yeah, you have cover from there. Half cover's fine. Uh, so if I were to knock him prone, would he fall off the roof, or or could I try and push him off the roof? These are my uh, for the wyvern or for the uh, the writer. The wyvern. You can try. It's it's hard. He's sturdy on the side. Knocking him prone might just fall over onto the rooftop. Who knows if it'll slide or not? It's your call. We want to try. Um, I'll try knocking him prone and see if that's okay. Uh, see, actually, hmm. Do it. Yeah, it's either that or try and push him off the roof, which would be pretty funny. I'll try and knock him prone. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna use bad news because that's funnier. Okay. So you whip out. Take a shot. Uh, that's uh, twenty-eight to hit. That'll hit. Uh, and that's a <laughs> wing shot. So you have to make a uh, Constitution saving throw. Okay. Against eighteen. Well, this is this is the wing or leg shot, right? Wing or leg shot. I'm oh, sorry. It's a, actually, I'm sorry. I have a new sheet. Yeah. New uh, sheet. Uh, updated that. Uh, strength saving throw. Sorry. Strength saving okay. throw against uh, eighteen. That's a natural nineteen plus four for strength. So the twenty-three. Mm -hmm. save, we'll still take some damage. Still take damage. Though. I'm gonna take another shot at him too. Just f that. Um, that's. I was not quite prepared for this. Two d twelve plus six. Uh, 14 points of damage. 14 points of damage, nice. All right. And I'm going to take a reload, take another shot, and try and knock him off the roof. Go for it. The same shot? Same shot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, um, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, three, so that means I misfire. misfire. So, uh, <laughs> first shot, bad news, <laughs> echoes the sound of the blast just, uh, rippling through the nearby alleyways. The blast hits, uh, the wyvern in part of his arm, <laughs> sending a spray of blood as it shrieks in pain. <laughs> as you can see, his rider kind of moved to the side, and you see what looks like a second head behind the rider, um, from the reaction and movement. Looks like there's actually two of these Spiders. creatures riding on the back of this, this creature. Um, as you go to reload, bring bad news up again to fire a second time. You pull the trigger and there's a thump sound. And you can see now a stream of smoke <laughs> pouring out the back of uh, the gun itself. And you're a little worried what this is going to do if you don't fix it soon. Look down the barrel. Yeah, that'll work. Um, I can use my... I actually can't do... Uh, uh, am I going to panic and try and fix this? Um, Next turn. That's your movement. It's your three attacks. Give a bonus. Anything? I can, I'm going to throw an action, action surge and see if I can... Page needs my help. I muted before I was over. Uh, yeah, Page needs my help. One second. Every streamer becomes a chair at some point. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, real life. She um, realized that she's about to go into an interview. 
and realized that she basically like didn't have a way to listen like no like audio that wouldn't get also picked up by her mic um so that's why i grabbed the uh earbuds and w- she has big headphones but she didn't want to wear those for an interview you know so anyways back to this, this. go for it go make your uh your finger check Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so you spend your action. <laughs> You're trying to fix the gun and get bad news back. Uh, you manage to, to clear the barrel, get the pellet out, as the rest of the team starts coming up with their turns. Okay. The rest of your action. Okay. Finish the first turn. Grog. You're up. I'd like to hold my turn until it gets off the roof and maybe comes down to the ground. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, let's see here. Oh, it appears that my. Oh. Tell some paper and hand me that box next to the sure. fridge there. Thank you. All right. So, Grog, as you're doing that, the blasting sound of bad news that echoed through, you all of a sudden start <laughs> hearing other shrieks in the distance, Shit. like a call to arms of a number of other entities. Oh as you see, a multitude of other winged creatures begin to arise in the distance. Uh, I shouldn't have gotten in the box, should I? Yeah, we, we could just. We could always run, too. Good. How far are we from the tunnel Animals? system? Uh, far. Your ways. Uh, probably a good, uh, a good. Basically, no deadly. <laughs> also, I don't know if I'm going to do it um, today, tomorrow, Sunday, but I do think I'm going to do a no mic, no maybe face cam, probably not face cam even. Um, str- uh, like Minecraft stream, just like chilling out, just like. Uh, lo-fi beats to uh to sleep slash study to sort of vibes um and uh and and i think my strat because i don't think i want those to be like though I, I don't even think i want those to live in the live tab so i think those will be like they will be live for like while i'm doing them and then they'll get like privated um so I think that, or or at least, or maybe unlisted. I might unlist them, and then if you're watching them and you want to save them, um, then you can like copy out the URL, and we could even have like you know you throw like the URL in the Minecraft chat or something. But I don't want them to uh, like clog up the uh, the actual like live feed that has all of like critical eyes and everything. Um, and I also don't think I'm going to announce them. It'll just be if I'm feeling it. <laughs> but uh, I will, I will, I will let you know. Uh, chill. No, my streams are very popular with Critical Role friends. Oh, sick. Uh, that's because I I want to kind of like stream more, but save my voice a little bit, you know. Um, why is SGM not allowed on the stream? Why is SGM not allowed? SGM is very much allowed. In fact, I don't even think it's much of a leak at this point. I think he's 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 very solid. I don't want to release the full cast list of who I'm going to be playing Daggerheart with. In case any of them back out, because I think some of them are less solid, and I don't want you know it to be on them if they do. But uh, SGM will be one of the players uh, for for Daggerheart. So we 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 are doing something together very very soon. Um, we just got to get it's just scheduling now. People are busy, uh, especially people that are a mix of content creator and like still live and shit. Um, Will you collab on analysis afterwards? Could do. Could do. I'll be down. Uh, just make a playlist of them, and then you'll be able to watch them unlisted. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so they'll all be unlisted, but then they will also have a playlist. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I've been a fan of SGM for ages and would really love to see him play or DM anytime, any stream, any system. Hell yeah. I mean, that's... that's I I think both of us very much feel like... Man, we want to play, but neither of us want to like do an actual play. So, which is like a very weird line to cut with TTRPGs, you know? It's like almost anytime you see people playing a TTRPG online, it is within the context of an actual play. So, I think that we were both kind of looking for ways and the this new like Daggerheart intro adventure is kind of like the perfect way to go about that. Um, we both have some other ideas, some together, some separate on, uh, on other ways to play. Um, but anyways, uh, gonna, I was about to say, like, I'm going to leave. Like that was the outro. No, we're, why, we're, we're in the middle of the episode. What am I doing? <laughs> 25 minute run. There's another one on the roof over here. And there's one on the, on this roof here. Each one of them with their own riders as well. Now, uh, these, all right. So for this turn, this one leaps off and swoops down here to where Percy is while both of its riders leap off to the side. One that leaps off and rushes over to Scanlan on the ground and this other one that gets right up next to Percy. Uh, this one goes flying forward and lands. It is not a full at Friday. This first half is just really fucking long. <laughs> the first half of this is two hours. 
It's almost as long as the entire previous episode. <laughs> um, yeah. I will also say, I know I saw a Deadly in the chat earlier. Yeah, yeah, Deadly's like right there. Um, one of the other motivations for potentially not doing half eps is that the half eps definitely favor certain time zones. So if I did, I mean, you know, the full eps still favor certain time zones, but just to a lesser degree. So that is one of the reasons I'm considering moving from the one full ep to half ep system to the two full eps, um, is like partially for, uh, for the scheduling, partially for flexibility, also partially because right now, if I ever make a change to my schedule, it like fucks up the half episode scheduling. Whereas if I move to just full eps, then that would be, I guess, like less um, susceptible to fuckery, essentially. We'll have to see. I'm still really considering. I'm really uncertain on it. But it is something I'm thinking about. In the center to about there, where it, two of its riders leap off. This one kind of stays up in the air over this way in a flanking position, or in just a, a visual perspective with two of its riders in its back. Put them there. The clarifications, does this count as turns, or are they, since they're coming late to the party, or this is just them in position? This is them now entering the fray. Okay. Um, into the initiative order, just gameplay talk? Uh, yeah, well, this is the initiative order for, uh, for them okay. after being called by the guy who was already shouting out in oh, the air. Right, right, right. You didn't see them before. I like, okay, this is, this is a very minor thing, but I love the clarification here of, so that's when they entered the initiative order, like, gameplay talk-wise, of, like... I think Liam pretty solidly understood the fiction of what was happening, but he wanted to clarify some mechanics to make sure that he didn't do something he didn't want to be doing. Um, and while it would start, then I could speed up to live. Yeah, exactly, Deadly. That, that's one of my thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I, you know, s put those onto one day, then I would have three days to do other stuff. Yeah. Because I did also think about just, like, doing, like, one critical roll a week. But that would make our pace so fucking slow. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not willing to do that. Yeah. I have also thought about doing, like, critical roll Wednesdays and then, like, every other Sunday or something. There's, But I don't want it to be that inconsistent. Got a lot of thoughts swirling around up here around the schedule. Four. Give me your perspective. Oh, raptor. Like a um, raptor. 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 Okay. So we have first uh, the wyvern that swooped down on you, Percy, is going to go ahead and make a uh, attack with its bite and an attack with its stinger as a multi-attack. First oh, strike. Uh, that is going to be a the bite. Thirteen. That does not hit. The stinger, however, is a sh nineteen. I'm going to use my uh, my uh, amulet of the shield and uh, my AC for that attack to three. Okay. So. Yeah. So that will miss. So that uses the amulet. Good enough. So the stinger goes to strike you after the bite misses, and as you blast your chest, you can see now an arcane barrier just shines in front of you and completely uh, ricochets the stinger out into the air to the side as it kind of yeah. reacts angrily. Um, the other uh, giant humanoid lizard creature um, that's coming towards you with a, a giant heavy club uh, is going to attempt to slam you with it. There's so many things. Twice. I will attack you with this club. It's going to be a 17. Yep. And then it's going to try and slam you with a spike shield. That is 15. Yep. So I can just swing at you. Let's see. I'm, I'm sort out. I'm just, yeah. All right. Attacking you, Scanlan. Oh, shit. Uh, the one's on the ground there. All right. So that's two attacks against you with advantage. With advantage. You're prone. You're on the ground. Oh, uh, that'll be a 24 to hit. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and the spike shield is going to be uh, 24 again, actually. Oh, no. So as you're on the ground, slams you with the shield for ooh, uh, 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And Why did I bring Twig it? I know. What's wrong with you? <laughs> the shield slams you for eight points of piercing damage. So a total 20 points of damage. It just whack, slams you in the ground twice. Oh, this was a stealthing mission. It wasn't until you rolled a 15 stealth. <laughs> blame me, blame me. <laughs> um, those items are too far away for combat. The other guys are just kind of a the scenario here. Um, Okay, there is one fellow over here mm -hmm. that is a bit far away who steps off. He's instead of holding the same clubs and shields or other various attack weapons, he's carrying kind of a gnarled staff. Oh, shit. Steps forward and sees the weapon that you fired twice and have been fixing this large metallic uh, dangerous entity. Looks forward and begins hissing under his breath. Oh, that's good, he's good, he's good. Um, do I see this? You do. I'm going to release Oh, you are, you are being slammed on the ground. I'd say make a perception check, actually, okay. see if you see this. Because you are currently. 19. Yes, actually, I will say you do see this. I will release my counter spell. Okay. I assume he's casting something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, or has a terrible man. cold. Man. Man. I, I, will, I will sing at him. <laughs> and you still haven't hit what you're aiming for. <laughs> uh, a second level spell is, it is dispelled immediately. Yeah. As you attempt to heat metal on your weapon, you can see as the metal begins to glow for a moment and you can feel the heat welling in your hand. All of a sudden, the spell is shattered like the sound of thin glass in the distance as Scanlan shouts to an arcane ability. Um, 
That is going to end their opening turn. That brings us down to the initiative order. Vex, you're up. Okay, grab this. Oh, yeah, you're holding your action. Well, can I barrel down through the alley now that someone's on the ground and uh, race towards the one that's nearest Percy? I'll say sure. Uh, usually going forward, if you hold your action, that's just your action, not your movement. You still move to uh, the situation, but I'll, I'll let stand for this. It's fine. I'll remember that. Go forward. Yeah. So you're just going to tear down on this guy there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, not to, and I would like to swing twice with um, with Craven. Go for it. Yeah! So let me take your bonuses from last game, by the way. Oh, yes. oh my gosh! Yes, He's bonus. so strong from last game! Plus. Uh, that's 26. 26 hits. And uh, 14 on the second one. Uh, 14 does right. not hit. Okay. Is this a great weapon master? No, these are just a great attack. Did you rage yet? I raged. Oh. Correct. Did you rage? Yeah. Right. Oh, no, I did not. Do you want to rage as part of your bonus action to this? Oh, not to rage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Alright. So it's bonus action going to rage before Let's Go for it. 12. 22. Oh, wait. Yep, yeah, 22. 22 damage, alright. And. Your second strike missed. Oh, that's right. <laughs> 22, so you rush forward. Did you slam rage? Slam the sword into the side of uh, the lizard creature, puts its shield up, and it manages to block most of the blow, but it still slides off and slams into part of its uh, neck area. It shoves the blade out, however, uh, <laughs> it fails its save. Yes! Take a strength point off of it. Just add that to what you have now. What's strength currently? Uh, 22. So it goes up another plus one to attack it. God. If it just became 22, it does. Yes, it did. All right, go ahead, it's your turn. Next, you're up. Ridiculous. Hope they have some Is there anywhere I can stand that I get a good cone shape on some of these? Uh, or am I all blocked in? You can try and move through, you might get an attack opportunity from the guy that's attacking the Okay, how high are the roof? is the roof next to me? Uh, it's about 16, 20 feet. Can I acrobatics that shit up? You try to, go for it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, 31. Yeah, yeah, With that, you look over and see the rooftop up there. You leap off each side, ninja guidance out, up onto the rooftop with a very, very solid view of the entire battlefield before you, including the one flying uh, creature up there. Uh oh. Okay, then I'm gonna Hunter's Mark, the uh, magic user. Alrighty. But um. And I'm gonna conjure barrage. Whoa! In a cone to get as many of those fucks as I can. Oh, okay, it's a 60 foot cone. Conjure barrage. Right there. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Sorry, right. Scanlon. It was Scanlon as well. Oh, balls. Deal with it. I'm a little man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, go ahead and uh, roll for that. 3d8. Yeah, roll 3d8 damage. Okay. 3d8 damage. Yeah. Not that much. On me? Uh, Eleven, sixteen, 16. And then an extra 6 on that guy. Right, right. An extra 6. Okay, so he makes right. a save. Does not. Do I have to make a save? So, yeah. Yes, you do. What kind of save? Uh, this would be a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, I'm on the ground. Oh. Nope. That's a 1. That's a 9. You failed. So you take 16 points of, uh, <laughs> 16 points of damage from that. Uh, fail and... Uh, Success. Worth it. 16. Oh, great. Wyvern makes it. Half that is 8. Okay, all right, cool. Got it. So, as you go forward, leaping on top, you mark the one guy, turn around, and then release a torrent of arrows that just sprays into the center of this open uh, pathway in the city. Um, I believe that ends your turn. Yes, all right, that brings us to Scanlan. Oh, me? Yep. Balls, shit. Uh, I'm on the ground. <laughs> if I stand up, that's my action? Half your movement. That's half my movement. Yeah. Okay, I will stand up. He doesn't get to hit me, right? Not let's move away from him. Okay. Um, who, which riders are still on their beasts? Uh, these two are the only two that are still on the beast. All right. Then I will, I will hand cone it up, I will ignore the guy right next to me, and I will hand cone it up, and I will... He's got two riders? Yeah, they're both kind of, like, they have these kind of uh, ramshackle, you can see now, close up these, these leather kind of saddles, but they're mostly just like thrown leathers that are strapped to its back, and there's two of them currently holding on these knobs in front of us down. Two riders? Yeah. Come on, Scanlan. I guess I'll just dominate one of them. Yeah, 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 he's yeah, the main yeah. guy. Can you dominate the beast? Uh, he's not a person. Dominate person, dominate oh. monster. <laughs> I'm going to dominate the, the guy in front. Okay. <laughs> Maverick, not Hollywood. <laughs> Maverick and Goose. Well, in the end it was Hollywood, wasn't that his No, that was Merlin. Merlin? Yeah, but no, Tim Merlin Robbins. was the teacher that they, got, that they got in trouble Tim when he spun out. Hollywood word. was the guy that he was his... You don't want to do this, this is the first conversation <laughs> I've ever been in. You see <laughs> Ryder screaching down while it's holding on, and all of a sudden it kind of shakes its head for a minute, dead. and oh. looks down at you, eyes connected, and you know that this entity is waiting for its command. Okay. Um, you don't want to do this with me. You don't want to do this with me. Also, Travis, I believe, is right. Uh, d <laughs> Top Gun is maybe one of the only ones that I'm even semi-confident on, although I'm not that confident on it. Um, because I, it was my, um, it was my, uh, 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 like sick, uh, uh, TV show, like every, or not TV show, movie, got every time I got sick, we had a VHS of Top Gun that I would play over and over and over again. Uh, every time I was sick, I had a little, I had a little race car VHS rewinder, uh, that right next to my fucking like CRT that was, I don't even know how many inches, like fucking 10. It was like a little 10 inch CRT and it was right next to my bed. And so anytime I was sick, it would be like right fucking here had to be fucking terrible for my eyes. Um, and, uh, and, and I would just, ooh, just over and over and every time it finished, I would take it out and rewind it and then replay it. Was he right? I honestly don't know. I do think he was, but it, it has been a long time since I saw the original Top Gun. Oh, man. Top Gun had to be the sexual awakening for so many young young <laughs> men. Both, both uh, 
gay, bi, straight, anything. There's there's so much sexual tension in that movie for a <laughs> for a blossoming young adult. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't even imagine. <laughs> Can I only give it one Actually, command? Actually, sorry, I can't imagine very directly. Uh, <laughs> Return. Uh, you mean you can get a basic command and it'll follow through unless you want it to direct control it. Well, I've got two things to do. I can get rid of that fucker on his back and also <laughs> other things. Let's just go for the big kahuna. I command him to ride his beast to attack the one below him, the, the, the wyvern below him. Okay, all right, good enough. All right, and uh, do you want to say where you are, you want to move? Uh, no, I don't want to move because he'll hit me. Um, that would be bad. Who hasn't gone? You haven't gone? I haven't. Um, Vax hasn't gone. Uh, Vax hasn't gone. Oh, my oh. God. Because he rolled a one, remember? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, okay. Uh, I, I will inspire Vax with okay. my inspiration. And I will say, this is ground control to Major Aww. Vax. You've really made the blade. <laughs> <laughs> and the papers want to know <laughs> whose cloaks you Whose blood you spilled. All right, you can take a detailed inspiration. Detail. Yes. Okay. Vax. Rest in peace. You, just lost. you know what? I also got... Damn, we are really getting uh, mega nose pop culture today because I also know that only because of the fact that it is in the secret life of Walter Mitty. I do not know who it's by. I believe it's by the um, the guy. The guy that everyone's like, how could he not know the guy? Uh, by David Bowie, right. Right, and I just realized Paige just came in to tell me to 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 keep it down during the uh, interview, and then I immediately started screaming about David Bowie. Um, <laughs> right, right. Yes, the guy that you don't know. <laughs> Very strange movie, but it turned out really good. Super strange movie, yeah. But I I like it a lot. It always um it really uh, what's the word? I don't want to say encourages my wanderlust, but it makes me, it, 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 it very much like invites a level of like travel bug. I feel like whenever I watch it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Uh, Scanlon's turn. Uh, Max, you're up. Uh, so I'm having trouble seeing the battle map. Uh, Grog is right against a, a wyvern, right? Uh, Grog is against a, a lizard-like creature. Oh, so not against a wyvern. Uh, no, it's a lizard. Right. Uh, Percy's uh, next to her. And, per oh, so Percy's right there? Correct, yes. And Scanlon's next to the uh, the uh, magic user, right? No, magic user's over here. That's 100 uh, marks. But, the, but Scanlon's uh, up against the dude, right? Yes. All right, so what I want to do is uh, slink up behind Percy, reach over. Oh, no, I want to click my boots of haste is what I want to do. Uh, did you use them during the battle against the looters? I don't think so. I don't remember doing that. No, I didn't. No, okay. no I didn't. I okay. definitely didn't. Okay. Because I remember kicking myself for, uh, for I definitely didn't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so click. Everybody starts moving slow around me. Uh, I want to, so Percy's against the wyvern. I want to reach over Percy's shoulder and stab the wyvern. And then I want to throw another dagger at the dude standing next to Scanlan. On this side, do you mean? Yeah, well, I can't tell. I can't see shit. Is that over Percy's shoulder? Uh, in order because right now you're being blocked, you can't quite get to the wyvern unless you move around the building. That you but I could go around it. Yes, let's do that. Okay. I'm gonna stab the uh, wyvern in the butt, and then I'm gonna throw a dagger from my other hand at the the guy standing next to Scanlan. And so I have a, a question. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I was trying to do something in studio mode, but then I accidentally uh, zoomed way out. I was gonna get this as like maybe an alternate view instead of the whiteboard, just so that we could get a little bit larger, or maybe maybe like that. Yeah, I think I want a slightly blown up version of the battle map was what I was trying to do off screen. There we go. I like that. I like having that. Um, yeah, no, we do. I got to what I, what I need to do is I need to turn up my my mic. So I'll turn up my mic a little bit. And I can hear how much louder it is. So this will encourage me to be in a ASMR mode. For you, yes. because both of them have somebody who's running interference. Do I get sneak attack damage on both? You only get one sneak attack damage per turn. Just per turn. Once per turn. All right, so I'm going to use sneak attack damage on the weapon if I get it. Go for uh, it. Yeah. So first strike against it as you whip around the side of the building, uh, blades out. Twenty five. That hits. And then for the dude by Scanlan, gets uh nineteen. Yeah. Okay. So if you have both blades out. You get a third attack too. Don't forget. Uh, I do. I will. Yes. Uh, so this. Th you know what? This actually makes me think of the um, how we we were talking earlier about the. Uh, <laughs> the d1000 and someone was like oh you would never be able to tell what side was up in my head i was like up oh, easy peasy all you need actually okay wait one second <laughs> wait 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 just... So, absolutely not sponsored, um, unless, unless, uh, but as of right now, absolutely not a sponsor, but I was a uh, Kickstarter backer, 
for this company called Go Dice. And they have these dice. They're electronic. And so I don't know if you can see them. So they, they come in this little thingy. Um, I thought you were going to walk off into the green screen. <laughs> so they have this and they connect to an app and you can tell within the app what uh, side they landed on. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm burpy. You can tell what side they landed on. And I got the version of Godice that have polyhedral shells. So you take this polyhedral shell you crack it open. I don't even remember where it opens, honestly. I haven't I haven't used them in a really long time. But <laughs> you basically, you put one of these D6s into the polyhedral. And it knows that it's inside. And it can tell which, uh, which side is face up. So then, uh, are they connected to the internet? No. Ah. Um, <laughs> so it can tell which side was face up. I was like, ah, you just use like Godice shit for for that d1000 to tell which side is up and you could even like light up the face that's what i was thinking of so then all of that uh <laughs> make him roll weird at 2 a.m <laughs> so all of that made me think of oh yeah and this is the uh the the yahtzee like cup um the all of that made me think of i really i've i've always really wanted like a uh a, like a mixed media game table. So like a, like a table where like, you know, you have the grid on the table, but it would also be so sick if you had it connected to like, you you know how they're like, um, their, their base, right? Like the, they have like these pink bases, blue bases. I was thinking if you have like a TV screen base and you have uh like these or you have a tv screen as like the table base and then each of these bases like the pink or the blue or the green or whatever base is connected to the software you could light up like the square of whoever's turn it is and like like show their ranges show any effects on them if they have like an aura around them so like this sort of like mixed media base or uh table experience would be super cool and definitely doable but probably stupid expensive <laughs> that's where i get a lot of the times with my like techie ideas is i'm like oh that's like a hundred percent possible i'm not thinking of ideas that are like beyond the pale impossible but they are ludicrously expensive except for like a hobby horse <laughs> like like they would actually maybe be an interesting investment for something like critical role where like you know this is like part of their business having this like cool piece of tech um but not for anyone just at home <laughs> but anyways that's where my mind went when he's like oh i can't really see the battle map very well i don't know who's in you know it's even like with this all blown up like one of the reasons i blew this up was to try and get a better view on what the fuck is happening right now and even then it's kind of hard to tell like which is which you know the third uh stab will go back into the wyvern okay so which you sneak attack into the wyvern for a strike yeah okay so, and the last one was a 24 total so that hits as well okay uh, okay so that's two plus nine that's 14 17 uh, 22 23 25 27 29 into the wyvern all right and then uh the jerk over by scanlon gets uh seven yes. uh and then the wyvern takes another oh my king dagger <laughs> takes another nine all righty so as you rush around, you stab uh, the weapon in the back of its, of its of its haunches, and you see it streaks in pain, <laughs> looks over its shoulder and starts like kind of biting its tail and stinger swinging about, but you avoid it, fling the other dagger to the side and then jam the other side of its haunches with your other uh, hand. Um, it's definitely aware of your presence now. Did I use up all my movement? Uh, nope. Knowing that it can swat at me, I'm gonna try to go right back around where I came from. All right. And I'm wearing the cloak of displacement. Okay. It's gonna swing at you with disadvantage. <laughs> oh, cloak number seven. It's a two on the first roll, so yeah, that misses you. Yeah. <laughs> its stinger swings out towards you, and you just knock underneath it, slams the side of the building, breaking part of the wood. You can see splinters kind of fly out in the middle of the road. Um, uh, your turn. Yeah. All right, Keyleth, you're up. Okay. Um. Oh boy. What is, how far away am I from this guy? Like, roughly how many feet? Uh, roughly? This guy? The, the guy who's in the air flying. I'd say about 60, 65 feet. Beautiful. I want to move just up and around, kind of, oh shit, like kind of here-ish. Okay. Uh, sorry, I've got this thing in the way. It's my guy. Back a little bit, scoot back. What? Uh, is that still in your path? No, he's uh, my, he's my guy. He's your, oh. 
Well, I'm not gonna fuck with him. I'm not. You're, you dominated the guy. I dominated the guy. Should I turn the wyvern into a, a something else? Should I, I, I call know. him more from? Yeah, I guess he's dumb. You are dominating that guy. Is there, is there anything else that's flying? He's the only one that's up in the air. Left, yeah, right? all the other wyverns have landed and let their riders off onto the sides. So you just commanded him to attack the one below you, right? I'm gonna turn that wyvern into a uh, chicken. This one? Yes. Okay. What's the uh, save on that? He has to make a wisdom save. That is a seven. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> <laughs> twice now. Egg, egg. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is my favorite game, you guys. <laughs> the main of everywhere. <laughs> yes. Both the riders can tumble off, um, slamming into the ground. Um, that would be. Yeah. Uh, so the chicken. All right, ten points of damage chicken. to the wyvern, which kills the chicken form entirely. Uh, it turns back into a wyvern on the ground, taking the access three damage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shit. Shit. Wait. Do I keep like hold fly? of my guy? Uh, a bird or a bat or something. Both so of your other riders fall also. They both Fuck. take an addition, additional from the fall. God damn it. Uh, yeah, trauma. So 14 points of damage to each of them from the nice. fall. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That was a damage. Uh, and they're on the ground now. Let's see if the. Which takes damage and makes a new saving throw against the spell. Does not make it. Oh. So it's still dominated. Okay. Thank you. I didn't fucking make up this time. But they are all all three of them are considered prone. Yeah. They're all not prone. Cool. All right. And Keyleth's turn at the top. Percy, you're up. Um, okay. Where am I? I can't see. Right here. You're kind of locked in between the two buildings at the mouth of the alleyway with a uh, wyvern and a lizard creature like right there standing for you. Okay. I don't have. I have no advantage on any of these bastards at the moment if I were to attack. Okay. That's fine. Um, and how- I truly wonder why they are so far away from each other. Is it? Is it because of the cameras? Like, is it because? Oh, sorry, Matt. Wait. Would you describe these? There we go. That's better. Uh, is it because they want this dead-on shot of of Matt? Because like that's the only reason I can imagine that they are all so far away from each other with this like playboard really far away, you know. I don't know. It seems it, it seems very it seems a bit odd to me, but it must be it must be for this dead on shot. That's the only thing I can think of. These are like scaly people. Uh, this is up close and personal. They're humanoid uh, in build. They have, you know, stand up upright. They have long tails, uh, ridges across the head. They're bigger than an actual human, and they're very muscular. Um, and the more you look at it, you can see that their clothing, they have tattered cloth and leathers that have been haphazardly dyed in blood and gore to all be a very, very deep red color. Um, and they're pretty uniform across what they're wearing. Um, they're an army. Team colors. I think you've kind of got that one guy covered at the moment. So I'll concentrate on the... Hmm. Tough call, tough call. You know what? I'll have a little fun. I'm going to pull out my sword, and I'm going to take a slash at the, uh, at the guy who's involved with... Uh, all right, go for it. Uh, that's 21. 21 hits. Uh, oh, oh, oh shit, I forgot to use my bonus action. Can I pop in quick bonus before that? Go uh, Hex him. You already hexed today. You use it in the battle versus the losers. Oh, it's same day. That's right. It's yeah. still the same hour. Uh, it's can only do it once a day, right? Only once a day, That's yeah, unfortunately. That's Sorry. fine. I can just do a little thing. So just <laughs> just add to this. Would he be described anywhere on his little little DD card as something with a dragon keyword? Uh, nope. So I'm just going to do normal damage to him. Yes. Okay. So. Wyverns, however. <laughs> all right, just checking. Um, I'm going to do nine points of damage, slashing damage to him. Already? All right, the top left thing is not working. <laughs> the top, I really wanted it to work, but it, they switch it up too much. I cannot, I cannot do it. <laughs> and I'm going to turn to the wyvern and take two slashes of the wyvern. Go for it. First is ugh, God, uh, it 14. Is back. 14 hits. Wow. wow. They're, they're second hit points. They don't have a whole lot of armor to them. Uh, that's uh, 19 plus uh, 26 points of damage. Nice. And second shot. We're taking attack. Uh, 13, 24, 24. That hits. Uh, 10, 17, 18, 19, 26 points of damage. Six points in a row. So with this, you pull the sword out. As soon as you see it in the proximity of the wyvern, the blade itself almost seems to shimmer with this, this gleam of green on it, like, and the, the metal almost seems to bend in the way with your movements. And as you turn back around to slash the wyvern, the blade just cuts through it like butter. There's not even resistance. It just goes right through its flesh with each slash of the long sword. You can see large chunks of its muscle kind of coming visible as parts of its body are now being pulled from uh, the, the muscle and sinew. Uh, it shrieaks in pain. You can see it angrily now starting to get ready to rake at you pretty heavily. Um, then your turn. That's my turn. Alrighty. Uh, Grog, you're up. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna continue what I started on shitfuck right in front of me. Okay. <laughs> but I would like to be a great weapon master and I would like to use a uh, reckless attack. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Reckless. So your first attack against him? Yeah, that's a 31. Roll damage on that. Yeah, yeah. 25. 25. Uh, he fails to save, so you get another plus one your strength. Um, <laughs> and that swing just cleaves it in two. The, it goes right through its midsection and kind of it tumbles yes. off. Uh, the guy next to uh, on the ground. Oh my god, Grog. Grog is full juice. Oh, I no. told you he'd open up to me. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, uh, Arnold. you can move in now with your movement and do your next attack if you'd like. Uh, I'll go ahead and take care of that wyvern that's next. Go for it. Alright, so now you get your next attack. He's natural 20. Between, I'm oh, oh. Go ahead and uh, roll damage. <laughs> nice. Nice. Does his strength go up to 100 so, actually? So it's, it's double your first dice roll. Oh, and so the, the 2d6 was 9, plus 5 is... So 18... 14. Plus 11. So 29, plus 2 additional die rolls. <sighs> 10. Okay, so we're at... 39. 39. And then, uh, one more? Because roll 2d... It's twice because we're critical. That's right. Oh, Jesus, I've got, like, Tetsuo arm. It's just, like, five times bigger four. than it should be. Or for those two, do I plus 5 to that as well for them? Uh, well, plus, plus 10 for your... You already added that for your, uh... Yeah, it's 2d6 plus 5 on each one, and then... The, not for, just additional 2d6 each time. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, with that, you turn around after hacking its friend, leaping forward, <laughs> the foam at the corner of your mouth, your eyes kind of bloodshot and angry. You take the blade and sweep it down, and it plunges itself right into the wound that Percy left open with his sword swing, finding no resistance before it comes all the way to the hilt in the body of the wyvern, which shrieks for a moment, 
before its breath stops and its body falls to limp. Yeah, yeah. one down. Does that kill Let's make it save, though. What? What's it? He does oh, a second strike. Right. Oh, yeah, and on Great Weapon Master and a critter kill, I like, get an extra hit. Like, uh, it's, it's a bonus action. So, and, yeah, which, which flip back going forward, if you know, if your friends are aging, it doesn't really give you benefits. Right. But uh, if you're not, it does help. Um, so, theory, you could if you wanted to try and chuck it. <laughs> I want to just throw it. <laughs> Don't throw it. No, okay, it's not right in front of me. Ends your turn. All right, now, these guys both get up. Currently, no longer on the wyvern. Do you want to get another act, kind of a thought if you see it land? Get on the wyvern and kill the other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this guy gets up on the wyvern, grabs its reins, pulls it forward, and jams it with its spear as it leads it inward. It kind of runs forward and uh, it's going to take a swing. <laughs> it's going to take a swing with its stinger at the one behind it. It's confused and figuring out what's, why is it doing this. And it's more of like, this might work once. Um, that's going to be a 17 it hits. <laughs> that's going to be 11 points of damage. Make it save. It does not make it save. That's an additional 24 points of poison damage on that one. So that's 35 points of damage from one wyvern to another. <laughs> Dude, this this combat is so weird. I can't tell if this is supposed to be an ant stomp. <laughs> like it's feeling like an ant stomp, but I I really can't tell if that's like supposed to be the vibe or not. <laughs> but they are just destroying. <laughs> Which is like I mean, obviously, you know, Grog has this this you know, escalating thing every uh, every long rest. And a lot of them haven't used, like, too many resources yet. Um, and they don't really, again, they don't really have a reason to save them, so they're kind of dumping them right now. Um, interesting. I, I, I'm... I'm going to be interested in the next combat that really feels like an evenly pitched battle because we haven't really had one in a while i think the last one was probably the briar woods on top of the pyramid but that was a that was kind of a weird combat because it was it was like that since there were only two combatants i feel like the combat swayed really heavily when the people that were charmed lost their charm and when they stopped like when they started like failing to uh uh them, them starting to fail to charm people it's very interesting i don't remember the last time maybe the Kav no it had to be there had to be one since the Kavarn fight i guess the vasselheim fights the vasselheim fights felt like a very like distinctly pitched battle and actually most actually most of the Briarwood arc fights, like all of the Tide of Bone fights felt like pretty pitched. Um Yeah, it's really interesting. I just I don't yeah, I don't feel like we've really had one. It was either like the dragons that were like obviously going to destroy them <laughs> or it has been like ant stomps for them. Um Yeah, interesting. I don't know. Are we still in ASMR? We are indeed. We are indeed. Uh, I'm in the VODs you were just talking about how you wish the magic items were more interesting. Craven Edge is super interesting. I think that, to me, Silas Briarwood is probably the most interesting enemy that they have fought so far. I think Silas Briarwood is my favorite enemy. And unfortunately... I think he kind of got done dirty. I think uh, the Briarwood fight would have been a lot more interesting if it was inside of the Ziggurat. Like, I think it was planned to be. Um, but Matt rewarded them by having them kind of do it outside. And then it was pretty clear that he was, you know, going to have them go inside, but then Scanlan counterspelled them. So then they just fucking got, you know, Silas got uh, gonked outside or ganked outside. Um, so yeah, it was, it was very unfortunate because I do feel like so far Silas was my favorite enemy in terms of his mechanics really reflecting his character a lot and like the things that make him really scary. Um, while also not being like really off kilter, like really, really weird, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've answered this before, you plan to react to the VM show? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I am. Probably after the completion of 
all of Vox Machina. So like, I'll probably just finish the entirety of campaign one and then go back to legend of Vox Machina. Um, mechanically Delilah's no shouts, no slouch, but didn't shine as much. Yeah. Like Delilah was like a cool high level caster, but silent. I, I still go back to Silas's off turn movement was so interesting and evocative of like a very fast person. And I think Craven Edge was a was a cool weapon. I think that like the whole strength drain aspect of like the shadow uh, monster is. I'm trying to think of which word I want to use. I was gonna say bad, but I don't think shadows are actually bad. But they are positioned because of their CR to be a low leveled enemy, and the strength drain trait is absolutely not a low level enemy type of combatant thing <laughs> but i think that strength drain being tied to a weapon is very interesting one of my only things about craven edge is that we don't really know the full at least at where i am we don't really know the full mechanical impact of craven edge like the building strength drain is incredibly powerful but also craven edge is clearly cursed <laughs> so it's 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 very hard to tell <laughs> like how balanced or whatever craven edge is because we don't really know the downsides we know that there clearly are some um <laughs> but we don't actually know what they are yet so that's why i i, I haven't been um critical of the fact that craven edge is incredibly powerful because there are obviously some downsides and i know that we'll get to that um so yeah i i'm i'm super i'm super into craven edge i was very into silas yeah matt does a great strad matt does do a great strad um what's going on right now tuning in for the first time uh, we're watching through all ah uh, Daniel just Jan Daniel just described it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh basically, yeah, we watch through critical role, pause a lot, talk a lot about it, and uh see what we can learn. I've never watched Critical Role before, enjoying it. Uh oh, I get the gist of the show. Oh, what's going on this episode? They are they are going to the clasp right now. Um, I think. If I remember correctly, we've been in this combat for a second. They're just fighting some wyverns right now. It's a bit of a filler uh, uh, combat, it seems. But I do think that it is introducing the fact that the Chroma Conclave is not just the five dragons, or four, um, that we've been introduced to so far, which I was interested about. Like, so far it was not like super clear whether or not the chroma conclave was literally just those four dragons <laughs> so within the overall narrative this combat is serving to bear out that point that the chroma conclave has more than just the dragons um just realize the brb is still on the whiteboard oh you're right you're right you're right you're right uh yeah uh, I watched your two bundle episodes of this. I was so much fun hearing you theorize about who or what Kavarn was. <laughs> yeah, the Underdark arc was fun, man. It was fun because uh, there was there was so much unknown. Oh, oh, both of the um, both honestly, my least favorite arc so far has been Vasselheim, mostly because it didn't feel like there was a lot to latch on to like during briarwood i had a lot of like narrative stuff to latch on to and even in between briarwood and now chroma conclave it felt a little dry not not dry in terms of like boring but dry in terms of like theory desert <laughs> you know <laughs> uh I, but but now that we're like well into chroma conclave i feel like i have a lot more to latch on to um but uh but yeah i really we, we've actually been talking about ways to do more bundle episodes because they take a lot of work on the back end but i've been trying to figure out how to do more like to make them easier to produce so that i can put them out like all the way up um no way craven edge is cursed <laughs> what do you even mean also thank you mr multi for saying that about my voice i appreciate it 
<laughs> As this guy immediately whips around angrily. You have pleased me. <laughs> <laughs> Both of these guys go charging forward oh, here. Oh no, was oh, Jesus. <laughs> Four is gonna pull its javelin and chuck at you. Oh. Uh, Vex? Me? Yeah. Uh, that is gonna miss you at 12. It <laughs> throws a javelin and just arcs past you. Uh, the uh, This one over here is going to come forward. And it's going to take a javelin as well out and ch <laughs> chuck it right at you, Grog. Uh, that is a 20 to hit. Hits. You take 10 points of piercing damage, reduced to five. As you basically just <laughs> <laughs> snap it off and grin in its face. Um, uh, Let me turn that favor in a second. Yeah. Uh, and then, let's see. Grog is on god mode. Yeah. Shaman here. <laughs> Save game plus. <laughs> Is going to now it sees the danger that you're in. Looks at you, uh, sees you just hack through the center of one of its Intensely looks at you, and begins casting another spell. Oh shit! Um, <laughs> like it is want to do. Boating charm. Is it? Come on, smart code. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that, you, the uh, craven edge as you're holding it. All of a sudden, the handle becomes white hot, and you immediately take uh, six points of fire damage. Okay. Just holding it. Grip it harder. <laughs> Fire fighting through. Yeah, I was about to say that's that's fucking nothing for Grog. Are we joking right now? Uh, <laughs> break starts at two nineteen, so this half has about thirty more minutes. It was a two hour and ten minute first half, and then the second half is an hour and eighteen minutes. They, they it was a long first half. <laughs> Um, three attacks against you, Scanlan. Oh, God. No. Uh, currently, two of them which are flanking you, so they're going to avenge on the attacks. Oh, my God. So that's a natural 20 on one of them. Whoa. This, guy, this guy is 18. That hits, and then this guy here with other advantage still hits with 17. Uh, I'm going to use cutting words on the last guy. Okay. I'm going to just... Ah, ah. To, to distract him. Uh, okay, go ahead and roll d10. d10. Uh, which one's 10? I never remember this one. Nine. Okay, uh, so he rolled uh, 17 plus 7, then 24, brings it to 15, which I believe it's misses you. Oh. So the last strike as a swing sword. Well, uh, Daniel, I mean, I think that that is, that is a good encapsulation of why you do ant stomp, pub stomp type of combat. That is exactly why you do that, is that you introduce, yeah, a spell like Heat Metal, something that they used to do as a tactic, you know? Like, they used to do the Heat Metal thing as a tactic, and you can now do it to Grog, and Grog's like, six damage? <laughs> Whatever, like that is that is ab you. I think you are a hundred percent correct, and that is exactly the sort of thing that these combats, these sorts of combats, can go to serve. I think this is a great combat, straight up. Like I think it's a great pub stomp combat to show them how much they progressed, and it's good to build out some of the Chroma Conclave lore. Frankly. I, I wish that this is the combat they would have had while Garthok was here um, instead of that like weird, I don't, don't want to like talk too much shit, but like that, that ambush combat. Um, if they, if you had just subbed in this, I think that that episode would have been really, really cool. Um, I mean, the, the episode was still cool, but that, I think this combat is a much better. I think it does a lot of s work within the fiction. I think it does good work for their out of game mental, is a nice, well placed combat. What do you mean with ant stomp for them or to them? It feels like they're kind of stomping these wyverns, <laughs> like straight up. <laughs> like, and and maybe they're just rolling well, and the wyverns are rolling like shit. But it feels like they are stomping the wyverns like ants. For <laughs> you, the shrilly tones that causes him to like reach and grab one of his kind of lizard like ear holes. <laughs> The swing just goes wildly over your head. However, as you duck down, you look up as you see the shadow come down of two large clubs no. over the head of your tiny gnomish form. Uh, that's gonna be. Uh, 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 oh, oh, that's not get, sound. Uh, oh, that's gonna be this too. Oh, no All right, way. so you take 12, which is double the 20. Oh, no, sorry, 12. Uh, 20 points of bludgeoning damage from one. Uh -huh. You take 12 points of damage from the other. So 32 points of damage total. Uh, yeah. And they're both gonna bite you as well with advantage. Bite with advantage? That is uh, 20 on the first one. That's the damage it does? That's no, that's the hit. hit. Okay. And that was uh, double 19, so they both hit. Uh, so you take oh. another 20 points of damage total of piercing damage as they both just hat start tearing into your body. 52 okay. points of damage is then? <gasps> no, 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 I thought you said you had 55. I did. 52. 52 total. You have three points left. <laughs> <laughs> I say right as Scanlan goes down. <laughs> but Scanlan is only going down because he has been absolutely focused. No one else is in any amount of danger. All he has to do is Misty step out and they'll clean up this combat real hard. <laughs> <laughs> that was close, guys. <laughs> I saw my mother. Uh, <laughs> then I saw myself in math class failing. I need you to make, I need you to make a bunch of co concentration checks here. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Take bunch. control over it. Yeah. 
Uh, advantage on concentration checks. Yes, yeah, so just roll two at a time. Oh, two uh, what? Two d20s. Nice. Okay, uh, I only have one d20. Constitu and your constitution modifier, too. Uh, how many? Wait, oh, for each thing that... Oh, yeah. Constitution modifier, holy god. Okay, I I'm counting both those. The first one's only 12. Uh, 12, that, that'll that work, because none of them's only one of them did 20 damage, and it's a minimum of 10. So as long as you get above a 10 with each one, you're fine. Yeah, it's a good, good update, Mr. Multi. I'm feeling better about him. People were pretty consistently assuring me that, you know, he, he improved. Uh, I loved the, the Kaylee, Kay, Kay, Kylie, Kaylee, his daughter, uh, his, his daughter. Uh, I loved that sequence. I think that not only was it a great sequence for Matt to run and like, it was really, really well placed and really well run. I think that Sam reacted to it really well and that Scanlan as a character has, not necessarily mellowed out, but has stopped, like, he is still goofy and silly and sometimes, like, irreverent, uh, but he is not, like, actively the worst anymore, which I know, like, I've, I've been, like, directly told, like, that was the idea of Scanlan when he was first made, is that, like, oh, he's gonna be, like, the bard archetype. He's just gonna be the horny bard archetype. And, like... I, I didn't like watching it. <laughs> and I think that Scanlan as a character, I think that Sam has started to hone in on things where Scanlan can still kind of be a piece of shit, but he isn't like absolutely the worst anymore, <laughs> which I really like. Um, uh, uh, Liam designs all Sam's and uh, PCs, and it's uh, up to Sam to flush them out. And boy, howdy, does he! <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had been progressing towards calming down. It was really interesting because I didn't sense any amount of character growth leading up to Kaylee, but there was like the selective dropping of bad stuff. <laughs> Like there was the selective like disclusion of like of like things I didn't like leading up to Kaylee. And now that we've had Kaylee, I'm seeing even less of the stuff I used to really not like. And I am seeing the occasional like interesting character point. Um so I am I am much more positive on on Scanlan and, and Sam than I used to be. Much, much more positive. <laughs> Uh, uh, he seemed more like a real character versus a joke. Yeah, he was absolutely a joke. He was a joke character, not a character that jokes. You know, he, he was not a character that was funny. He was a funny character. Like, the character itself was supposed to be the punchline. And that is a really tricky line to walk. I hesitate to say, but I think it might be, like, impossible to make, like actually interesting i think uh, so much good storytelling to come to still is it to come still i'm excited i'm very very excited uh, sam's also a really good player there's a bunch of times where he casts a spell and it's just like that doesn't work on this type of thing and he's just like oh well i tried yeah i've really i have liked his um I have liked Sam's overall attitude very consistently even when i didn't like scanlan and I didn't like that Sam Regal was choosing to play Scanlan that way. <laughs> as far as actual, like, player behavior, separate from him, you know, playing Scanlan the Bard, he seemed to have, like, a really patient and, like, really um, go-with-the-flow attitude about the table, which I really did like. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I absolutely... If things have only been improving <laughs> for for me and, and Sam and Scanlan. Um, the pre-stream was a lot more raunchy, and it took Sam longer than others to drop the things that you can do with friends and not necessarily publicly. Well, yeah, in the, uh, it, it stood out to me again when we rewatched Story of Vox Machina that uh, Sky Sunder was like, just like, was naked. And I don't know why. It, like Because like, it makes sense. They just hatched from an egg. <laughs> but there is a level of like ah you <laughs> like it just like like it it doesn't like not it, it just like doesn't quite pass 
the the sniff test you know of the um of of uh of what is you know like like if they just had like sky sunder coming out naked during actual critical role that would have been a little iffy even though it makes sense in the fiction and um yeah so i i do definitely buy that their home game was was a little bit more raunchy how many tiberius counters were there in the end i honestly don't remember a lot (laughs) quite a fucking bit (laughs) Uh, yeah uh but in concept was him making a joke to matt yeah yeah uh, used to do stuff like show his dick off to chemo which in canon is reprehensible yeah absolutely and i think i think that was kind of the basis of a lot of my issues ron quixote is like there there were just things that scanlan did that we couldn't like really examine as real like are you done cool it went well by saying they love my portfolio well 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 okay back to the normal volume um but uh but yeah i think that was that's a good way to kind of encapsulate is like him showing kima his dick is like clearly i do not think that sam regal is a sexual predator but like that is clearly terrible to do uh but it wasn't supposed to be taken seriously and i think that that was kind of my my overarching problem yeah is that it was just a lot of things he did that the characters were not that the players were not meant to actually acknowledge as their as their characters um i'm not sure he took it seriously at first i don't think he took it that kind of seriously you know what i'm saying yeah um i watched that episode early it was legit like 180 ish but if you bump it to around uh 200 before clearing it ah bump it to around 200 that makes sense that makes sense uh i think we knew liam and sam future uh pc meta knowledge but the critters of 2016 yeah i think we already knew that because we talked about it when we watched the during one of the Bone Zone episodes, we watched, I think, the All Work No Play podcast where they talked about how like Liam essentially designed Sam's character. So I I did have that that knowledge. Um But uh revisiting early CR with your stream reminded me that Scanlan and by extension Sam were my least favorite at the table after Orion Tiberius. It was at that was absolutely the case for me as well now they've all like really leveled and mellowed out and like who my favorite is kind of changes by episode who my favorite and least favorite are which i much prefer (laughs) that is that is i absolutely loved it uh love it now that like they all float in and out of being my my more my favorite to least favorite um honestly it kind of sucks but my least favorite right now for no other reason that it's hard to interact with her is probably Pike just because of meta constraints. Like there's no actual reason. Like there's, it is not Ashley Johnson's fault that she's my least favorite, but I don't like watching it. <laughs> when, like I don't, I don't, I feel bad for Ashley whenever she's on and she has some great moments. Also, thank you, Mr. Multi. I appreciate it. Um, she has like some great moments and I can absolutely see like the great player and great person and great friend, but just the meta constraints of her situation. I'm like, Oh, I kind of wish Pike wasn't here. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it sucks. It sucks. But what's the worst character? I'll be that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Uh, what about amongst the core six? right now amongst the core six man it it really depends on the day it really depends on the day honestly sam and scanlan might have shot all the way up i'm not gonna lie I'm not going to lie. Sam and Scanlan might have shot like all the way up. And 
I think my least favorite might be someone on the top row, but I can't... It's hard because these three are all going through very flawed arcs within their within their individual characters. And they're all playing the flaws really well. But when they don't have a mediator, like when Scanlan was gone and they didn't have a mediator, it was like a little annoying to see the amount of PvP tension from them all playing these like very flawed arcs. But I don't know. It's all really high right now in terms of, like, who I like and don't like. Like, you know, Scanlan and Tiberius used to be in, like, the 4 to 5 out of 10 range. And Scanlan has shot way up. And now all of them are living in the 8 to 10s every episode. Um, so it's it's really hard to tell. It's really, really hard to tell. Um, and when I say my favorite, I immediately second guess it. I I agree. <laughs> And did we or did we not predict that? You, everyone absolutely did. Everyone absolutely did. I always loved Percival and by extension, Talison. That's the, be the best one-liners I've ever heard. That's fair. And I love Grog's comedic timing. There's just, there. it's always Grog. I know. Like I said, they all float amongst the 8 to 10s, depending on the episode. I don't know that I can choose right now. I'll make a decision, a final decision, at the end. And Grog used to be my absolute favorite. But Craven Edge has corrupted him, man. <laughs> uh, anyways. Fine. Okay, so I gotta do two more. Yeah, that's 16 plus 2. Okay, another one. 17 plus 2. Another one. 2 plus 2. Wait, you Seven plus two, nine. nine. Nope. No, so play, with, no. with that, you lose your concentration on the domination spell. Uh, that fades. <sighs> hey, I'm alive, guys. We were still mad at the first one, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Uh, so it. that ends their turn. Vex, you're up. Oh man. Okay. You see Scanlan just being tossed around <gasps> the ground, and oh. you see streaks of blood in the air as someone like tears a big chunk out of his shoulder. Yeah. He looks up at you briefly, his eye kind of <laughs> open. Scanlan, I got you. No, no, I know you did. You, you shot me on last oh. turn. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got me good. You got me good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. Yeah, but yeah. I only use my Fuckles. burning thingy once. Correct, so one, I can one, one, two, okay. Two, okay, 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 okay. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna move my hunter's mark um to one of the guys around Scanlan. Okay. You wanna say the most wounded of them? Yeah, sure. That would be Or the least wounded of them actually. The least wounded would be this one. Okay. Um and then I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot I'm gonna shoot arrows. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna sure. shoot um through my blazing bowstring um on that guy and the guy in front of him. Okay, right there in there? Yeah. The base blazing bowstring and the regular. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, so I forget how to do that. I rolled an attack. <laughs> yes. Why is it so hard? Okay, uh, 18. 18 hits? Okay, I'm gonna roll damage on that one, which is 10, plus my normal 8. Uh, uh, 12, 14 plus 6 for Hunter's Mark. 20 plus 6 for Sneak Attack, bitch! Did you just call the DM a bitch? No, I was calling the guy a bitch. <laughs> Matt is additional. not deserved that. 66, so that's 25 damage against the first guy. 25 damage, that's just enough. That's <laughs> <laughs> Him, that sneak attack is what you need to do, that's damage. Yay! Okay, so the second guy uh, is uh, another 18. Another 18? Actually, no, that's a 20, whatever. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. Do I get sneak attack on him too? Because he's still. Like, for turn. Dang it. So 16 damage against that guy. 16, okay. Nice. So this arrow, the first one just hits it in the neck and it kind of gurgles, it falls to the ground and bleeds out from the floor next to the scale. And the other one, uh, the arrow strikes it in the middle of the shoulder blades and it kind of arcs up in pain, but it's still standing, though it's like having to really move around with much uh, much pain in its face. Okay. Um, then are you turning to stay there? Um, I'm gonna. Yeah. All right. Staying on the rooftop, just sliding down. Good call. Uh, that brings us to It's my turn. Yep. Potion. Yo yourself. Oh yeah. If I had a potion, that would be great. Uh, I will do thunder wow. wave. Thunder wave at, at third level. Thunder wave at third level. All right. Switching <laughs> <laughs> the rice. <laughs> okay, so that is a four d eight thunder damage to all the ones on a failed save. So their constitution saves here. What did I miss? Is he just saying wow at the lack of potion? Oh, it's like having to really move around with much. Uh, much pain in its face. I feel like I must have missed something for that reaction, but maybe that's it. Okay. Um, then you're turning to stay there? Um, I'm gonna, yeah. All right, staying on the rooftop, just sliding down. Good call. Uh, that brings us to Scanlan. It's my turn? Yep. Potion! Heal yourself! Oh, yeah. If I had a potion, that would be great. Uh, I will do Thunder wow. Wave. Thunder Wave. At <laughs> I, am, I, am I missing something? What is going on? At third level. <laughs> Thunder Wave at third level, all right. <laughs> I feel like they are having a conversation that I am not privy to. I don't understand. Sent you in the right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is a uh, 4d8 thunder damage to all the ones on a failed save. So, their constitution saves here. Just do a hand cone? Sure, man. <laughs> I figured it's a... Uh... 
The closet behind me absolutely leads to an SCP facility. You are you are entirely correct. Do not... It, it, please ignore the black bar down there and the uh, faint green tint to my uh, to my hair. And the fact that I need this uh, this tortilla blanket. <laughs> Abs, pay no attention to the tortilla blanket behind the curtain. <laughs> Both fail. What is it, 48? Uh, yeah, it's 48. Thunder damage, they push 10 feet away from you. One, two, three. Do they all fail? Yes. Do they both fail? Yeah. Just push, push this way. Just push, push, push that way. 10. 17. 17 points of damage to each. Okay. Uh, they're blasted back, barely catching themselves on their feet, and from the impact you can see, a little bit of like red colored leather armor they have on is just tattered and destroyed. You can see blood pouring out of the sides of their- I do agree with that, Daniel, of I have seen Sam pull other people into conversation and into the context of the scene more than anyone else, even during the like Orion days. I think he was really good at pulling other folks into the scenes. Um, but Travis is absolutely amazing table manners. I mean, honestly, all of them are pretty good table manners. I think some of them are just more or less skilled at it, if that makes sense. Like, I think Liam sometimes struggles with kind of going all or nothing. It's like after the session where he had a lot of the spotlight and to his, you know, to his, um, not credit. What do you, what would you say? Uh, to, to give him some grace on that. It was all spotlight that made sense like for his character and what he was going through at the time. Um, and then the next session, he basically invents a reason to just fuck off for a while. <laughs> and again, reason that made sense. But I think that it's it's a very kind of binary thing a lot of the times with Liam. Um, whereas I think Grog and uh, Scanlan, or I should say Sam and uh, Travis, are a little bit better at doing it with a little bit more finesse. <laughs> uh, a little bit more more grace, if you will. Um, but they're all, they're all very, I mean, you would not be able to run a table with this many people if they, if people were not good at that sort of thing. And spoiler alert, they weren't able to run a table with eight people like that. Uh, cause one of them wasn't great at it. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. I, I absolutely think that they're all really, really solid at it. Um, you've said this before, but Sierra is as good as it is because of great DM and great players. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They, they are both. There is, there is a lot to aspire to at this table. There's a lot to not aspire to. There's a lot that is neutral. Like I, I absolutely think that these players are incredible players. Like most of the time. Um, I think there is, there is absolutely things that DMs can learn from Matt and that players can learn from these six, or I guess seven, Z uh, six and a half, we'll say. <laughs> ear holes where the thunderous blast pops, pops possibly burst their eardrums. Uh, and they're both kind of like shaking their head. <laughs> All right. Bonus action. I will healing word myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can do that at higher levels. Yes. Yeah. I'll do it at a level four. Okay. And I will sing to myself sort of sadly, <laughs> pathetically. <laughs> I get knocked down, but I get up again. I ain't never gonna kick me down. I get knocked down. I get up again. Okay, because I'm gonna kick me down. <laughs> down. All right, so that is a uh, four d four plus five okay. healing to yourself. Four d four plus five. Hey, you know what I know? This isn't a media reference that goes over my head. I'll always recognize tub thumping by Chumba Wumba when I hear it. <laughs> Uh, that's 14 plus 5, 19. 19, so you hear yourself 19 hit points. Okay, thank God. That ends your turn. I'm next, Vax. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm going to uh, scramble up to the top of the building that I'm right next to. I'm about to check. Uh, sure. No problem. Yeah, way high. Uh, 20, 30, 30, 30. Yeah, you, you parkour up the side, then on top of the rooftop, and leap across, and you're now at the edge. Okay, is that Percy right there? That's Percy right there. Uh, okay, I'm actually. Oh, who's right directly uh, in a row away from me? Yeah, I can't tell. That's bad guy. That's bad guy. That's bad guy. I saw. I want to run actually, and I want to jump off and land next to Percy. Okay. Yeah. I want to run straight by and I want to stab the dude. I'm going to run forward. Yeah, but stab that guy. All right. Right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is uh, 20. Yes. Okay. I'm going to run, stab. I'm going to run, stab. Uh, <laughs> those are the two buttons on the Vax video game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to run and stab. That's nine. Nine damage? Yeah. Oh, you shit. Hey. I'm going to so, run, 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 run towards Scanlan and I want to grapple him. Hopefully he just takes it. No, eh, not that far. One square back. Okay. Right there. Grab him. 
and I'm using my bonus action to dash and then drag him backward uh, behind Grog. It's an action to grapple? Oh, yeah. Um, well, someone, like to, someone who, who would be against it, are you letting him grapple you? Oh, hell yes. Okay, then I'll, I'll say for the sake of the rest of the two actions and a bonus action, just mix them around, yeah, man. That's <laughs> fine, because he wants to, you just rush forward, you grab him, and you're dragging him back this back, way. Yeah, right behind Grog, okay. I'm gonna drag between Vex and Grog, right back by Keyleth. Okay. I'll say that's about as far as you get, because you have a little bit of movement. Uh, Beautiful. Thinking, even though you are hasted, because uh, he's not too heavy, but he's still. Like, <sighs> right, dash, hasted, I can go uh, very, very far. Yeah, so you're fine. Your hands are so rough and masculine. <laughs> are that on the ass and say you're welcome, Shorty. Okay, I'm going to kind of push my way through the crowd a little bit. Can I have that out of the point? Yes, you may. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now with all of the rage, thinking about all... I turned someone into a chicken. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I want some feather down pillows for our loft. Um, I Chicken's channel all of my Fire Ashari ancestors. Ooh. And I cast my seventh level <gasps> Firestorm. Oh god, we're all gonna okay. die. <laughs> so as I concentrate in rage to the side of dragons, I have ten. Did you get me away? Because yes, you're fine. You're fine. No, he didn't get you away because he knew this was happening. It just crazy. hasn't worked out. But and we're about to see why the Baldur's Gate three devs stopped at level twelve. <laughs> we are about to get first-hand evidence. Ten ten-foot cubes. That all have to be connected. That all have to be connected. So you can go like so I'm gonna, exactly. One, I'm gonna start here. Two. I'm gonna work my way over. Three. They're ten foot. Four, they're ten foot. Yep, five. Okay, but right. they're they're attached. One. So two, you're bigger than that. Three. Well, they're 10 by 10 foot, which is about this size. Okay, okay. All right, so, 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 so it's like it's, it's, it's one, one. Uh -huh. two, it's happening. It's three, <laughs> four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Get that guy? Ten. Okay, yeah, get the wire. Get, get, get the all of them there. Yeah. Yes! This guy. That's oh my smell. god, that guy is going to just oh. be so. Brock's going to bite his head off. So I'm just going to fire your rage. Let's go, I'm not kidding! You seeing this? Um, they have to make a deck saving throw where they take. Right, well, what's your DC on it? Wait, what? who just. Is Ashley there? What? What was that? All them there. Do they have a fucking soundboard with Ashley Johnson on it? Yes! This guy. That's oh my no. god, that guy is gonna just oh. be so- <laughs> Ron's gonna bite his head off. <laughs> oh, right. gonna fire oh, just going on, Kaden! Oh! <laughs> I don't know why, but Laura Bailey saying destroy them Keyleth sounded so much like Pike slash Ashley Johnson to me. I absolutely thought that they had her on like fucking voice chat on the side or something. That's oh my no. god, that guy is gonna just oh. be so f***ed. He's right here. So I'm just gonna fire your rage. Just going on, Kaden! You seeing this? Um, they have to make a deck saving throw where they take... Right, well, what, what's your uh, DC on it? Oh, my full DC, 19. Fail. 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 I'm not very dexterous. Fail. 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 <gasps> Fail. Come on. Fail. Fail. Seven D ten fire damage Holy. to each of you. Why don't you use that all the time? I just got it! <laughs> I just got it when I leveled! You gotta be careful with friendly fire. Yeah, they got friendly fire. So a giant fiery chasm splits open. The ground just bursts open. Rocks and burns down as giant columns of flame just... I don't know what's... Out of ground just... It's a little bit more um, <laughs> obvious what the situation is when the desk is uh, increased, but my late, but my back was getting a a little disc uh, uncomfortable. Completely engulfing each one of them in this okay. sudden okay. 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 conflagration of um, red and orange and, and yellow flames and, and molten magma. Twenty-four. Oh, wait. no, no, no. Rock Roman will be calling. Four. That was four. Um, twenty-four. That's good. Uh, so twenty-seven. Thirty-six. 30, uh, 42. 42. Points of fire damage. Uh, dangerous, man. <laughs> dangerous. Word. My hands light up. Yes! Each one of the the, the lizard yes. folk type creatures in the flames, you just see them just shriek for a second ah! before their forms are turned to ash and these blasts of fire. Each, each, like, subwoofer, like, uh... Oh my god, who just, who pointed out the breeze comment? Ryan? I didn't, I haven't honestly noticed it a lot, and then he just did it right there. I was like, oh no, is this a once I hear it, I can't unhear it sort of situation? Because him doing the little, ah! uh, Just shriek for a second, ah! before their forms are. <laughs> just shriek for a second, ah! <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good now that I hear it. Don't forget to drink something. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. I got scared for saying that the dragons might be resistant, or the wyverns might be resistant to fire. True. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, it was said by Laura, so I wasn't sure. They would have to destroy the penis. <laughs> destroy the Turn penis. The and these blasts of fire, each each like subwoofer like a uh, guttural impact as the ground cracks, like, <laughs> just scatter amongst. Oh, yeah, Popcorn? yeah. Um, each one of the wyverns themselves, you can see the flames emerge around them and as it recedes. They have burn scars and their flesh is cracked and peeled against the fire wounds that now tear across the front of their body. Uh, they're all looking, you know, fairly hurt by that. And then, uh, 
I take a bow. I take a bow. That's <laughs> <laughs> kind of I'll exhausting a little bit. Bard we'll training. My ancestors. Vax has been training Vex in the ways of the rogue. Scanlan has been training Keelan the multi class into Bard. Oh. And that's it. All right, and your turn. Percy, you're up. All right, I'm going to start walking towards that, that wyvern at the, at the bottom there. Uh, that yeah, that way. I'm not going to get quite close enough to, to get into the reach of that, of that jerk over there. So you can go here. Yeah. While I'm walking by him, though, I'm just going to just nail. I don't even know if I'm really going to going to shoot him three times while I'm walking by, because that's funny. Uh, which sharpshooter? Okay. okay. So the first shot against him is uh, so it'll be seven, uh, 19. 19 hits. Good roll damage on him. That's, uh, that's 1d10. What did I do with my 1d10s? Because I wasn't thinking. Anyway, uh, that's um, 26 points of damage. <laughs> you just take his head right off as you walk by, not even looking. <laughs> And you can see the lower jaw just blown off and it falls to the back of the Since I got two more shots, I'm going to start shooting at that one dragon that Barbara is out there. Yeah, Go for it. Two shots on the lower. Uh, Sharpshooter again. All right. Um, that's a nine, yay. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, 16. 16 hits. And I'll just roll the second one. Just have it. Um, that's uh, nine. Nine will miss, nah, unfortunately. Nine will miss. Uh -huh. Thankfully, will not miss. That's fine. So uh, that's great. Uh, 26 points of damage. All right. This one, poof, the bullet hits inside of his body. You can see the poof of blood kind of And I'll around. get as close as I can get to him in this round. Also, I'm going to spend my movement walking straight towards him. Just there. Okay, thank you. That's your turn. Uh, Grog, you're up. Yeah. I'll leave one of those to you guys, and I'll run it the two wyvern to the left. <laughs> just getting a little fray. <laughs> you get them both? Yeah, I'll get them both! Ah, there you go. <laughs> so I'll just charge in there both. Uh, there you go. Let's open these puppies. That's a 24. 24 on the one more wounded one? Yeah. All right, that hits in. Do I swing at the other guy? If you want to. Yeah, let's, let's divvy it up. I don't want to give anybody too much love. Uh, 26. Hits. So roll damage on each. 6, 11. 22, 32. They're both great, both great with Master. Mm -hmm. Okay, 30 damage. 32 on the first. First one, uh, you just carve through him with the blade. <laughs> nice. I do feel like it is the sound effects. Sound effects definitely sound less impressive at faster speeds. It's sort of like when um when you're working out, like like going slower on your reps is much more impressive than just like banging them out really quick. Uh and I do, I, I, I can see exactly what you're saying, Daniel. Of like a lot of these sound effects are probably even more impressive when you realize like how like slow but solid they are. I mean, slow. You know, they're they're probably at a very normal speed, but yeah, they sound a little bit less impressive at these faster speeds. Uh, makes it safe. Five, ten, twenty-one, thirty-one, thirty-one, thirty-one damage. Okay. Uh, this one you streak across with the uh, Craven Edge. Uh, makes it safe. Uh, you can leave a large wound across the front of John. Because, ah. However, you did kill one, so you do get to use your bonus action for an attack because you're not master feet. Yeah. Got to roll for the hit. Yes. Awesome. 19. Uh, that's 20, 20, 31. With a minus 5. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Minus 5. Uh, what's 31 minus 5? 26. 26. Okay. Yes, yeah, good. Okay. 3, 7, 12, Matt is 30, uh, 22. He's covered, 32. covered in icker. 32. Couldn't be quicker. <laughs> this, you swipe through the second half of the blade, this time uh, carving off part of its wing. No, no. You get one wing is kind of like half curled and keeping up at the side. It's, it's kind of hobbling around its legs. It's looking like it's on death's door, but it's still keeping itself. It um, all right, is that your turn? That's it. All right. Uh, in there, and this one just stays there. It's going to unleash upon you, Grog. That's going to bite and tail attack against each of you with the stinger. Uh, against you, Grog, that is a 21 to hit. Hits. And natural 20 on the stinger. Okay. Um, well, uh, resistance against poison. That helps. That's nice. That does help, actually. So he'll just do regular poison damage against you. Door belt. Um, just a regular poison. So you take uh, 11 points of piercing damage. You are reduced to 6 okay. from the uh, take bite. For every and the stinger so like deals... Right. Totally, okay. yeah. Hello. That's, that's four, 12 points of piercing damage reduced to 6 as well. Okay. The stinger already make constitution saving throw. All right. Uh, 12. It's a failure. Actually, it would have been an additional 12 because it was a critical hit on the pierce. Okay. So you take 12 total. So total 18 damage so far. Okay. And then as part of the poison, you take 48 <laughs> points of poison damage. Okay. Because Still you have resistance, that is reduced to 24. Hey! Okay. That's nice. Right, you have poison resistance from the uh, Belt of Kai. Yes. All right, so there you go. The other one coming up against you, Percy. Strike with the fight. That is going to be a 20, uh, 16. A 16 misses. 16 misses. That is going to be a 22 for the stinger. Stinger hits. Okay, stinger hits you for 6 plus 4. 10 points of piercing damage, and you need to make constitution saving throw. Uh, constitution saving throw. Um, uh, 20. 20, you succeed. No poison. So uh, I took 10, 10 points of uh, piercing, damage. piercing damage. Correct. All right. Um, yeah, it's looking kind of rough on both their ends. Uh, they're, they're just fighting at the end at this point. All right, that ends their turn. Back to you. I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on the one fighting... Moving it over? Yeah, Percy. All right. That was an interesting little bit of it's looking pretty rough on their parts, but they're just fighting to the end at this point. Classically, I'm not a fan of that mindset. However, for a, for a group of minions to a Thordak-style, uh, you know, tyrant... I can maybe forgive it a little bit more, especially like a Wyvern Rider type deal. I was a lot more skeptical of it with like the citizens of Amon type situation where they were just like trying to gather gold. But for the Wyvern Riders, 
I'm a little bit more. I, I'm I'm a little bit more okay with it. All right, that ends their turn. Back to you. I'm gonna cast Hunter's Mark on the one fighting. Moving it over. Yeah, Percy. All right. And I'm gonna. Even though I think it is debatable that these they might want to like go back and like warn Thordak, you know that like that might be more useful to their tyrant boss. But uh, um, first attack the one fighting Grog. Okay. Sixteen. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, does it? Yep. Yes. Okay. No bullet armor. Just a lot of hit points. Uh, Seventeen plus sneak attack. Eighteen. Uh, Eighteen. So Grog, as you're thrashing about the blade of this creature, eager to get that final hit, you reach back with Craven Edge before an arrow just shoot into its face and it crashes <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I shift my attention over to the one fighting Percy. All right. And that is a uh, thirty. No, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight hits. Go ahead and roll damage with the extra d six for Hunter's mark. Where's my dice? Uh, Seventeen. Gotcha, 70 points of damage. Uh, second, you pull up the second arrow, release it, and it strikes the side of his body. <laughs> Still seems to be standing. I heard it, but didn't leave it in his sort of dire straits yet. Uh, then it's your turn. You stay where you are. I'm staying where I am. Actually, oh. actually, I'm going to um, jump off the roof and rush over to Scanlan. Okay. Uh, so leaving on the guy's check. <laughs> uh, 24? 24. Scanlan, at the start of your turn, as you're getting ready, all of a sudden, <laughs> in front of you, spooking momentarily, you see uh, Vex lands on her feet and looks down at you with a little concern and wanting to make sure you're okay. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking on me. Could you move for a second? I'm going to kill this thing. <laughs> 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 uh, so I'll, uh, I can't do much because I'm far away and I don't want to kill. Person. It's not going to live through me anyway. That's true. I will. I will wand of magic missiles him. Okay. Using how many? Uh... I'll use six of my seven. Oof. Alrighty. So go ahead and we'll pop our damage on that. So okay, this is actually when I'm talking about the consequences. When I'm talking about their laissez-faire attitude. When I'm talking about them just feeling like they can blow resources indiscriminately. This is exactly the type of thing that I'm talking about. Of like, if you are at a table where you are really concerned, like seriously concerned about resource expenditure, or you feel like there will be consequences towards you not having resources later on in the day, you would absolutely not use up your uh, wand of magic missiles rather than just letting the gunslinger take four attacks or whatever. Um, so... When I and again, I don't want to be like too harsh down on that, on on the consequences, uh, uh, laissez faire thing, but I will point this out as a like very direct consequence is that you are going to be having much more like flashy combats where everyone just like kind of throws resources at the wall because, again, you know why wouldn't they? Um, there's nothing called literally Wyvern Rider raw, but most humanoids would have some survival instinct. I mean, I I agree. Uh, if if these are just like random Wyvern Riders that they meet out in the wilderness, I'm actually maybe, like I said, I'm a little bit more willing to give Matt some breathing room here on like that monster mentality of them serving Thordak, them serving this dragon. It might be the sort of thing that they know if if they fail, like if they go back with nothing to show for it, that he Thordax just gonna fucking kill him anyways. I could see that being a, a situation. So I'm maybe a little bit more willing to give it to him there, you know. Um I've never been a DM, uh, but it would probably make many creatures want to flee because what creature wants to die? <laughs> Mostly just in a rage of desperations. Yeah, we've talked about this to a certain degree, so I won't I won't uh uh, go over it too much, but we especially talked about it uh, in like the last ten episodes, because uh, there have been a lot of creatures that have like very much like fought to the death. Where it's kind of like, why are you still here, guys? <laughs> but like clockwork things, sentient swords, skeletons, like reanimated dead. I think those very much work uh, to fight to the death. Even someone very, I think, well pointed out. Uh, magically constructed creatures, so like abominations, uh, that maybe don't need to have a survival instinct because they shouldn't have existed in the first place. Uh, <laughs> but I, the way that I tend to think about it is any monster that would need to fight, survive, die, breed, basically anything that needs to propagate its species in order for it to exist right now, should have some manner of flee or run instinct. And it is up to you as the DM to kind of determine what will trigger that. Like, what triggers its fight or flight, right? 
And where does that fight turn into flight? Like at what point down on the totem pole are we triggering that flight? Now, they might not be able to get away. They might stay in the fight far longer than they should (laughs) and they just die on the way out. But they should absolutely flee at some point if they are like a natural creature. At least that's that's the way I think. I know there's a um a recent book that came out. Uh, the monsters know what they're doing. I've seen it referenced a couple of times in chat, and I believe um Ryan Immel uh made a made a video about it. Um, I haven't actually seen the book or watched many much content around it, but it seems like that book has a lot of that type of strategy built into its monsters, which I think is very very cool. Um. I think them escaping and trying to tell Thordek would still be interesting, but a different kind of challenge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, VM barely ever used can trips. I think a lot of it is 5e being new to them. Very possible. Very, very, very possible, yeah. Okay, the first... Okay, so was that 64 plus 1? This would be a magic missile cast at level 6, technically. I'm pretty sure. Well, it's weird because my... But it's also, like, again, like, why would they use a can trip? If their spell slots don't really matter... That, like, you know, if they don't have to worry about running out of their spell slots, then why not use the higher level spells? <laughs> um, seems really nice for making combat more interesting. Fuck yeah. I think it depends on defensive capability, too. Things that can fly or teleport might hold out longer than a walker. Very true. Yeah, if you feel like you can fly away, you might stick around longer. But there should still be a point at which you leave. Um, and that is very much up for the DM to determine. Like I said, in this one, I find it... I still think the Wyverns should leave at some point during this fight, but I find it more believable that they would stick around for longer than, say, maybe the combat that we had last session. Yeah, you don't have to so it would be, so be 6d6 plus 6. 6d6 plus 6? Oh, 64 plus 6. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> hey, Matt. Hey. Sorry, it's close. Yeah. One more? 12 plus what? 6? 12 plus 6. 18. 18? Mm-hmm. Okay, the missile's just slamming into the side, arcing off and kind of swirling around before you hit it, kind of anime missile shriek style. Yeah. Um, hitting it from all sides, you can see chunks of its body being flown off in the force of the arcane casting. Uh, it still stands, though it is, well, it is dripping from multiple wounds and it's a hard time. Uh, <laughs> any your turn, Scanlan? I think so. I mean, right. I'm okay. you just stop the smoke I, I'll, I'll heal myself a little bit more uh, with another level one healing word. Go for it, take your d4 plus five. Okay, seven more points. There you go. Yeah. I'm just gonna start walking towards it and dagger and dagger and dagger. Go for it. Uh, first is uh, 20. 20 hits. Second is uh, 23. Hits. Third is a 23. Hits. So we got uh, 10 for the first. Sneak attack? Is it near something? First he's in. <laughs> okay, so the first is uh, 10 plus. Oh no, nice damage! 10 plus 20, 29, 32, 36, 41. For the first attack. How do you want to do this? Oh, yes! yes. Uh, I will uh, aim for its uh, open mouth as it's going to and put its tongue into the back of its skull. As you step forward your first dagger, you kind of pull it out and aim it. And kind of over the hand toss it as it rears back, ready to bring its fangs out to sink down to Percy. The dagger sh- vanishes into its throat, and you see its, its face just go relax for a second. <laughs> He's trying to cough, and as it does, you can see just uh, bits of uh, blood and gore from. Oh, God. The trying to cough is fucking visceral. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. There are from the material plane. Don't have a reason since Lil's return. Oh, it's so like, like, uh, like a, um,. Like a fire elemental? Sure. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I don't know. Are, um, are, are wyverns from a different plane? Or are they from material? Um, but I, that is a fair point. If death is not actually that bad of a consequence to them, then yeah, sure. Fuck it. Fight until they die. The, these are all, you know, stacking considerations within your brain when you're thinking about how to run this sort of combat. How do you want to do it? are always a treat. Uh, that is true. Yeah. That sound effect was crazy, even at high speed. Yeah, it was fucking... <laughs> oh, my God. That that makes my throat hurt, just hearing that. His throat begins being hot, hot the ground. takes a few steps. Percy steps out of the way as it kind of heads towards you before it rears back and... and just collapses onto the ground. You can see the blade still sticking out the back of its head, kind of holding back of the throat before it spears it inside your belt. Yes. <sighs> Sorry, I made a noise, guys. <clears throat> Sorry. Next time, stealth. We should get inside. Yeah. Okay. We, should, we should hide. We should take what we can and we should also hide the bodies. Good call. Yeah. That's a good idea. Let's um, bring I, I go everything inside. I go to the wyverns and I start going for those stingers. Okay. Uh, you can do this quickly, Caleb, because we need to hide. These yeah, bodies. but that's how I can do it. It's going to take you a while to do it. Let's like, take them inside. Uh, can I assist with my keen dagger to Let's help her under her instructions? Let's get them inside. And then we'll probably have to move. We're going to drag the wyverns indoors. Yes. Drag everything indoors. Wait, wait, wait. These stingers are on the end of tails? Yeah. 
Grog, can you just chop off their tails okay. and we'll take the tails with us? No, we gotta get no, the women's we, inside. We gotta get everything flying inside. flying overhead sees these bodies, yeah. they know something's been attacked. Are half of them burned to a crisp anyway? Not crisp, just just scotch. There's some ash. So I, I go ahead and right. I do my, uh, uh, just a cantrip gust and start spreading out the ash. Okay. So there's no ash uh, it still, It still looks like there are a number of, like, like someone just emptied a bunch of fireplace ash pits in the center of the walkway where there once were lizard folk. Okay. Um, what for? But, just uh, the dust of tracelessness. Yeah. I'll give us cover. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. blow my horn of fog. I start putting the dust of tracelessness down on the ground, so it looks like nobody's been here. Low fog sound as Galen blows the fog, blows the horn. Fog fills the vicinity, and you guys begin tossing the dust of tracelessness around. I go grab the humanoid figures, and I like throw two on my shoulders, and then I get one in each hand, and I start dragging them towards a, a door. Any inside, just yeah. inside, to an, to an any inside. Uh, I check. I'll, I'll get the door for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys supervise. Pretty quickly manage to move what you can out of the way. Uh, we'll say over the next few minutes as the fog is there. You know, I think it's fair if they're like talking about like all these resources they're using or whatever to throw them like a group survival check or something, you know, of like, okay, you got this fog, you got this gust shit, like all of that. Something that I will say that I think is, I don't want to say a shame, but I think is, is one of the harder parts about D and D is the lack of writers sometimes can make it hard to like represent all of these additive things with like your equipment like keen dagger could be like plus one to the check and then dust of tracelessness another plus one the fact that she's using her gust plus one like that is the sort of thing that you might see in something like dagger heart or city of mist or you know some of these with like very hard uh, or not hard but a very rider focused uh system of like these pluses and minuses um and one of 5e's like core things is no, <laughs> no riders. And there was actually a, a little um, insert it, within the Daggerheart rulebook that I found very interesting on this point um, that I think goes towards like Matt's overall philosophy when we talk about him being like, you know, a world builder DM or whatever of like a lot of the recommendations is for the DM to take all of these factors into account when constructing the DC and to give them advantage and whatever. Um, and in Daggerheart, they kind of talk about like, why give advantage? Why not just lower the DC? And in the Daggerheart, uh, you know, playtest rulebook, it talks about that they wanted to evoke the fact that the world and the challenges are there. They are set. They are, like, stagnant. Uh, and that they wanted, from the perspective of the players, not that the challenge got easier, but that they became better at the challenge. It's a very interesting lens to go through. And to D&D's credit, or at least 5e's, I do think that that writer type system, they wanted to make it as simple as possible. They didn't want to make constructing a dice pool and adding all of these modifiers together to be so cumbersome. They just wanted it to be, you roll your 20, you add one modifier, and then you might have advantage. That's it. And I think that they did a good job of constructing a system that goes after that. But you do have to think about that as a DM of if they're using all of these resources, you should reflect that in the DC. So like if I was if I was running this, I might make this like a fucking DC five <laughs> group survival check or some shit like that, you know, um, but because they're using all of these modifiers, I on my end need to reflect that. Like, the fact that he's using the Keen Dagger, or I guess he was using the Keen Dagger for uh, looting, but, like, Dust of Tracelessness, the Gust Cantrip, the Smoke, like, all of these things are absolutely factors. And maybe he felt that they'd used enough shit to just warrant not even having a check. But I think that this is absolutely something that you need to remember within your 5e DM brain of, I need to reflect all of those factors within the DC because otherwise there's no like easy way to reflect that other than maybe something like advantage, but you can only give advantage once. You either have it or you don't. Um, so if you want to do it more than advantage, which I do think is good, I think you should absolutely give out advantage first and then start modifying the DC if you need to continue to lower it. Um, 
But yeah, it's something, it's a very interesting thing. Is Dire Art the new uh, BitD default example? I mean, uh, dude, I've been so into it lately that probably. I was literally trying to convince Paige to uh, switch our head-to-head -to, -head to, uh, to, to Daggerheart instead of D&D. Because I actually think it would fit a lot better for a head-to-head. -head. Like, for a one DM, one player, I think Daggerheart absolutely would run better than something like, uh, than something like 5e. Because of the action economy issues. Um, so, I've been... I've been fucking into it lately. It's like if you took D and D and made it more like Bit D. Like <laughs> it is not. It is uh, you know, not shocking to me. Well, actually, it is shocking to me. I did not think I would be that into it when I when I first uh, like wanted to read through the play test. It wasn't until I was like really into the play test that I was like, oh, there's something here. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, because I thought that it wouldn't be that different. Like, I didn't think it would be, like, as unique as it is. Which I find it to have a very clear vision that is very distinct from any other TTRPG that I'm aware of. Which I love. I think that's... And I was not expecting it at all. Um, Pathfinder also has a lot of floating modifiers. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Pathfinder takes the same philosophy as 3.5... And the 5e designers were specifically butting against that philosophy. <laughs> they were specifically saying, we want to get rid of that 3.5 bullshit. And Pathfinder was like, no, nah, that 3.5 bullshit was cool, though. <laughs> that was, like, kind of sick. <laughs> um, uh, on a scale of bit D to dagger heart. <laughs> Written as rules, it might not be allowed to give multiple advantage for one role, but still rewarding the use of resources is a great thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just more on you uh, to do as the DM within D&D, &D, you know? I'm actually going to run a one-on-one -on -one d, &D campaign soonish. Looking forward to it, and probably will have to change a lot to make it work and fun. You, I mean, I think the main thing you have to keep in mind is that there's going to be a level of, like, a lack of flexibility... So part of the um, part of the reason that party strength scales so much as you add new players is partially because of action economy. So in you know an equal combat, the side with more combatants wins. So if the party just has more combatants in every combat, they are more likely to win. And the types of resources that people have are all very different. And so only having like one, you know, kind of type or class of resource is going to make uh, the person, the player, much less flexible. Um, not a bad thing at all. I'm super excited for me and Paige's head to head. Um, but yeah, I think those are the those are the main two kind of considerations there. And so I also think that, like, the tone of, like, what is this campaign? What are the goals? Like, those sorts of things are important. But I honestly, I don't have enough experience to really know. I've just thought about it a lot. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, to run more sessions like that to be able to speak on it more uh, intelligently. Uh, my first instinct was giving my players two slash multiple places in the initiative order. Could work. I mean, it, it could at least go towards the thing. The only thing there... Well, I guess they don't have to spend their resources, so they're additionally getting, like, double the turns. It's going to make them feel very powerful, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I don't know. You could try it. See how it goes. I honestly, without playtesting it, I don't know... I can't really think down that line of all of the downstream impacts that that would have. You would just have to warn your player, I guess. Like, hey, if you're using your resources all the time and you're expending them at double the fucking rate, <laughs> you're gonna be whoosh, like, down the, the resource hole very fast. But if they're conservative about it could be interesting uh until your next turn effects get weird yeah they would i don't know there's there's something there there's something there that's at least interesting uh they're also playing a fighter and want to bonk shit gonna be a bounty hunter monster hunter campaign that sounds fun that sounds super duper fun yeah 
I, I think I think that's I think you've done uh, probably the most important part of identifying they want to bonk shit. <laughs> We're gonna make it like a bounty hunter, monster hunter type campaign, and then that's nice because one of the things I'm actually I've played in a monster hunter themed campaign, like the video game monster hunter. And that was normally our party of four people versus one monster actually made the action economy type kind of tough. They had to really jack up the CR on every single fight because we were just murdering things that were at our CR level. But if it's a bounty hunting or like a um, like a monster hunter, you can do kind of one on one combats a lot more often uh, and then maybe throw in an extra combatant or two as a way to really jack up the um, the the challenge. Honestly, you might not even need any modifications like the two uh, the two per initiative order, depending on how you construct the combats. Uh, but that sounds that sounds like good theming. That's that's where I'll that's where I'll definitely leave that is is that sounds like very good theming for it. If you're gonna hunt monsters, you need rules for cooking those monsters. Absolutely. Meg is talking to him today. It's the end of the week. I'm also, like I said, unmedicated. <laughs> I have been uh, off my Vivance for a little bit. So my mind is <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but we're so close to the end, too. How close are we to the end? Because we've been here for a little bit. 219. Oh my god, we're two minutes from the end. All right, let's close it out, people. Let's close it out. <laughs> Under that cover, you begin to drag <laughs> the wyvern bodies into the alleyway, into the shadows. Uh, if you want to go ahead and make uh, some checks here to go ahead and see if you can harvest. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do three minutes. Okay, so first one, I'll definitely take advantage uh, since I have advantage. Not that much mm -hmm, better. Great, uh, uh, tw uh, 14. 14, first okay. One. Would it help if I gave her my keen dagger for the rest of it? Uh. I would say, given the circumstance, all we do would offer her advantage, which she already has, so it wouldn't make much difference. Uh, so, uh, first one, it, it's been a little too damaged in battle, and you're unable to really draw any poison from the stinger for the first one. What's the second, second one? Second one. <laughs> Fifteen total. Fifteen is what you needed. You managed to extract just enough of the wyvern stinger poison to for possibly a, a single dose. So you can mark down a dose of wyvern poison. Okay, um, I'll give it to... Um, I'll give it to, to Vax. Oh, yeah. Okay. Vax, put down your. Do you have Vax poison or, or do it? Vax or Vax? I give it to one of the twins. Here, twins. You fight They're both the same. Fight over it. All right, we have two, two more if you want to yeah. try. Two, well, two more, maybe. Vax could put it on his one. arrow. Right. Okay, um, well, the second one I rolled a 25. Okay, so that's the second dose of Wyvern poison. That I give to Vex. Last one. 15. I'll take that 15 with a, with a 26. All right, so you have three doses of wyvern poison that you've managed to uh, harvest from these creatures. Uh, you guys can distribute as you see fit. Anything else to loot from these? Yeah. So they don't carry much gold, and what they have, you envision. Can they hear this music? Because this music is is fucking like this is like the intense something is wrong music. I think this is the same track that they played during Uriel's speech. Can they hear this shit? <laughs> Because they seem to be going uh, pretty normal for this fucking thing. Probably went to the entity that rules Iman. And as you're looking over the bodies of the feudal lizard men here, you see they didn't just wander their way in here. And you remember mentioned from Allura before that there were like lizard folk worshippers of Thordak years ago. Um, uh, and apparently, once the city's been taken, Thordak is, or at least the worshippers of Thordak are also moving in. Um, so, taking this time to harvest. Uh, poisons, looking over the bodies, you can see the consistency between their uh, red, crimson, dyed uh, leather materials. Um, and uh, y you get the sensation that while this was a small skirmish group, this is probably the new policing state of Iman. Mm. Um, so with that, we'll take a quick break for the restroom. We'll pick up here in just a few minutes, guys, if you want to hang tight. And, uh... Oh, shit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely should have just finished it out real fast. <laughs> The music is an unreliable narrator, yeah. Uh, the music and effects can be heard and seen by players. They make a point of keeping it this way later when they get more effects to play with on with fancier sets. Ooh, that's sick. That's very sick. Okie dokie. Interesting. It's for the benefit of the player immersion first as well as for the audience. I think that that kind of goes to quite a bit honestly of uh of 
of CR. If we're being fully honest, uh, I'm gonna. I want to get some of this on screen. I think I'm gonna switch to a to a different thing, and we'll we'll go through the. Uh, we'll go through our notes. Why doesn't it let me? Sometimes during studio mode, it doesn't let me uh, drag. Like it doesn't let me resize shit, which kind of sucks because then I can't like you know fully transition over to this before you guys see it. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> are your streams going for half the episodes until break? Basically, uh, oh, Valkyrie just, just, uh, yeah, just fucking covered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically we have two half ep streams and one full ep. I am considering changing that and just making it full eps, but got to figure out a way to keep this fresh. Keep that bad boy fresh cuz I'm I'm worried right now. I thought about going after it when we were doing the 11:30 schedule change, but I wasn't confident that I could keep my voice good. Oh, CR streaming and everything is content with Matt and Liam. Huh? Very nice. Okay, well, I don't think the the notes are too crazy. All we know, or all we really need to, you know, super cover is that number one, Vasselheim's chilling. <laughs> Vasselheim is absolutely chilling. So let's make a quick little current uh, state section for it. Chillin. <laughs> As of episode 42. <laughs> Seems to be chillin. Uh, what day would you drop if you went to two halves and one hole to two holes? I would probably end up making it uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that it still had like... So that it still like felt symmetrical so basically we do like non uh, it would so it'd be drop all three of the current days and take up the other two days as cr days that would be that's the current thought at least and then that way for my voice there's kind of a spike up and then i get a little bit of a break during wednesday for the next one I've also thought about potentially doing uh, Mondays and Fridays, but I don't know. Reminder, Thursday is live show. Ooh, is it? So maybe Mondays and Fridays. But, full, but taking it off of full episode Friday was a purposeful choice. So that I'm not taking up people's like entire Fridays. Mondays and yeah. I mean maybe Mondays and Wednesdays. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I'll have to think about it. Um uh, I'm just one man though. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um Yeah. I'll have to think more about it. We'll see. Um, okay. A few other refugees showed up while VM was away. I don't actually think that that mattered. Uh, however, we have some Vox Machina juice with... Uh, oh, wait. Uh, Vex. Vex was marked at for death at some point in the past. Uh, Vax interceded, which is why he got the brand on his back. At some point in the... Uh, in, at some point in the past... Related to the clasp. Um, someone else died in her place. Ugh. CR starts at 9 p.m. Chicago time. Oh. It starts at 9 p.m. Chicago on Thursdays? Ooh. Actually. Now, that's a lot of content for critters. <laughs> They're trying to keep consistent, but if, you know, I started at 11.30, I'm trying to get full episodes to be more around, like, an eight-hour time slot, so then that would that would end right, uh, 
that would end right basically when Critical Role is starting. Oh, possible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that this is going to happen soon. Well, I say soon. I'm looking at potentially reworking this within the next month or two, probably the next month, if at all. I might just say, nah, this schedule works for me. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, do what works for you. Be consistent. Keep in mind you can't please everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm trying to... I'm looking for pleasing everybody or trying to please the largest proportion is part of the game but also keeping in mind like that's why i haven't like gone over to this yet with like the whole voice thing is like i gotta keep myself in mind and i gotta keep like uh you know me and Paige in mind like taking up two nights a week is a little bit much so i'm gonna really see how tight or not tight I can keep the, the Wednesdays. We'll mostly have to see. Um, still planning on watching the story of Vox Machina uh, again this stream? No, not not this stream. Not not this stream. I think I've got everything I need to get out of story of Vox Machina. I think I've got it all. Uh, what time is it for y'all? Right now, 4.27 in the p.m. In the PM, so we're rocking like a 1627 um, currently. Chicago time. Chicago. Uh, anyways, okay, so we got some Vex notes. Whitestone scry scene. Uh, you know, actually, that may, be a, that may be relevant. Let's see. Whitestone, 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 Whitestone. Oh, shit. Wrong one. Whitestone. Uh, current state... Current state uh, seems to be overlooked by Chroma Conclave. And then Syngorn, we need to make a note for. We need to make a whole ass note for Syngorn. Syngorn, which I'm fairly certain is the twins' home. So that, oh wait, double... Vax and Vax hometown elvish majority and we're just going to pop all of this in there. The city's gone. There's a huge chasm of empty spot. Percy knows that there's been a large enchantment that plays cultural importance that would shift them into the Feywild. I actually think I'm going to make the Feywild its own its own location. Feywild. So we've got Feywild, and we'll throw that into regions. Don't need much there, but we need to know that Syngorn is, is potentially attached there if we hear anything else about the Feywild. You know what I'm saying? If Whitestone went straight from vampires to dragons. <laughs> oh, poor Whitestone. Now, very interesting. Realmseer Eskel Rinderian is fucking here, dude. Realmseer Eskel Rinderian showed up to Whitestone to investigate the ore. Interesting. Orb could be the reason that the Chroma Conclave hasn't attacked Whitestone. They aren't confident of what it does. That needs to go into a, into a theories thing. Theories. Theories. Hmm. And then on the Eskel end of things, I am going to note in his... More recently, he went to investigate the orb under Whitestone. The orb under Whitestone. He moved his tower before he uh, left Westrun. 
West Run. He has a manservant named Jekt, who I don't really think I need. I, I, I'm going to give him his own article, but I don't think he needs much at the moment. Uh, who's awesome. And I'm gonna, and that is actually what I will put into his article, is that he's so sick and taupe and uh, under absolutely no suspicion at this time. And then the last one is really just a Chroma Conclave note, honestly. If we go into factions, if we grab the Chroma Conclave, Chroma Conclave and or just Thordak uh, has Wyvern Riders working for them, or maybe just him. And I think that's pretty much it. I mean, it was only a half up. It was only a half up, and a lot of it was taken up by a uh, by a combat. But I don't think any major shakeup to uh, to to any um, not not a, not like a major shakeup to any of our theories so far. Other than that, Eskel seems simultaneously more and less suspicious. Which is very odd, like him just showing up. Which I don't, I don't actually think he, I don't think he's actually just showing up. I think they either mentioned it or I made it up in my head that Alura contacted him. Um, but yeah, I am, I am very. Uh, yeah, he seems both more and less suspicious. I don't know. It's it's very er it's very weird. You have heard about the Feywild before. I have indeed. I do I am aware of the Feywild. Yes. Uh, do you want to input while you're making these notes from us or would you rather go off what you have in your noggin? Generally go over what I have in my noggin. If I write down something wrong, like, if I write down something that is, like, factually incorrect, like, I I don't know. Like, I misspelled Syngorn or something. Uh, or not even misspelled, but, like, just, like, wrote down the wrong city. Absolutely correct me on that in the moment. Um, but, other than that. Other than that, if, if just, like, one of my theories is wrong, let my theory be wrong. Uh, <laughs> but. How well of a job do you do in or seeing future C1 episode titles? I really just try to avoid them if possible. I haven't really seen any that I can think of. Um, but sometimes I do, uh, like, it'll, it'll, like, flash for me. Like, I know... Uh, I think the next t I, uh, episode has something to do with Vasselheim, I think. But I really, I try to have my, my eyes just fucking skip over it uh, <laughs> where possible. Um, a lot of times it is just the very next episode title. Um, but I most of the time really try to avoid it. Um, I would say I do, I have probably like an 80% success rate. <laughs> at not seeing the next episode title. And I have like a 95% success rate at not seeing any episode titles beyond that, you know? Ah, uh, what up, what up, what up? I'm so impressed by your note taking, amazing work. Thank you. I like taking notes. I am, it's fun. I haven't really like played a lot. Um, so I, I don't know if I would be like the note taker traditionally, but the few times I have played, I have been the note taker. Um, so I, I like it. It's fun. It's one of the things about, uh, like this is sort of how I go about taking my notes for book club, except that I had to do all of it off stream. <laughs> Uh, so I was basically doing like, you know, three episodes of, of, you know, it's like three, like critical role episodes of like work and note taking, you know, I wasn't pausing and like talking to people obviously, but I was taking like this level of notes for, you know, all off stream stuff. Um, I like taking notes <laughs> earlier. I think, uh, uh, you mentioned Thordak being Uriel as a joke theory. And I don't know if you saw, but I said, uh, that would make Vox Machina's test super easy. Just charm him and he'll be mind controlled a third time. <laughs> 
Yeah, he will indeed. If he was a uh, Thordak, he is real fucking susceptible to mind control. That is that is very very true. More charms, more charms. Uh, eject is a single masted open cargo sailing ship. Not at all suspicious. <laughs> Hmm, how can we connect this into the theory? <laughs> a cargo sailing ship. Uh, Feywild in regards to CR. Uh, I can't think of anything in regards to CR. Unless it's from story of Vox Machina and maybe they went into the Feywild to get the nymph heart. Grog went into the Feywild to get the nymph heart. That's the only thing that I can remember that seems Feywild esque. But I also don't see it as being important if it was that. <laughs> but it might not have been. Um, broadly speaking, Mega wants the same experience he would have had live. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Including not wanting to see meta things until he chronologically would have. That is a good, like, rule of thumb. Is. If I would have had access to it while watching this episode, I'm down for it. If I would not have had access to it while watching this episode, no thank you. <laughs> yeah, that is that is about. But if it's something that you confirm that I would have had chronological access to, that is that is feel free to make a correction sort of deal. Um, write in notes, I should probably be the note taker. Writes in notes, I should probably be the note taker. I don't know, maybe. You know what I might start doing? Uh, I might start copy and pasting just the notes that I took for the first half into, uh, the CR No Spoilers chat. And then, uh, allow people to correct things in there if desired. So we'll do that. We'll do, uh, also I'm gonna pin that shallow assumption. Uh, thing about the CSS for uh, for Obsidian because I want to come back to that later. Um, oh my god, why are there so many enters? Alright, if there is anything absolutely terribly horrifically wrong, uh, feel free to fact check me. Uh, so this was first half of Ep 42. Nice. Oh, while you're going through the whole CR shebang, I'm definitely the kind of person to show my friend my favorite movie and stare at them while cool shit happens. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. I think, uh, I, I think, um, I was watching super geek Mike talk about how he is absolutely that kind of person, which is why they like, he, he likes, um, uh, react content. And that is absolutely what I hope this is for a lot of people. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that you have, uh, found me too. I'm glad we have a, we have a community of folks around here. Um, I'm just petting the dog off screen. Doggy. <laughs> but anyhow, I think that's it. Super Geek Mike's how I found your channel. He's the fucking best. Super Geek's actually how I heard of you. I'm here. There we go, dude. Super GM, my warlock patron. I'll, I, I, he's, he's the best. I'm very excited to do more shit. We're, we're taught. It's, it's tough because we're both, uh, kind of trying to figure things out technically. Um, at least I, I definitely am. Um, but I, I do not think you have, uh, seen the last of him on this channel. <laughs> uh, who has heard of who outside of Mike? <laughs> Slightly low on puppy content. Yeah yeah uh another sgm fuck yeah who's an organic viewer i believe um i'm trying to think i mean i know john john is like viewer number two or three um i don't know if uh fucking undead king still watches but i know he's a big lurker so he might still watch um there's there was there was about i think before sgm so I believe I reached out to SGM around episode, like, 15. So I think there were probably 10 to 20 people here at that time. Maybe AKL. Um, AKL's artificial. He's all artificial. Hans, yeah, yeah, yeah. Valk, Baronessa. 
Yeah, there are a couple of old, old heads. I'll tell you, man, I would never have gotten anywhere if I was on Twitch. I would have absolutely... Oh, Rebecca, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your subs at before? Yeah, uh, we can we can go and absolutely look. Uh, there are like three big sub jumps. Um, also, a lot of people got brought over from the autopsy. But I would guess that before my first Super Geek Mike shout out, I was at around 600. I think I'd been live monetized, but I hadn't. I was like just past that, I think. Um, but, uh, found channel after you did ep three. Yeah, that's right, John. That's right. I think I had like one viewer on, on ep one and I couldn't remember if you were ep two or three, but yeah, you were early on. Um, but he was like, this guy's watching CR S one and reacting. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever mention that you, uh, mentioned SGM in ep one? Really? You didn't know his name though until someone else mentioned him. Oh, interesting, interesting. See you later, Mr. Multi. Um, yeah, man, it was it was really nice that I, I'm I'm very I'm very uh, uh, YouTube pilled uh, because I don't think I would have gotten even relatively the amount of exposure because even Mike said that he I had already showed up on his feed before he like sniff checked me. Um so like he I had already showed up on Mike's feed when I reached out to him to ask if I could react to his uh to his Tiberius vid. Um and then he watched some of my shit before he said yes. <laughs> um so yeah. Yeah. But anyways, I think I'm gonna peace out, uh, cause I honestly would keep chatting for longer, but I really have to pee. <laughs> I really have to pee. So I'm gonna head out. Uh, I will see you all at least on Monday for Critical Role. Potentially after, um, potentially some uh, no mic, no cam vids or, or lives uh, between, but. Either way, 